Perminet untuk mengetahui info lanjut mengenai prestasi pemain dan jadi sebahagian daripada MPM Malaysia, layari laman rasmi Liga Isukan No. 1 Malaysia untuk dapatkan maklumat terkini dan lengkap. Layari laman rasmi MPM Malaysia sekarang. Ayo kita bersama menaikkan mutu MLBB di Malaysia. Jangan terlepas kemas kini Liga Academy rasmi MLBB Malaysia, MAL Malaysia. Ikuti semua platform rasmi kami. Ayo sokong MAL Malaysia musim pertama. Ikuti semua platform rasmi. Semua peminat dan penyokong dijemput ke arena MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 di Serdang. Anda berpeluang berjumpa dengan pemain kegemaran anda. Kumpul tanda tangan eksklusif dan sertai kempen Fan of the Season. Interested in knowing more about player performance and be a part of MPL Malaysia? Visit the website of MPL Malaysia's number one esports league for the latest news and league updates. Don't miss out on updates from the official MLBB Malaysia Academy League, MAL Malaysia. Follow all our official platforms. All fans are invited to the MPL Malaysia Season 13 Arena in Serdang. You will get a chance to meet your favorite players, get exclusive autographs, and join the Fan of the Season campaign. Melampangkan satu sosok tumbuhan. Tumpuan untuk melakukan yang terbaik. Tumpuan untuk menjadi seorang role model. Sorotan itu penting. Ia membuatkan kita percaya. The support that we witness our fight and our struggles. Memikul harapan untuk mempertahankan kemenangan Menjadi cabaran terbesar untuk mencapai malamat kami Harapan masih terpahat di hati Untuk menjadi juara Meneruskan legasi kami Di bawah cahaya, semuanya menjadi lebih jelas Ada dok, kuda hitam No, kami adalah Monster Vicious Cahaya impian telah menerangi pentas ini. Kejayaan bukan lagi dongeng. Not just a dream. Ia arti harapan yang sebenar. Mungkin ada yang sangka bahawa harapan ini akan hilang. Tapi bukan kami. Ini harapan kami. Ini semangat kami. Bersama kami. Sampai satu tujuan. 
Mencari Sina yang paling terang Nikmati Jago 5G untuk gaming sepantas kila dengan Hotlink Prepaid 5G. Internet 5G tanpa had dengan kelajuan 5G tanpa batas untuk layan gaming tanpa gangguan. Nikmati latency rangkaian 5G terunggul dan gameplay termantap sepanjang malam. Semuanya hanya RM32 sebulan dengan 20% cashback. Dapatkan sekarang. Again. A princess in a tower is just a bird in a cage. Confirm lah Nescafe. Where you want?
want to go, baby. I don't, I don't, I don't. Huh. Ah. Hey, boleh doh. Kram, come here. Oh. Nice one, Kram. Dan. Down. Down. Kau ready ulti, cici ready ulti, cici ready ulti. I will protect you from his second skill. Okay. Oh, tak tapi raga kecil. Watch me, Chow. Ah. Ken, 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 ken. I in front you, Zen. Already first skill, Zen. Nah, already second skill, Zen. Oh, sarap, Zen. Sarap. Five second, chill guys, head top. Okay, go top, take top, take top. I can ulti on Harit, ah. Ji. Okay, only two, ah. Harit, put him in, see me, see me, see me. Up, up. No, no, I will not die. Can end, guys, can end, can end. Chill out, minion, ah. No, 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 no. Minion hero first. Dapat dikecapi, sejarah baharu telah tercipta. Namun, setakat itu sahajakah kemampuan kita? Setiap kali ke pentas dunia, pasti kecewa. Sampai bila kita nak kalah? Ditundukkan serendah-rendahnya. Sampai bila kita nak dihina? Tiap musim harapan peminat gugur. Sampai bila nak kalah? Sampai bila? Nak kecewa Setiap rakyat pasti akan melaungkan semangat Ingin mempertahankan rumah mereka Jika patah sayap Raja Wali Bertongkat jua kita kemari Tahun ini pastinya kemenangan semakin dicita Demi menjulang nama Malaysia di pesada dunia di mana bumi dipijak di situlah langit dijunjung stadium MBSJ Serdang Jaya secara rasminya menjadi rumah MPLMY pada tahun ini seterusnya melangkah ke arena besar di timur tengah di Riyadh Arab Saudi juara kita bangkit menghadapi cabaran bersedia mencipta sejarah Utara, Timur, Barat dan Selatan Kita semua MPLMY Play off musim ke-14 Akan berhijrah ke Johor Mendekatkan lagi Silaturahim MPLMY bersama Hasrat kita semua Bersatu dan bangkit Dengan satu tujuan yang sama Naikkan martabat negara Kejari juara dunia Kemuncaknya di M6 Pastikan kemenangan dan kebanggaan dikecap di rumah kita. Selamat datang ke MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 Di mana yang terbaik akan berentap dalam pertempuran sengit dan penuh strategi Seperti pada musim yang lepas, 10 pasukan profesional akan bersaing selama 6 minggu Dalam arena yang penuh aksi di regular season Namun, bermula pada musim ini, cuma 6 pasukan akan layak ke playoff Dan pasukan di tempat ke-7 dan ke-8 hanya dapat stay untuk musim seterusnya. Tapi sayang sekali, tiada slot ke playoff buat mereka pada musim ini. Bagi pasukan di tempat ke-10, slot musim ke-14 mereka akan diganti oleh tempat pertama MAL Conference Group. Mereka akan di-reset dan harus merebut kembali peluang melalui MAL musim kedua. Dan apa itu MAL? Mobile Legends Bang Bang Academy League adalah Liga Amatur di mana terlahirnya bintang-bintang baru. 15 pasukan akan bersaing untuk meraih kejuaraan dan dua pasukan MBL Conference Group teratas akan berpeluang merebut slot ke MPL Malaysia musim seterusnya. Okey, 
Kembali ke MPL. Pasukan MPL Malaysia tempat ke-9 akan berentap dengan pasukan tempat kedua dari MAL Conference Group dalam pusingan MPL Malaysia Challenger Stage bersama format Best of Five semasa Grand Final MAL musim yang pertama di mana pemenang akan menentukan slot terakhir MPL Malaysia musim ke-14. Enam pasukan yang layak ke playoff akan berentap untuk meneruskan jalan ke Grand Final MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 dan merebut peluang untuk ke MSC 2024. Jadi, bersiap sedia. Persiapkan strategi anda. Bersedia untuk aksi profesional di pentas MPL Malaysia musim ke-13. I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Pangilaku rock star. Ini kejohanan kita semua orang rock star. The rock star kita buat saja kaya kita. Makin panas apinya sudah membara.
sejarah baru telah tercipta. Namun, setakat itu sahajakah kemampuan kita? Setiap kali ke pentas dunia, pasti kecewa. Sampai bila kita nak kalah? Ditundukkan serendah-rendahnya. Sampai bila kita nak dihina? Tiap musim harapan peminat gugur. Sampai bila nak kalah? Sampai bila nak kecewa? Setiap rakyat pasti akan melaungkan semangat ingin mempertahankan rumah mereka. Jika patah sayap Raja Wali, bertongkat jua kita kemari. Tahun ini, pastinya kemenangan semakin dicita demi menjulang nama Malaysia di pesada dunia. Di mana bumi dipijak, disitulah langit dijunjung. Stadium MBSJ Serdang Jaya secara rasminya menjadi rumah MPLMY pada tahun ini. Seterusnya, melangkah ke arena besar di Timur Tengah, di Riyadh Arab Saudi. Juara kita bangkit menghadapi cabaran bersedia mencipta sejarah. Utara, Timur, Barat dan Selatan, kita semua MPLMY playoff musim ke-14 akan berhijrah ke Johor mendekatkan lagi silaturahim MPLMY bersama. Hasrat kita semua bersatu dan bangkit dengan satu tujuan yang sama. Naikkan martabat negara, kejari juara dunia, kemuncaknya di M6. Pastikan kemenangan dan kebanggaan dikecap di rumah kita. Selamat datang ke MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 Di mana yang terbaik akan berentap dalam pertempuran sengit dan penuh strategi Seperti pada musim yang lepas, 10 pasukan profesional akan bersaing selama 6 minggu Dalam arena yang penuh aksi di regular season Namun, bermula pada musim ini Cuma enam pasukan akan layak ke play-off dan pasukan di tempat ke-7 dan ke-8 hanya dapat stay untuk musim seterusnya. Tapi sayang sekali, tiada slot ke play-off buat mereka pada musim ini. Bagi pasukan di tempat ke-10, slot musim ke-14 mereka akan diganti oleh tempat pertama MAL Conference Group. Mereka akan di-reset dan harus merebut kembali peluang melalui MAL musim kedua. Dan apa itu MBL? Mobile Legends Bang Bang Academy League adalah liga amatur di mana terlahirnya bintang-bintang baharu. 15 pasukan akan bersaing untuk meraih kejuaraan dan dua pasukan MBL Conference Group teratas akan berpeluang merebut slot ke MPL Malaysia musim seterusnya. Okey, kembali ke MPL. Pasukan MPL Malaysia tempat ke-9 akan berentap dengan pasukan tempat kedua dari MAL Conference Group dalam pusingan MPL Malaysia Challenger Stage bersama format Best of Five semasa Grand Final MAL musim yang pertama di mana pemenang akan menentukan slot terakhir MPL Malaysia musim ke-14. Enam pasukan yang layak ke playoff akan berentap untuk meneruskan jalan ke Grand Final MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 dan merebut peluang untuk ke MSC 2024. Jadi, bersiap sedia. Persiapkan strategi anda. Bersedia untuk aksi profesional di pentas MPL Malaysia musim ke-13.
IPL Malaysia Season 13 is powered by Muntal. Enjoy a superior 5G network and lightning-fast gaming experience only with our official mobile internet hotlink. A big shout-out to ROG Phone 8, the official gaming phone for keeping our players at the top of their game. Grind on with Nescafe to keep your gaming spirit going. Thank you to all of our sponsors and partners for your support in MPL Malaysia Season 13. The festivities of MPL MY Season 13 continue and with it, a brand new level of competition here in Saru Saturdays. There's three of us on the desk today. My name's Staffa along with Gideon as well as Husky because we got three exciting matches to watch today. Guys, how are you feeling? Being really great, Rang, Riang Raya. I spent my Raya break climbing the ladder. Hasn't been going that well, but the festivities, the environment is electric, it's loud. I think we even introduced a LUT meter is like a loudness mm -hmm. indicator, the most that, whatever it is, to see how loud the fans cheers are, and they are through the roof. I mean, they haven't been calming down here, especially when they're live, right in front of the stage, right in front of the players, and especially on a festive holiday. More importantly so, now that all the MPLs are kicking back off since yesterday, I think everybody's been excited to see what the professionals have been up to. It is the active season now. Like you mentioned, MPLs ongoing all over the places, and we're seeing new metas, new strategies, and these teams really bringing it all onto the stage to prepare for that international stage as well. Like we mentioned, it is going to be Saru Saturdays today. So three of us, three matches for all of you guys to look forward to. And speaking of those matches, let's talk about what we have to anticipate today. Yeah, starting off our first best of three, we have Bounty Esports taking on the Swordfishes of Todak, followed by King Empire Esports against Homeboys, where we see the battle of the Kages, and we are going to close it out at 5.30 p.m. with Team Hawk against Niners. As Niners still struggling to look for that first series win. I mean, a lot can be said about today's schedule in all of these matches, right? Bounty in a period of recovery up against a team like Todak, who is still kind of looking to find their own footing overall. This should be a quick and easy match. But then again, without a coach, Bounty has done some good work. And now in a recovery period, I think it shouldn't be too much of a difference. Yeah, especially now that they will be having a coach join them on stage as well. We'll see how that will impact their gameplay overall. Though I imagine a lot of people are going to have their eyes on the second match between King Empire and homeboys. Basically, two different monarchies here, two different kings looking to face off against one another for superiority. Yeah, I personally, I know a lot of people are looking forward to KG against homeboys. That's a given. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Team Hawk against Niners because I heard mm -hmm. Niners, they're still making adjustments, still trying to find their place. And this is this was a superstar roster. When announced, was already bringing a lot of excitement. And then they added Max and they promoted Zay from MAL. Still was not able to find a footing against Barracuda yesterday. Today is crunch time. This is the most important series of four Niners in this regular season. I don't know. I've been extremely worried about them since week number one, right? Their overall performances have been looking kind of shaky, not really getting to that consistent level of play that we should expect here at the MPL MY at the very least. Yeah, we definitely expect better from them overall in terms of performance. I think they really do need to be able to establish a better connection between all of these players. And of course, what better way to get smooth and lightning fast 5G connection for your Mobile Legends games with Hot Link. You guys, make sure to check that out at the bottom of the screen right now. We got a QR code for you guys to scan and you guys can enjoy superior 5G network latency and smoother gameplay all with Hot Link. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Hot Link in MPL and MAL and I can guarantee you when you need a, a quick fix for the internet speed in your matches, this is the perfect network service provider to go to. Because my matches have been smooth. Single digit latency. Single digit. I mean, my favorite thing is the fact that every time I walk anywhere utilizing Hotlink, everybody else that I'm playing ranked with, you can definitely tell who is and who isn't with Hotlink. Mm, yeah, that's, that's a good point here. You guys definitely don't want to have your teammates, or even worse, your opponents looking down at you for bad latency, right? So <laughs> I think you guys get the message. Go check out Hotlink right now. But going back into the games that we're going to be seeing, we're going to be starting off the day with Bounty Esports against Todak. And we already talked about this. Bounty Esports in a recovery period. But what about Todak? What are your thoughts? I think Todak are so searching. Obviously, this is the first season that Chiku isn't playing. Speaking about Chiku, he's actually the guest on the BM side. Mm -hmm. So he's sitting right there chatting about his current team. But yes, they're so searching and 
I would say Toda hasn't really left a big, big impact in our minds, right? There's not an impression about Toda when you look at them this season and you're like, yeah, this is a team that can make it far. They can make playoff, they have a good chance of making it there, but they haven't really given us the identity of Toda for Season 13. Mm. I think I would agree with that at the very least, but let's have a look at this video before we continue talking. Because overall, when we think about Todak and when we think about Bounty, we start thinking immediately about the superstar players on that team. Uh, Momo against Panda, for an example. It was all ready to kick things off. Both stable laners, one a little bit more explosive than the other, but you would have expected the same for both Havas as well as Gary. Both of these players, as of right now, can the Headhunters track down the Swordfishes? It's going to be a little bit of a difficult ask because, as you mentioned before, Todok, they didn't seem to have like a very clear identity in their overall play style. They just seem to be playing the game, but not to a level of which this is clearly what their strategy is going to be all about. It's definitely understandable, of course, because Todak are revamping their whole lineup for the first time in quite a while here. And while you do see those sparks of brilliance, there isn't really that clear identity. Obviously, Todak Langar, as of right now, is a bit of a relic of the past. Will they try to go for that same playstyle, or will they forge something anew? Only time will tell, but it's still obvious that the players need to really figure each other out a little bit more. Whereas Bounty Esports seems to be a team that kind of thrives in the chaos. Right? They, they do, right? They have players who like to play chaotic fights. You look at Havos, he comes from a team in MDR Philippines that likes to play scrappy fights. You look at Panna, this man likes to dive into danger. It seems like danger calls to him. And overall, even when we saw Aziz debut uh, two weeks ago before the break against Niners, he was the pillar of the team. His performance on the Lilia in that mid lane has been solid for both games against Niners. And when Bounty are having a rough time, you can rely on him to keep it together. I mean, we got to make the comparison then, right? Zion Senpoi, he oh, is yeah. considered a pillar, right? Yeah. He is the pillar that we all look up to when we talk about like a consistent mid laner. So I don't know how much they can actually rely on Bounty's mid laner to get them over the hedge. At the very least, we need to see some kind of impact on one of the sides. Yeah, there's going to be a massive gulf in terms of experience between Aziz and Zion Senpoi here. Again, I do have a bias for Zion Senpoi, but I do feel like in terms of overall team coordination, there's still some clear fixes that need to be made on both sides. Regardless though, it's about time for us to start off with our first match of the day. So let's go ahead and welcome our players onto the stage. Bounty Esports. Previously proving that no coach, no problem, and securing the franchise's first victory. Now bolstered by a fresh on-ground coach and renewed confidence. How will the Hunters find their bounty? Welcome, Bounty Esports! Only participating in two matches so far, some may suggest that this team is still warming up. But will the three-time MPL Malaysia champion spring into action today under the guidance of Fly Solo? Here come the Swordfishes! Let's slumber! It's none other than Toda! And of course, to complete the stage, we must introduce the coach and analyst of both teams, as well as our head of League Ops, Cedric, who ensures fair play and professional integrities of the match. Give it up for Coach Jun, as well as Coach Fly Solo, as well as Assistant Coach Puja, who will be the brains of the operations as we enter the first match of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys are excited. We're gonna start things off between Bounty Esports and Toda. This is going to be so exciting, right? I want to quickly just recap on what Gideon pointed out. We talked about the mid lane pillars, Aziz and Zaim Senpoi. And actually, there was this mic check uh, in one of Todak's matches. I believe against Barracuda, right? It was the game that Zaim sort of made the move to save his team at a Lord fight. 
and we all thought that, okay, Zayn was the one who made the call, but surprisingly, it was told up as a collective that edged Zayn on to continue pressuring Barracuda when they know they had the advantage. So it's not just Zyme, I think the rest of Toda, they are catching up in terms of understanding what they want to do in certain situations. And that is a good sign for Toda. Now it's just to search for that true identity that Toda used to have or perhaps create a new one. Well, maybe it could just be breathing into the mic. I know that Shuzo does it pretty often <laughs> if they're putting it on their content at the very least. But yes, I do think that overall Torak is starting to become a little bit more braver in terms of just growing out of their comfort zone and looking how they can extend their limits to beyond what they know so far, right? At the end of the day, they still have players that they can fall back on, but I still think that at the very least, with the help of Coach Fly Solo and translating it with the help of Kuja as well to our local players to kind of make one unified team. It's going to take a little bit more time than just this week alone to really see them as a complete all-rounder. Yeah, after all, it is still a brand new lineup. It's still players that are getting used to one another. But the fact that they are able to make that decision as a collective is a good sign. And it means that we have a lot to expect coming from Todak in this game. I think they have a lot to prove overall as well. And that goes for both teams. So I'm going to be very excited to see what happens once we enter the Land of Dawn. Yeah, me too. I think when you look at Todak, Fly Solo, he has really cemented his name as one of the top coaches, right? Bringing Devu to top four on the international stage and, it, and it's a region that hasn't really performed all that well internationally and if Fly Solo does that, now it comes to Toda. I think there's a lot of expectations that was raised. Toda even boot camp in the Philippines with Fly Solo by their side. But you can also chalk it up to the road swaps, right? The, uh, well, the player changes in that go and Roma role. These two roles, I think, were the pillars, were the most important roles for Toda. Used to help by Chiku and Yums. And now these two players are not in the roster. Maybe that is also kind of a catalyst for Toda to search for a new identity on stage. I suppose it also could be taken in a way, let me play devil's advocate at the very least. It could be just the next generation of Toda that yeah. they're looking to set up to kind of change their branding from, hey, let's just keep throwing our heads at the wall and see what sticks to now, hey, we are more controlled. We're still able to throw our head at the wall. And usually when we do, we break it. Yeah, I think I agree with you there, because while it is definitely let go of the Langar mentality that's been associated with uh, Todak for so long, I think they're trying to take a more controlled approach, right? It's no longer, like you said, smacking their head against the wall and hoping that something sticks. It does feel like they're playing more, like, disciplined more towards that late game instead. So. It's a good change, especially when you're like, when you have a new lineup, you really gotta figure things out. Mm -hmm. Either way, though, we got something for you guys to really share about what is going on. We got MPLMY Insider. Yeah, and of course, we asked a gym uh, about Toda. You know, why for this season the player lineup for Toda isn't as much as the previous season? And he said, well, for this season, we're just focusing on six players because we want to minimize resource, but we also want to minimize the roster swaps. And we want to maximize the main five so that the super sub uh, the, and the super sub that they have. I think it's really good, right? You shrink the amount of attention that you need to give to the play, uh, to, uh, when you have, as opposed to when you have more players. And you get to focus on the main roster and have this sub player that you can interchange whenever you need him. Kind of like what SRG did last season mm -hmm. with Nova Escobar, or oh, Supernova in the sense. Well, at the very least, it could be the changes to the MPL itself. Now that we have the MAL, it's like, all right, I guess we have to have a that is true. to focus on. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other five can focus on the MAL. I, I, I think that's, that's also part of it. However, realizing this maximizing their resources and really focusing down on a couple of players is a good idea, especially when you're given the time to do so, right? Whether they start succeeding during MSC or maybe even to MS6, that might take some time. Well, either way, we got an interview for you guys. Let's check it out. It's the three of us, Panda, Yuna, and I. We all did the two mid laners who are considered the rookie this season. Then we communicate in the drafting phase the heroes we can change. About the in-games, the shot calls, uh, we all communicate as a team also. It's like there's no coach, no analyst. It's uh, no problem for us also because we already have so much experience. I think we can handle ourselves. Uh, just be matured about the game. Definitely a good mentality to have as a player on a team that didn't have a coaching staff to play around with. But now that they do have a coach, I want to ask Husky, no, considering that Bounty did get a win in the previous game, would having a coach now be potentially more of a detriment? 
theoretically it shouldn't be. I think if the players are self-sufficient, having a coach lessens the burden on the players. Right now they can just focus on the game and have the coach as a main input. Though I would say, I'm gonna play Devil's Advocate. Right now it's my turn. Okay. They beat Niners, sure. But Niners were at their weakest form. So is that really considered a true win for Bounty? Ah! Ooh. Yikes, yikes. I wouldn't say it's a complete true win. A win is still a win, and every single point, one of these points is going to matter. I, I think, you know, a real good test here is up against Todak, right? With a lot of just overall stable laners, stable players, even if they're not playing at their best, there's a certain degree of finesse that comes out of Todak, especially with this particular lineup. It's not like sudden dips and then sudden uprises. It's a lot more consistent overall, and that's hopefully what we're going to see, right? Where are the weaknesses in Bounty, and where are they going to look to improve from this week onwards after this match? Absolutely. As, like, when you have a new coach joining in the roster, there's definitely going to be a period of adjustment. So we're going to have to really keep an eye on how well Coach Jun kind of integrates with the playstyle that Bounty Esports has already crafted for themselves. And I think it's very unique when we're going into the draft pick for game number one here that Bounty Esports definitely feels a little bit more like the Langar team here, while Todak is establishing a more disciplined style of communication. Yeah, it definitely feels a bit weird looking at Todak playing a stable game, but I like this Todak, right? New generation, new era, and most importantly, Todak finally hunkering down on the idea that the only way to move forward is to look outwards, and that's why we have imports, and that's why Todak right now are able to adapt to what they're doing and what other teams are doing to a certain extent. Even the bands, you can see Todak a lot of focus on uh, Yuna in the jungle. No Baraz, no Baxia, the Explorer is also an option. Uh, it feels like Gary, I mean, it feels like Todok want, Todok wants to set up for a first pick Fredrin here, possibly. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Bounty has to respond with, because again, even if they are giving away, uh, giving away the Fredrin, there's still a lot of great junglers still available, assassin junglers in a matter of fact, that are still open for the side of Bounty. So it's kind of uh, uh, pick up the litter. Which one do you want to get rid of? Yeah, but by getting rid of the tankier junglers like Barat as well as Baxia as well, like you mentioned, there is the opening for assassin junglers here. If Bounty Esports bites the bait, bans something like the Frederin, then instantly you see things like the Joy and the Nolan Sir, getting picked up. Bounty Esports, ooh, gonna get rid of the Fanny, suspecting some funny business coming out of Todak. We're looking at the blue side advantage in the flesh, right? I think Coach Jab talked about this. If I'm on blue side, I dictate whatever uh, I want to ban, I dictate what the first pick and how I want to play that first phase. Fredrin gets picked up. I think it's also a very good pick compared to like the Nolan, simply because if someone picks Nolan, you can break for it with a tank jungler. But what if you take the only remaining tank jungler in this game? Suddenly that Nolan becomes less viable. I think they just want to make Yuna feel as uncomfortable as possible, yeah. right? They want to be able to kind of smother him down, as you mentioned, uh, as for mentioned just now. And now Minotaur and as well as Arla get locked in for the side of Bounty. Again, this is going to be great specifically for Havas. At least he's going to have some playmaking capabilities. If, assuming that he does take Flicker and doesn't breed out and go for Petrify like solo queue <laughs> games, I think that Todak should have a decent response to this. They could go for the Grok if they really want to start smothering their opponents down. They could even look for a decent gold lane matchup uh, early on for, um, well, at least for Shizo here. Let's see, Ooh. and as well as Whoa. Masha locked in straight away. This is a Masha XP lane if i ever seen one. Mm. I, I, I was having a conversation earlier on in the talent room. I was like, uh, I was uh, talking about Masha as a hero. I was like, whoa, yo, the, there's a new KOF collaboration skin for Masha, but how is Masha looking in the Rome role? Like, it seems like after Drian picked it, everyone started picking Masha up. And the, the response I got was, well, you know, you can actually play Masha XP lane with the exact same build. Hit level 4, gate play of half the seas uh, as fast as you can. You just clap people. It is the safer and more efficient way, I think, to play Masha as she is right now. Because she does need those items. She does need that Skickling to become this beast that just one-shots the backline and walks away like nothing ever happened. Comboing it with the chip, though, is very interesting. The hero only picked one so far in the hands of Zorn, and it was absolutely dominating in that game. I think overall, Masha in the EXP does have its weaknesses, and I think the only reason why it's brought alongside Chip is that she does actually need a little bit of help in lane. It's not like you want to take Concussive Blast to clear up those lanes quick to match the overall clear speed against someone like Arlet, because all you have is basic auto attacks, right? Mm. Empowered basic auto attacks, even. And against someone like an Arlet, taking a trade for Arlet, yeah, not exactly the best idea, but at the very least, he can forcefully clear the waves whenever he needs to. 
That being said, Chip can intervene in the lane to maybe even give Masha a bit of an advantage. As we get into the second phase, right, we're seeing Lo Yi banned out straight away. Yep. I, I like the Lo Yi ban because Claude hasn't been picked up by Todak yet, even against Natan. Sure, late game, we can see kind of a, uh, an even even power level, but with the Lo Yi, we're seeing what the Lo Yi can do. You put down BMI, Lo Yi brings it to the other side of the map, and you can return and continue that lane push. Not to mention you have a Chip in that roster as well. But I like the Odette ban. Coach Rain talked about the Odette yesterday when they played against SRG. As SRG did ban the Odette when they had a draft like a Joy, uh, like I believe Arlet as well. Mm -hmm. Odette, good against dive comp. We want to dive in your face. We don't want to do it with Odette. It's especially effective against Chip in particular because when he pulls the portal out and if everyone jumps in, they're just <laughs> all gathered together. If you get the Swan Song in, suddenly half your HP is gone from the entire team. And it's even a mage hero that doesn't get their ultimate cancelled when hit by the Thunderclap. Mm -hmm. So Todai wants to make sure that all bases are covered, especially since the low Yi is being taken out. Nia's picks being seen all over the place. Yeah, begs the question what the mid lane pick is actually supposed to be, with Bouncy the one actually banning out the Valentina. I was thinking maybe you can steal the chip ult, maybe you can make some plays around that. You already have the Minotaur on your side, but it doesn't look like Bouncy really want to change for their current game plan, which a lot of it seems to be just playing around EA XP side, right? We still don't know what the jungler from Bounty is going to be, and Torak limits it some more by banning out the low Nolan. And I think Joy is the only assassin jungler left. I, I suppose if you somehow want to go down the Lancelot route, you can. Mid lane, I'm looking at maybe a Lilia or maybe a Faramis. These two could be the pick that Bounty are looking for. Maybe third one is Novaria. And also, fun fact for you guys, this currently has the highest kill participation in MPL MYC in the 13. But to be fair, you only play two games, so... Stats are a bit skewered, but it means that he's very involved with his team throughout the game. Yeah, I think I do like that overall. And we're probably going to see that uh, participation go up now that they are going to be going on that fair miss. So this is full team fight coming out of Bounty. We have the final slash Midwind Fury in Nether Realm. It's going to be very difficult for Todak to get through this unless they're able to pick up a little more consistent damage. They're going to be leaving the jungle pick for the very end. But it doesn't seem like there's a lot of options, right? The Joy, like you guys mentioned, the Martis, which was kind of a signature for Yuna in the past. I suppose you can go for the Martis. It's a good matchup into the Fredrin. Uh, but I think overall, that wouldn't matter as much looking at what Todak has currently. You have so much support from the Chip and the Masha. And now you take the Linnea Roger, it's just pure dominance from Torah. They want to play fast, they want to be able to out-rotate Bounty and make sure that this team fight comp never gets to play together. I don't know. I feel like... Uh, I'm not so... I agree with the Lilia. They were missing ways to actually wave clear. I might not necessarily agree with the Roger this time around, mainly because if we're looking at Bounty's overall lineup, like, yes, you are eventually going to win the lane, and it does kind of look like, at least for the side of Bounty, that they are going to be prioritizing fighting around the turtle. That might not necessarily be the case, right? They might just leave Havas on an island by himself and play on the opposite side of the map to kind of sm smother the Roger, because inevitably, their team composition as of right now is just so much better at team fighting as long as they layer their resources properly and rather not just overload it during the fight. I don't think Todak has much of an opportunity to get in on those fights unless they're caught off through, through lane mistakes or maybe uh, over rotation. That's why I saw a brother cloud uh, the squad early on. I much prefer the cloud uh, simply because of what bounty has, right? You have good AoE damage, good late game scaling, but we'll see. Maybe this is a glimpse of the Todak Langar with that Roger. That's possible. Todak definitely have quite a snowball lineup on their side. Once they picked up the Roger with the Chip, with the Masha, they want to roam around the map getting pickoffs. But like we've highlighted, Bounty Esports has a really good team fight composition. As long as they outnumber, they will win basically every single time. Well, let's see if the new and reinv reinvigorated Bounty Esports can claim the Swordfish's head in this game number one as we hop into the land of Dawn. Bounty Esports on that red side and Todak on that blue side. Both of these teams very, very, very in compositions, right? They have very clear win conditions on what they want to do, and I think it's kind of up to Todak to win out their lanes individually. And let's see how the macro is going to really involve both of the players, and especially the junglers, because they're going to be the biggest influence here. Gary's going to be starting on the orange, uh, on the orange buff. Same goes for Yuna. They should be crossing paths at some point, but it looks like Torak, at the end of the day, will end up on gold side. What 
is very interesting to me is the fact that Todak is very clearly going for a very aggressive setup here because we have three impure rages, including Shizo and Gary on the Roger and Fredrin. So they just want straight up built in damage right from the get go to make sure that they're able to somewhat out tempo Bounty Esports. Wait till you see Momo having that lethal ignition. It's all about <laughs> yep. the Triple Thunder Clan and the burn damage afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, it's good to have the impure rage to be able to kind of poke out your opponents, but it does show that Turok want to play for the earlier stages of the game. Like, Zyre Senpai, all right, it makes sense, right, having the impure rage. For Shizzle specifically, not only does he want to win out in his lane, but he also wants to be able to sustain in case he takes a bad trade if we see Yanlord kind of skew the lane into their favor, or more importantly, just to maintain some mana. Because in most cases, or what we've seen so far about the Rogers in MPL MY, a lot of them like to go for the Quantum Charge. Yeah, I think it's a great idea as well, because they're already expecting more extended trades against Bounty Esports, considering the healing from Yan Lord and the Nether Realm from Assist. Having that inbuilt damage and uh, regen is going to be very useful. Yeah, for face up, you have to be a bit careful. That, the decimation already by Yuna used it a bit too early, and now he's going to be punished. But the appraisal's wrath damage isn't enough. Yuna walks away. Ah, the early appraiser's wrath. Not enough gray health to really stack it up. Just there, but at the very least they get the flicker out of Refalatia, right? Luckily he was able to get a little bit of a shield before he walked away. If not, he would have 100% given away first blood. But let's see how this turtle is going to play out. The boss is trying to chip down the help. Our Zyme Senpoi is not four yet, but Momo keeps his teammate alive. And at the turtle pit, is Gary starting on the objective first? Yanlord not even close to being level four, but Refalatia, he has that fall already. He can bring in the whole team if he wants to. Goes for the engage here. He comes, calls in the reinforcement, replace that in the midst of things. It's Momo in the fray, but the first blood goes over to Yuna. Her boss dashing around to regain ah. help, but enough time. And it's Yuna to find a double bounty esports, finds an advantage. Mm, not too sure if I agree with the choice of Todak going for that fight there, especially since it's giving Panda the entire gold shield up in the goal lane as well due to Shizo's arrival. And they weren't even able to trade up against Bounty. Man, that's such a feels bad, right? Because Tolak had the right idea. They wanted to drop down. They needed to time everything well. Make sure that, ooh, good canceled. Does that mean the Revelation might get a potential gank off here? Yeah, he need, might need a bit of help. Yuna is nearby, so Felicia is going to call it off. But this actually forces Panda to stay at the turret. Is Yuna in the vicinity? Yeah, I don't think Tolak can make a move. If Refalacia can cancel him one more time, if he can cancel him one more time, okay, he doesn't. All right, at the end of the day, at least for Todak's side, major losses all across the board, right? We got full goal played and coming in from Panda at the very least. They wanted to time, uh, they wanted to time the ult Chip's ultimate just to make sure that Shizu could actually come in at the end of it to make sure that he can clean things up. I think there was a miscommunication at the very least. Shizu, very, very late to the fight. More importantly, they waited until he got back to base. Wait, the boss? He should be okay, right? Yeah. No deaths here. Grace Mike, that's the uh, Demon Mark Vengeance reset. He's fine, he's fine. Looks like Todak going to control the turtle for now. Gets that reset. Bounty Esports still definitely in a better position to try and contest this. Especially now that Panda is actually freed from his lane to help clear mid as well. This Natan going to really start snowballing in terms of gold. And that's something Todak really needs to avoid. Because with a composition like this, they need to be faster. Oh, get ready to fight. Yes, Mino is going to delay Todak. They coin the whole village again, but Netherrealm keep them alive. And Aziz gets taunted. That's the first kill going over to Shizo. Bounty Esports. I don't think they want to continue this fight. Just walk away with the objective. But Gary and replace that. They have found a thought. Yanlot forced to flicker the safety. Her boss back into it with the vengeance. At the end of the day, Toda only gets one. Mm -hmm. All this, all while all this is happening, Shizo comes into the fight, gets his kill, goes back into the lane straight away. He's not sticking around for any longer than he needs to. More importantly, so we can see that the full rotation of Bounty now looking to respond to Shizo on top side. Just good response from Bounty. I don't see how Shizo gets out of this. Got flicker. Ooh. Got flicker. Well, I guess he can. Good timing there from Shizo. Definitely realizing that something was off with the way Bounty was rotating. Good calls from both sides, but no casualties as of right now. The quick move from Shizo to join that fight and then go back up the top lane definitely helps narrow the gold gap just a little bit here. But Todang needs to be able to take these fights a little bit more under their own control. Right now, it really is just kind of chaos whenever these fights start. Ooh! Hey, look at the damage Ooh. from Nine! Just walking it down. Dang. Wow. Caught, <laughs> caught rolled. 
That was sad. Can't do much about that overall, but Shizo in great position to get this lane gank off. There's Chip there as well. We can call in a party if you oh, need. Dead. And a stun down. Oh. Shizo actually also low. As Yanlon able to provide the support that is necessary, Todak not able to get the kill onto Panda. Now they can just take the portal and go back to where they came from. Sad, sad. But Panda utilizing his battle spell to get out of there, uh, to get out of there, making sure that he's topped up, still alive, and now evens out in the lane. This is where it gets really scary, right? Because now Panda is coming to a point where he is eventually going to outscale Shizo. It's all about first damage. Who can make that impact the quickest before the support starts coming in? Absolutely. Oh, have off. Should be fine, but has to fall back. Can't reset that health bar. Oh, I, I believe that was just one thunderclap. Panda, though, I think Ooh. he's dead. Yep, Shizo with the collection. Oh, this chip is so obnoxious to yep. deal with. Panda was not ready for the second gank in a row. Like, you usually expect a period of safety after being able to avoid that very first. But now, Todak should be able to use this to easily control and get that turtle to slowly get more net worth for themselves. I think it's one of those things that you assume is gonna be all right because your team is rotating up to the top side of the map anyways, right? We see Chip, he goes for another, he might go for another lane gank on the bottom side of the map, doesn't find it, but he will hide in the bushes to maybe skew this lane. He did have to commit the flicker on for Panda earlier on, but it did free up the turtle, so Todak still gets something out of it, and that is enough to balance out the state of the game. No goalie on either side. Uh, Bounty Esports, I feel like they're yeah, <laughs> fine, we're just farming things up. <laughs> they're so worried about this chip, they're sending Atlas <laughs> as well as Yanlo to the top side, but he's down bot! He's down bot! <laughs> oh no, Havon, there's no getting out of this one. <laughs> they did not see that one coming. Uh, they're gonna trade tower for tower, but it's great. I mean, it just shows that Rufflacia is really getting underneath the skin of Bounty Esports. They're setting themselves their own protocols. Oh. Wait, Yuna? He was... took it. He found the portal, he took it, and now he's like, oh boy. <laughs> I'm not sure this is where you want to be, my friend. <laughs> no, he has the mortal coil, but uh, can he get away? Nope, nope. And top side, he even used the minimum speed to get Panda out. Oh boy. That's two ta tower, uh, turrets in a row. Uh, for Toda and that bot lane. Hey man, it just show, it go it just goes to shows, just goes to show that even Chip gets banned in high level scribs. It just shows just the lack of. I mean, I think it's pretty hilarious. He walks in there and he's just like, "Hey, what's this? Too late. You're already TP'd out of there because it's in a bush. You weren't expecting it. It happens. The question is now whether Toda can maintain the 2.5k lead because it looks like they're winning on every single front." Mount Esports needed to be the most worried about when Todak got a snowball here. And while it did a good job of avoiding it so far, Todak is really starting to blow up that net worth lead now with some good rotations from Aflisia. And for some reason, Yuna just deciding he was going to get into someone else's vehicle today. <laughs> Definitely not the wisest choice. I can't, it's so funny. And, I, and we saw the goal differential. He's the one may, trying to maintain the lead for the side of Bounty Esports while all <laughs> the other lanes are down. And then he's the one yep. who dies. <laughs> well, <laughs> happened to the best of us. Hold up on the Lord and Zyme, he he's just gonna zone out Bounty the best he can. And I mean, Chip is on that bottom lane, but he's ready to rotate, right? He's standing on top of one of the portal. He can easily join if needed. But hold up, they're not in a rush to clear this. Oh, here we go. Here we go, replace ya. Should be able to bring in Momo. Yuna caught with his fence down. That's the jungler. And it's Shizo to collect him. Even though there's a three-man knockup from Yang Lord, you don't have decimation, no recess. Her boss flickers to try and look for Momo, but Momo gets his health bar back and her boss gets slammed. Momo claps him for the mega kill. And it's Shizo time to shine to find a assist in the back bounty esports loser streak. Ooh, Yuna, he did, he completely forgot that there was a chip portal right next to the bush he was standing in. That's something you have to remember. Oh? No, I, I, why? I, I don't think you should be fighting that. He has the entropy. Oh! He's collect Momo on the way out. Close, close. Good timing on the entropy at the very least. And you're right, they shouldn't be fighting this, honestly. The fact that they trade one for three, not exactly the best idea for the side of Bounty. Great for Todok, in a matter of fact. And I think it's everything's going well. If you look at the damage dealt, Momo is currently sitting on top at 29,000. Hafaz actually not too far behind him. Zayn Senpoi in third and Shizo in fourth. A lot of these... A lot of the, the the strategies we are seeing, or at the very least, the executions that we are seeing from Todak side have been very, very good. It's just that Bounty don't feel very mindful of Chip just yet. Oh my god, Zyme, calm down. 
this is where we want to see Bounty Esports, how do they recover from this, right? When everything is in disarray, this should feel like their domain, but Tota, they have a firm control. We know that her boss uh, is able to keep the team kind of intact as the IGL. Now he's really putting that to the test. There's a lot of pressure on Bounty because they naturally have a team fight lineup, which means that they need to be grouped up as four or five most of the time. And that is naturally going to be weaker against a team that can skirmish and split push, which Todak has. But it's even worse when they have Rafflesia on the chip because it means that Bounty Esports needs to be always grouped up for the potential to respond to a mass teleport. I think the biggest issue is the fact that their draft coming in from Bounty, they only have some, they only have like, what, one guy who really scales well? Like, Aziz, yes, he does scale, but if you compare it to Zyme's point, the output of damage is just so different, right? Uh, Aziz is going to be playing more as a support rather than a high damage dealer, and most of the time, Tora, half the members aren't even there before the fight even begins, and then the chip portal happens. This might just rest on Panda's shoulders. We are approaching that almost a 12 minute mark at this point. Tora, Surprisingly, after all of that, hasn't breached the 5k gold elite yet. So I think Bounty, they're still in a spot where it is possible to recover, albeit a bit harder. They can find Gary, but not an easy target to go for. This man even has the Oracle. So good luck trying to go for it. Zyme Senpai with the Black Shoes to get out of the final splash. Ooh. And uh, looking for Zyme! The damage almost there as this with the finisher. And you have the Minoan Fury and the Nether Round to keep it running. Live Momo just goes back for the one to slap Panda drop on Momo Force as this gets a double kill. The portal has been summoned and as this next on the chopping block. Yuna in the midst of things, but his support system is down. Force with the final slash underneath the turret to give him a kill onto Gary and Bounty somehow pulled out an even trade. Mm -hmm. Three for three trade. Good punish on Zyme Senpoi. They know he doesn't have Purify. He went for sprint, so they can immediately just jump on top of him. Here we oh go again! Stuck together, Yuna, the stun from her boss, and another final slash, Shizo! Taste the tip of the spear, her boss, the savior of our bounty, and he's going for more. Can he run away? No. It was just a rhetorical question. Bounty Esports cleans it up. Ooh, greedy, greedy coming out of Todak here. I don't blame him. More kills on Shizo. Sounds good. He was already 5-0. and oh, But you cannot underestimate the sustainability that Bounty Esports has. Havos being able to find two excellent final slashes and a beautiful choice to take out Zyme Senpoi at the start of that fight meant that Todak just did not have enough consistent damage to break down the team fight composition. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shizo at the end of it probably could have cleaned up all three if it wasn't for Havos peeling him away from low targets like Yuna, for an example, right? I think Shizo, we're looking at his build. He's 5-1-5. and five. He's got a Blade of Despair underneath his belt as well. I would have imagined he would have gone for Malefic Raw. I would have imagined that he would have gone for a safer build option, but no, he's all in on this greed, all in on that damage. He is the win condition. Bounty just need to be low. And Bounty found a neutralizer. No more go advantage for both teams. And Arla at this stage of the game has one of the lowest cooldowns for his ultimate. That's why we saw two, three final slashes in a single extended fight. Top tier two will drop and Bounty finally will be able to free up that mid lane a little bit. Yuna even having the courage to walk up just to make sure that this Lord gets to travel a bit further. And the Esports wants to up the momentum. They know that Rafflesia is on the other side of the map. They know that Momo is trying to get a split push in. They got a trades up in his ear. Momo's like, get it. could even split push by themselves. Bounty forced to go back and respond. Yep, and now this might just be a forced mistake here. Yuna, he needs to get out of there. No more to coils as well. And, and he also used the Retribution to gain some extra speed. Here comes the portal chip calling in his teammates, but Bounty able to get enough distance. And Gary's charge also cancelled by the uh, Minotaur. This just feels like a throwback, a journey back through time. But Todak and Masha used to be synonymous. Mm -hmm. I mean, if only the jungler was Hayabusa, right? Then it would all <laughs> perfectly like. <Yeah. laughs> yep. like a portal into the past. A, 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 a portal into the past. Now, the inhibitor is extremely low here, but I don't think Bounty Esports are too worried about it. They just need to maintain their lanes. The only problem is that they need to stick as five, right? And as the map shortens down with no outer targets to really work with, you have a lack of vision. And every single time you send one person out, that's when it gets scary. You never know when Chip just shows up, summons the whole crew to take out that one man, and turns this into a 4v5. 
There's so much fear here that Bounty Esports has to play around. Looking at the item builds again, Shizou definitely going for full out damage. This is not the semi-tank Roger that we get to see sometimes with the Thunder Belt. Even Momo having played of Despair. Oh, oh my goodness, God. the Thunderclap! Yuna needs to get out of this. We're assisting that and Momo ends up being the one that goes down. Yuna resets the decimation and now is Bounty with the response. She's able to get her boss at least. Bounty wins the fight. Todak was not expecting Bounty Esports to respond to that as quickly as they did. They did nearly burst down Yuna, but because the Thunderclap was already used on the Martis, it wasn't available to take out Panda from the fight, which allowed Bounty Esports to dish out some good damage into Todak, who were all funneling into a single area. I think at this point, Todak needs to recognize that Momo is expandable. He can walk in, He can walk into all five of these members and not really take that much damage. The only person he's really worried about is Panda and sitting inside of his entropy, uh, taking multiple entropy auto attacks at the same time would be his biggest cause of death. He needs to walk in there, force out at least one of the big ultimates. If he can force out Yanlord to use the Minoan Fury or Aziz to actually use the Nether Realm, that's already a win for Todak's side, even if he doesn't one-shot Panda. But it's still on the table as a tool. Hanna just fell the bottom lane, so Toda will reset the Lord as they send Momo down to threaten that already low inhibitor turret of Bounty. They're not going to wait. They're just going to try and clear this Lord as fast as possible. Replace that calls in the portal to bring his team in, but Bounty will get the Lord. Yuna with the Retribution. Replace that loses the immortality, but as this, he's going to keep his team alive, topped up and saved with the Nether Realm. Appraisal grab, slam damage, insufficient. Yuna tries to get, go over the wall, fails to do so, but has enough coverage to escape anyways. I don't understand. Well, are they trying to take space or are they not trying to take space? What is the call here? They were definitely going to get the inhibitor whether they liked it or not. So I don't understand why Todak is not looking to claim back the space given away to Bounty Esports to take that position in no means. They expect Reflation to come from that top side and drop the portal. Yes, I understand that. But by no means should we be seeing Zion Senpai standing so far backwards when Gary is there. Shizo nearby thinking about whether he wants to go in on this situation as well. So why not? What was the call from Todak's side? I think what Todak... Oh, hold on. You're not in trouble? Okay, he's okay. He's fine. But I believe the call from Todak was to try and call down the portal and then wait and see what would happen. If they could try and force down the Nether Realm before Momo makes the choice of going into the portal or not. And once it failed, they just tried to keep them there so that Momo could potentially get a split push. Hesitation, I'd say, from Todak. Bounty, the complete opposite. They make the call, they make sure it works. Gary almost got pulled back, but top inhibitor guaranteed to fall. Bounty also cracks open one of their own. Dime Senpoi playing with fire at this point. I think the timing for Toda definitely has passed a little bit. Uh, it has passed a little bit. It's going to be a lot harder to do so, but I think, you know, with Zy if Zyme Senpoi is in the right position at the right time, he can really do a lot of work against Bounty Esports, considering that they're always so grouped up, right? His biggest problem is the fact that he didn't take Purify, right? Because now, Havas is a legitimate threat. At any time, he could get flickered on. At any time, he could get pulled back. Or, if he uses his Black Shoes, instantly gets jumped on by Minotaur and straight into the Minoan Fury. I don't know. With Sprint, yes, you have a couple of options, but it does mean that you have a longer cool down and worse yet finding yourself to play aggressive is all dependent on how good you can schmoove around the map i'm looking at where chip is right now was well, probably thinking of a gank angle but if bounty is supposed stuck like this this is where the team comp of bsd really comes online when the ai winning prediction says that bounty has a way higher chance of walking away with game one 67%. Pretty high overall. We'll see whether or not Toda can overturn those odds. Momo did just finish up that great Dragon Spear. I feel like it's been a long time since I've seen that item built at all here. But that's going to be quite a lot of damage now that both DPSs are maxed out in terms of items here with the Demon Hunter Sword completing Shizo's item build as well. Mount Esports so far doing a good job of responding because unfortunately Todak just doesn't feel confident enough to go in and try and force out resources anymore. I think the timings have been are, are really off-putting, right? Because again, there's just so many conditions that need to be met and unless Todak finds a, a way to forcefully make Bounty Esports to make a mistake, that's all they have to do. Mistake oh, is dime. Uh-oh. Oh, Final oh, oh, he oh, just misses! That could have been a pick-off and now her boss might pay with his life, has to flicker save to a panda! Uh, he has his boy backed up. Zyme Senpoi still falls. It's in situations like this where having an aggressive marksman with basically no fear in his heart is very valuable because Panda 
finding that opportunity. Wait, 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 Rafisha. Oh, he's about to do it. He's doing he's it. He's about to bring the whole oh, team. No. I want this to clear the wave. I don't think they can do it in time. Rafisha saving Todak in this game one. What a play. What a play from Rafalesia. We were theorizing about something like this possibly be happening, and this was the perfect situation for it. What a turnaround victory for Todak's side. You can see him high fives all around, but everyone's looking at Rafalesia. You madman, you mad lad, you genius. GG, well played. That Wait. is legitimately the most heartbreaking way to lose a game. We, when we, when Chip was first introduced, this was one of the first thing that was on our minds. We've seen it on TikTok, we've seen it everywhere. And God, we see it on the MPL stage by a team none other than Todak. I, I wouldn't have had it any other way, but Bounty did everything right, only to lose that, that cheeky backdoor. It seems like Todak, they have not lost their touch after all. Yeah, they haven't. Again, would you call that a force mistake or not? It's a little tough to tell, but a definite outplay for sure. I feel like we saw a little glimpse of that old Todak Langar style there. Like that, <laughs> that's classic Todak. You think, oh, we just found a great opportunity. We picked up Zion Senpoi when they thought they got us. And then all of a sudden, Todak's in your base, in your house. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. So three a pure rages, one lethal ignition on, on the Masha, mm -hmm. sprint on Lilia, full on aggression. And it was the chip that saves everything. <laughs> Hold on, Langa for sure. Welcome back. Welcome back, Toda. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's understandable, right? Because from Reflation's perspective, it's like, man, every single time I drop the portal, we have to wait out the ultimates before we take the portal. It's a waste of time every single time. And now he finds the perfect way to actually make instant impact by ending the game altogether. Five star Uber. Five star Uber. Right, right there. there. It is legitimately in the spirit of Chip because Chip is literally like, why not take shortcuts in life? Yeah. yeah. Like, we keep why fighting. Walk? them why? why keep why fight we just go into the base it's that yeah. simple oh, why man. walk why contest for lord when you can just end the game i i bet i bet the uh, heroes designers and moon they're gonna be really happy after yep. watching this because this is the dream their product their vision realized on a competitive stage let's head backstage to look at the mvp please don't tell me it's anyone else but replace them Let's go, let's go. Replace that. Is it Replace here? It's like, haha, Actually, joke's on you, it's <laughs> <laughs> This is the one time I would take it from Zyme and give it to Replace <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he needs to be proud. That was such a good, good was oversight. Was he eating chips was the better question. <laughs> <laughs> 0 4 and 10 overall. Stats, concussive blast, some extra uh, armor, and as well as M arms and movement speed in the river. Overall, standard tank build, but man. Good utilization overall. I would like to see, because again, there was a lot of adjustments that had to happen mid-game, right? They realized that the timing is not as obvious as it usually is because of the support system that Bounty had around their team fight composition. So dropping the portal, uh, at the very least, uh, adding the shortcut can be a little bit tough, but an absolute menace to the side laners. I really love the way that Rafflesia was positioning towards those mid to late stages, where he was basically just in the same lane as Momo, so that he could back up the Masha if they decided to gank him. But he was also playing around the chip portals to make sure that he would be able to find these gank angles, rejoin the fight where necessary, and just portal in Momo. The value of this hero has been very sufficiently demonstrated in this game. And I can officially say that while well, Chip has now is now an official member of the League of Heroes that can not be with the team and still have an impact. The first one is Angela. Mm -hmm. right? You cannot be with the team, still have an impact with hard guard. Chip does the exact same thing. It's, just, it's frustrating to deal with. It really is frustrating. And you can definitely tell that Bounty probably didn't have as much practice against something like the Chip. Because you can tell their overall mindfulness of where the portals are, their overall mindfulness when it comes down to team fight is just, okay, we expect to see the portal come down, we have ultimates to deal with that, but the side laners are the ones who got majorly punished because of like, ah, oh yeah, he should be here. His last team was top side. He's probably not going to be bot side, right? Whoops out of the bush. The craziest thing was that her boss didn't have his final slash for the defense because he missed it onto Zyme. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, was, it was about to be an incredible play. At least Panda was able to capitalize on it overall, but I think that's Bounty, the way they are approaching these fights and the way they are approaching Todak especially is correct. Punish Zyme Senpai, don't let Shizo, don't get below 50% uh, health so that Shizo doesn't get an extra bonus. Gary, basically useless in these fights. Momo could be a problem, but if we see him first, 
we can approach next. Yeah, Bounty Esports definitely approached this game pretty well in terms of their execution, being able to finally put some fear in the heart of Zion Senpoi so he could no longer walk in front and just dish out that damage. That's why you can see that his DPS didn't end up being as high as you'd normally expect. Still the highest in the game though, because that's just Lilia overall. But I think one of the biggest blunders that Bounty Esports did kind of make in this game was during that drafting phase, where they immediately started their draft with Minotaur and Arlet and basically locked themselves into a teamfight style that allowed Todak to pick up the flexibility of the chip. Uh, I think that... I think the Arlet was fine. I think the Minotaur, Minotaur shown within that first phase, they could have waited for it as a third pick instead and still keep it as a flex uh, keep it as a flex overall. Because even if we did see the Arlet actually go into the wrong position, you would see very much good impact, especially against Zyam, Zyam Senpoi, and at the very least force him to actually pick up a Purify. I think it also allows you to respond to whatever Roma picks that Todang might want, right? You see the chip, you can still go for the Minotaur, you can even go consider a Croc, which was the hero that I had in mind for Bounty. I think overall, even though they locked themselves into this comp, they still put it off very well. I, I wouldn't say that Bounty lost because they because Todang was just better. They just Todang just found that one opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. This. Bounty is very, very promising. And off of this game, I wouldn't be surprised if we go a full series at this point. I think they're feeling a lot more lax, and it looks like Todak still has holes in their overall communication and the way that they time their fights. Something to keep in mind, it could be one of those warm-up things where Todak is just like, hands are cold, just give me a couple of more moments, I'll get back into I'll get back into the ring with some warm hands. Well, they were called the Kings of 2-1 at one point in MPL history, so you may not be too far off in that regard. Todak definitely had better tools going into this, and I think Bounty Esports did a great job of using their lineup. So there were definitely mistakes on both sides that made this game have to go the way it did. I think Surprisingly enough, the late game management, I would give it to Bounty. I think they are just finding a lot more of those openings on the Todak, right? Mm -hmm. like punishing Zyme, uh, punishing Todak's tendency to overstay after a fight. That's how we even got to that stage. But if Todak didn't break that bonnet inhibitor, this game would have gone a completely different direction. So props to Todak, Momo recognizing that that bottom lane is always going to be open. At least one of the side lanes is going to be because Bounty needs to stick together. But aside from that, I would prefer to see Bounty in that late stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I would agree with you as well because again, I, I think that it sh it highlights the best of what Bounty is capable of, right? They're really good at punishing micro mistakes. Oh, he uses this. Oh, Zayn Senpai uses Black Shoes really early on. He's trying to disrespect us. All right, if he walks up one more time, we're gonna kill him. He walks up, Panda pulls the trigger, and I think all of this is well communicated amongst Bounty. Tornok, on the other hand, play a little bit, a lot more macro centric. I mean, you got a chip. You have to communicate. You just kind of don't have a choice about that overall. And we did see them mess up a couple of times where she's always just not ready to go through the portal just yet. It's just like, give me a second, hold it off for a little bit longer. And when he's already at the base, it's like, I got, I might as well take it at this point. Yeah, sometimes you, when you play chip, you just the moment you put the portal, it's just go time. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no waiting. It's so difficult because they did have to try and wait out the Minwen Fury and the Nether Realm in some situations, which is how Todak ended up with some disconnected team fights overall because Shizu didn't feel safe going in, Momo didn't quite feel safe going in until he could find the right target. So it was quite a back and forth here, and that's why we can see that we have Panda as the rich guy, Zion Senpoi as the carry. We have Yuna as the sandbag and Rafflesia as the best wingman. Very split across both teams. Yeah, best wingman for sure. I mean, yep. I no arguments against that. You can even see on this goal graph that Todak at one point, because of all these fast rotations, they were able to gain momentum over Bounty, taking side lanes, taking major objectives, even the first Lord. And the goal lead, I yeah, peaked at almost. Wait. Not 4.5, I think at one point it went over 4.5, but that's beside the question. Then you see Bounty starting to really punish Todak for their mistake, and then the graph goes back down, and when Bounty got the Lord, it was actually their best chance of winning, if not for the chip. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were evening out, right? We, we were getting to the point where everybody had max items, and the extra gold is just to juggle the items at the very least. And I think that, at least for Bounty's side, they were on the. They were definitely building up some momentum to actually close out this game. I, it would have been a hard high ground defense at the very least, assuming that Zion Senpoi was being disrespectful as he was in game number one. But I think there are going to be some adjustments from this, right? Definitely things to consider for Todak in this upcoming game. I'm guessing that at least for Bounty, they probably want to take blue side. 
or ban Chip. I think you need to ban yeah, Chip. I think, I think Chip needs to be respected now. A lot of teams have been letting him go for a long time, but we're once again given a demonstration of how terrifying he can be overall. Todak being able to rotate around the map, being able to get kills, while this initial fight didn't quite go their way, after that, you can see the value of Carifelicia comboing with Momo, people just popping in out of nowhere, and how they're able to secure fights by taking advantage of Bounty not being used to thinking about these chip portals. I would say even in these chaotic team fights, you can see Bounty clearly understands what they need to do and what specific heroes' roles are. Right? Like Gideon pointed out earlier on, Havos massive effort in this particular team fight to literally keep Bounty Esports afloat in this game. If not for her boss with these crazy final slashes with the stuns to peel for his teammate, I think Tola could have easily rolled over them. Mm, I do agree with you overall. Not to mention uh, Momo as well, being able to find Panda in that fight. If not for that, Bounty Esports would have had a resounding victory. So again, very back and forth between these two teams. Sometimes Todak would disrespect Bounty and you can see them win out fights like this. And then sometimes Bounty just completely forgets that this is something Chip can do. And then they end up losing the game because of an insane backdoor attempt from Rafflesia. What a game, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the panic recall on the map. Yeah, I mean, they, they probably shouldn't have done the panic recall. They probably should have just looked for the portal. That would have been a lot faster to get <laughs> that, back. That, so, that's true. I'm telling you, mindfulness. Mindfulness about the heroes that you're playing against is going to be important. It changes the mindset of the way that you approach the game, or at the very least, those of, well, for anime references of Kurokoto Basket, have the Emperor's Eye. It's something to take into consider, consideration, especially in the midst of Fog of War. Hmm, well, but the thing is, how do you keep an eye on things when you have this little fox guy yeah, we just floating it. around, <laughs> you breathing it. portal, yeah, you, he might actually have to go. And Chip himself would be quite happy about that because it means he doesn't have to work. <laughs> it's you know more what? accurate banning Chip. <laughs> that is true, it's very lore accurate. You know, I want to see a universe where Matilda and Chip both go through. Oh no. That would no. Bad. No, I mean which what what first of all, what team would allow that? And second of all, which side would be like looking at look if you're red or blue, I feel like if you're red, you don't have a choice. You have to get rid of the Matilda if you're like, okay, I'm a I'm a teeter the line. And then blue side decides we're gonna teeter the line too. The yeah. draft is not only gonna be chipping as well as Matilda, you're gonna see like Joy Nolan. <laughs> you're gonna see Joy you're gonna see Joy Nolan Arlet as well. That would be fun. That'd be too much. It would be entertaining. But it, like I, I do agree, it'd be probably a little bit too much because these teams right now are not really prepared to deal with a whole bunch of these picks at the same time, right? I think Mountain Esports obviously don't have a lot of practice dealing with the chip, and then when you combine it with the Masha as well, then th there's a lot to have to deal with overall. So you can see that they adjusted well, all things considered. Either way, though, let's have a look at the power distribution between Panda and Shizu. Wow. This is actually in favor of Panda just by a little bit. The only thing that Shizo has over Panda is that average KD. So 5.0 over uh, to 3.2. Uh -huh. I would expect okay. it to be slightly closer. I would imagine that it would be slightly closer too. Maybe the last the last game definitely inflated the stats. I think Shizzle was walking away with like what five uh five one five and one six and one if I if I'm correct. No, 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 six there, and right? two because he died at the very end there if I remember correctly. But I don't think he should have skewed it that much to at least the five. I mean overall average KP still looking in favor of Panda rather than Shizzle. And then when we look at the average damage slash gold, average damage slash how do they calculate that? How did they calculate that one? How, just, did, how much damage like you every do? Every point of damage. <laughs> and then you divide with the net worth you have. <laughs> you game. divide with the net worth? You, you just have a guy with a clipboard following every single hero around on the map. It's like every time they hit someone, okay, you did that much damage. <laughs> you know, I could save you the trouble, right? When the game ends, you just look at the statistics and it will tell you how much damage you dealt. That's usually the way that they do it, so I'm surprised that they want to mix it up with the gold, uh, gold on top of it to make an interesting number there. But looking at the player head-to-head, -head, we're going to compare Havas as well as Momo. Havas has done phenomenally in lane, in a matter of fact, making sure that Momo doesn't get too far ahead and needs outside intervention. And even then, it's still a bit of a pickle to lock down Havas. Havas is like a mini boss in the lane. Like You can't 1v1 him, right? He knows his way around the heroes that he played. I mean, the Arlot demonstration was a very good example. You try to gang up on him, he gets out. Even if he trades his life, he makes sure that you go down with him. 
Yeah, I think Havos has been doing an amazing job. It's basically like the main setter for Bounty Esports. He has a good balance of aggression as well as discipline in terms of knowing how he needs the position in relation to the rest of his team to make sure that people like Panda are able to dish out the damage that is necessary. So it's good. We want to see more of this overall, and I hope that we're going to get that. As we jump into game number two, Bounty Esports, like you mentioned, they are going to be on the blue side. Mm -hmm. So many benefits of being on the blue side. You can ban the chip, you can ban the Masha as well, and then you can start thinking about what that third ban is going to be. Uh, oh, still banning out the Fanny this time around, even on blue side. Or you can leave chip open and take chip for yourself. Ah, also a possibility. Also a good possibility. Let's see how Todak wants to respond to this, right? They're on red side. It's kind of on them to see what the first pick, which first pick is actually going to get through. They ban out the Frederick. <laughs> I think Yuna plays mm. a healthy amount of Frederick. And Matis. <laughs> they, it was basically the only two heroes he played in the previous season. So it's kind of understandable here coming out of Toda. But it's interesting to see what they are thinking of. Considering that Fredrin would probably not be the priority pick in most situations. I mean, it really shouldn't be, <laughs> to be fair. There are a lot of good options out there. Let's see how Bounty actually responds to this. Maybe we'll get a little bit of an idea of what Coach Jun is going to be doing with the boys, at the very least, to set their plan for game number two in this third no band. Third yeah. band's going to be chipped. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. A lot of the problems from last game have been taken out. Now, Todak, open draft here. A lot of first picks A lot of first picks can go over to Bounty at the very least, but at least they're not giving over the Nolan. Joy is still up and available. I wonder if Bounty would want the Joy first pick. Doesn't seem like that is the uh, that is going to be the prerogative, right? I mean, even in the last game, Joy was left open. They didn't even touch it. So Angela first pick. That was what Bounty banned in game one. Now they get the first pick it. Yeah, I like this a lot more, especially as an opener. Because again, when we see Angela, she is just a great enabler for a lot of these like frontline, frontline dive heavy junglers, or maybe even a side laner. We'll see what Torak has to do to reply to this. They could be the ones to pick up the joy. I'm guessing that if they do, then at least for Bounty, they're going to respond with the tank jungler, whether it be Baxia, Barat, so on and so forth, at the very least to smother it. I think it's looking good unless they get a strong side laner for themselves. We could see another first pick sh uh, Shizzle Roger once more. Yeah. I think Todak went into this anticipating that the Angela would be given away. That's probably why they did ban the Frederick in the end to make sure that they wouldn't get that combo. And typically when you see Angela being picked up, that team is going to want to pick up as many Angela combos as possible. Think of the Fredrin, the Baxia, the Carry, the CC heroes like this. And we see that teams have, in the past, countered this by picking up as many of those heroes for themselves instead. And that's what Turdak is doing. Carry is great against tankier heroes, and Baxia deals with that healing. Yeah, I, I would prefer the Baxia so much more compared to any other junglers. Uh, in this current state, does do well into the Joy also. I think Bounty, if you want someone that can pair with the Angela and have backline access is either the Joy or the Yuzong. And we've seen a certain couple of teams, like for example, RSG Malaysia, they like to pick the Yuzong in that third pick if absolutely needed. Let's see what it's going to be, right? Because if Avash shows off what uh, shows off the EXP this early on without going into second phase. Oh, he, he does. Oh, he does. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Okay. He goes for the Paquito, uh, Paquito. Generally strong laner overall. Todak, they lock in the Loyi. So oh, now oh. they have a TP to play with in the diver uh, in the diversion, which begs the question. Todak, now they just need somebody to smother down the EXP side. I'm feeling like this Paquito may be more likely going into jungle just because like comparing Havos and Yuna's hero pool. But it is definitely a flex pick as of right now. So Bounty Esports are keeping their options open. But now that they do have the Loyi, it means that they can actually match the global presence that Angela has to a certain degree. So at least they're not going to be dealing with some kind of backdoor strat situation here. Very exciting coming out from both these teams. I'm looking at a potential <laughs> Mino ban. Yeah, they're banning the marches, so they are expecting expecting her boss to be on this uh, Pokido, they, would they actually let uh, all the Romans through? Bounty, they're still lacking a certain front line. Yeah, they are lacking a certain front line. I definitely think that's going to be through the jungle, most likely. They could do it with the EXP as well, but it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel very good that way, right? It, it's either one or the other, both of which, if you choose a tank, Carrie's going to stretch you down anyways. And if you're melee, it's twice as worse because you have to deal with the Loyi as well, right? So clumping together isn't exactly the best idea. Bounty decide, you know what? We're going to get rid of Kaja at the very least. So if we do decide to drop down with the Angela ult, you're not going to get double the value if you get locked down by the Divine Judgment.
Yeah, if they're getting rid of that, they might want to look to get rid of Cho as well. When you have the Angela, when you have the Claude especially, getting rid of Kaja Cho are basically necessary to make sure that your Claude player will have a good time. Especially in the hands of someone as aggressive as Panda, you don't want to give Todak easy ways to catch him out. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, oh, the export is still up, but I, I don't feel like it's an export jungle game. Um... What in front is Akai? I don't know. I feel like Akai is not bad. Mm. If you export, it's a bit awkward. Joy is like kind of meh in this situation. It's like it's like good, but at the same time, it's like you would much rather her in a different scenario rather than this. You do have the Angela. It really depends on how confident Yuna is feeling on the Joy overall, because he's got no tank junglers to play with now other than the Akai. Can we just take Mino or Tigro at this point for Toda? Uh, and they're both left open. Uh, do they need it though? Or I think you could also look at the XP lane, right? Yeah, you can just show the EXP lane first. Yeah. You already know what the matchup is going to be. Like a Benedetta is totally fine here. Some way to kind of smother. Uh, another way to smother could just be like Uranus if you have to. I do quite like the Benedetta. Even more global presence makes it so that the Angela's presence actually doesn't do a lot for Bounty Esports. Kodak, they're gonna grab the CC just to make sure that it cannot be comboed with that hard guard. Okay, works well, works well at the very least if they're uh, too close to the clock, kind of locks him in place, especially once she drops the ult as well. Decent matchup into the Paquito. It's still very skill-based, but let's see what Bounty have to say about this. Yeah, considering the fact that you already have to deal with the rotation, mm -hmm. uh, the, the vacuum effect, now you have a CC. If you lock a Claude and an Angela target, then that's three people at once. Mm -hmm. Technically. Yeah. Bounty still searching for a front line. I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying to figure out what is going to be good for them right now. The Tire off and wow. doubling down Ooh. is just pure raw damage. And of course, ah. Yen Lord gets his ruby. I don't know. I was thinking maybe this we probably needed like a roamer who's able to disengage. Yes, Ruby is definitely there to be able to kind of like uh, again carry very short range. You can abuse that fact, right? You can start peeling away the box here. It all makes sense. I might. I was thinking whether or not they might even consider going for a Lolita here just to survive the initial the initial burst damage coming out from the carry. Block the projectiles at the very least. Block the projectiles coming out from Lo Yi if you are in that choke point. But I think at least with Ruby you have a lot more flexibility. This is basically a full skirmish lineup coming out of Bounty Esports. There's no real front-to-back composition that they're going to play around. And it has a lot of value against Todak because it means that all of their heroes can somewhat take care of themselves. But it requires a lot of synergy from the team. We've already seen teams like the Slangor Red Giants pull off compositions like this, but it's not as easy as it looks. Very conditional. And now with a Minotaur on Todak's side, you, you better pray that that Minoan Spirit don't go off in a big team fight because I, I don't think Bounty, first of all, don't want to take a team fight. Second of all, you want to be able to assassinate your target as fast as possible. That means a fast game. Yeah, I mean, it's all up to Bounty Esports' side laners to so kind of find opportunities or create opportunities for their jungler at the very least. We're not going to see too much uh, being done in the mid lane, to be fair. And with the help of Zion Senpai, uh, and with the help of Revelation, if he's taking Kaza Blast, you know that they're going to push out from that mid lane to make sure these sides don't find that opportunity. Let's see if Toda can close it up cleanly with a 2-0. They've done it once, they can do it again. Bounty Esports looking to strike back hard and fast as we jump into game number two with Bounty Esports on the blue side and Todak on the red. I think we're gonna get to see a pretty exciting game here because on paper itself, this is a lineup that suits Bounty Esports because they're all players that want to get into the heat of the battle. They're all players that want to be able to fight. And if they're able to do so without necessarily relying on the presence of another team member, it brings a lot of value to them. But again, it does require that synergy because Todak has a lot of options for counter engage and their team fighting is just going to straight up be stronger. Seems like a complete reverse from game one where Todak wants to skirmish and now Bounty is on that row. Though in the direct matchup situation, Darrow is always good into boxing because of the armor shred, but Ooh. the damage onto Aziz, that's the flicker out. Yeah, but this is what I'm talking about. It's really tough to control this mid lane, right? And especially in Aziz's position without his Ruby right next to him, right? And even if Ruby is next to him, they could be a detriment to each other. Yep, that Lo Yi, really annoying to play against. I, I'm very excited to see Simon Senpoi play a hero like this. It feels like a classic sort of style. Uh -huh. And as someone who has played a good amount of Brawl, 
employee is a pain in the butt. I mean, worse now than it is ever, because at least for Aziz, he's getting frozen out of the way, right? Yeah. Look, at this is disgusting. Yanlon has to be here. They have to take a trade. And you need to... Sh I think you just shove it out as fast as you can. Yuna's gonna show up, replace ya. In a bit of a danger, oh. has to flicker away. Gary shows up, and that's back up from Toda. First blood going over to them, and they might get more as Yanlo stuck on replace ya. Comes right back, Gary with the wheel, and as this blocks it. Good block, good block. I mean, what, what, what were they expecting? I don't know what Yuna is expecting here. And the temp, if we're talking about tempo, Gary is always going to be up on tempo. He has a faster clear, he has a faster rotation, and now he's going to be able to get onto this turtle a lot faster than Bounty can even respond. Because again, Alice, as is, he's not level 4 just yet. Not even Yan Lord. Yeah, and, and on our screens right now, we have Torak's first blood rate so far in oh the regular God. season. 17. Uh, 17%. Actually, it's all their game, so... Wait, what? That's not a lot, actually. That's so low! What happened? What happened to Todok? The new generation doesn't force first blood, but they do win games. Uh, and, well, winning games is what matters. Right now, Todak, full control of the turtle pit. They'll get that objective. I think this is to be expected. There's no way Bounty Esports can match up to their lineup at level 4. They really need to start farming up a little bit more to the point where they can each take 1v1 duels and win them out quick enough that Zion Senpoi's damage won't become a problem. Uh, yeah, Lord, he's gonna find Zion, but he won't find more than just Zion. It's also replaced there. Yuna instantly popped the ult, but the damage is just not there. And Yanlor is going to be sacrificed, fed to Zyme Senpoi. Not really sure what Bounty was expecting out of that. Bounty cannot be making these first moves, especially around the mid lane, right? And there's, just, there's just too many people that can affect it too easily. Gary, he could be on one of his buffs and instantly rotate to the mid lane, right? Even if he was on the furthest camp possible, a river crab even, he would still make it to that fight. I think Bounty Esports need to identify a couple of conditions. Number one, is this person alone? Number two, where exactly, uh, where exactly are their opponents going to be? This is on the assumption that the mid lane wave is in its current stagnant form. Maybe they can look for something. Like, yeah, Lord shouldn't be bothering to open these bushes at this point, right? He knows for a fact that Tordak is playing through the mid lane. And they know where oh, Panna is oh. going to go with the BMI. Loi oh, no. brings in the Calvary, but Panna yeah, has to pop the Purify to get out. This is very difficult here for Bounty East, boys, because with a lineup like theirs, they need to get kills, they need to get ganks. And ideally, because they know that Todak will want to play together a lot of the time, they could try and identify Gary's movement and go to the opposite side of the map. But when you also have the diversion to think about, I think Todak just has so many tools. I think it's one of those things where you have to start messing with the lane fundamentals of your opponents, right? For an example, if Bounty were to take a sudden trade, whether Havas or even Panda, against their opponents on Todak's side, with nobody revealed on the map, it does kind of feel that like, oh no, they're at my lane. How many people? I'm not entirely sure, but he's not going to take this trade without any reason possible, right? And I think Bounty has to play those type of mind games if they want to find an advantage, or at least fake out Todak. Mm, playing mind games like that does require a certain degree of finesse, though. And it also needs your opponent to be inexperienced enough to be caught off guard. And I feel like those are two conditions that are very difficult to achieve here in this particular matchup. Kodak, ooh, we can see the diversion. Diversion, it's only Momo. Brings Momo into the back and it's gonna intercept Yuna. Meanwhile, her boss also jumps to his back line. They find Zayn Senpoi. They give up Yanlor in the process of this. Still has his ultimate. It's gonna now... Gonna hover over Yuna, but there is the healing reduction. I don't think Yuna can survive this despite the help of Aziz. You have a box just sticking onto you. And that's gonna be double kill for Shizzo. And I don't think Panna's even gonna get this tier one. No, he's not, but he's put some significant damage into it. He's trying to farm up as fast as he can. Bounty Esports need to have a limiter on themselves, right? We, the fact that Havas was able to get into that by take out Zayim Senpoi before anything could even ha happen, I think that Bounty has already won that situation. They don't need to be hovering around these turtles. They can give all of them up if they have to. Here's where it gets difficult, right? Oh, because boss. now you don't have enough reinforcements to protect your tier one. And Zayim just brought Momo to try and take out Havas. I don't think he's getting out of this though. I have the Cyclone, not enough. Momo gets his revenge, or well, Zyme gets his revenge. Just... Hey, I'm loving the performance from Todak right now. They of course have better tools just straight up in this lineup, but the fact that they're denying any potential of Bounty Esports to gain anything here, even that kill on Zyme Senpoi had to be forced out. Mm -hmm. I mean, what can they really do, right? Todak's draft right now significantly, be significantly better. 
Their side lanes don't have to do anything crazy, right? There is no pressure for the side lanes to, to do anything this game until the mid game. As we're slowly rotating into it, Zyme Senpai has done a phenomenal job by opening up the map just with his ultimate alone, sending in members, and with the help of Revelatia kind of like increasing their area of influence, I don't think Bounty, unless Bounty has a significant play to make, I don't think it will be as lightning fast as we hope it would be to finish off Todok before it even starts. I'm more worried about Bounty's state right now. Sure, you have Panda for the late game, but everyone else is having a rough time. Yuna, he has completely missed his timing, right? He has died two times. There's no fight that he can kind of confidently join and expect to walk out of it alive, let alone having the damage to take down anyone from Todok without the external help. The problem is Bionic Esports really just doesn't have anyone that's able to open up the map and check bushes. And against a lineup that has Devoxia, that has a CC around, and that has even a low Yi, not being able to find vision for your team is hugely detrimental. Especially in a situation where even more so, you need kills, you need snowball. Bounty Esports does not have the tools they need to actually play for their win condition. Momo just gets out, he just leaps away. Easy leap and a hop. It does force the Vengeance out, but Bounty Esports now reveal in terms of Vision replace that. He's going to flick a far behind Mino and Fury. And told out this is the opportunity. But they end up losing replace now. Panda to the back with the help of the Hard God blazing to wet. Insufficient. So at the end of the day, told out only lose the, the Minotaur, but they get Yuna. Uh, I mean, at this point, you'll take anything, right? You'll yeah. take anything, even if it's not exactly the best trade in the world for a jungler for a support, but now... Oh, oh no. Oh, Zyme Sampoi. It's the Zyme Express. Oh, oh, oh! He's fine. <laughs> he had to a flick good attempt. I'm going to tell you, Todak... Forget about Toda Langa. It's Toda Houdini. They're everywhere. You have Chip, you have Loi. Oh, my goodness. And Havas. Man just shows up to lean and gets rolled down yeah. by a roulette board. Yep, yep. Tordok is playing Bounty Esports' comp better than they are. I mean, they're just, again, attacking on every single side. They don't really need to do anything because Bounty is the one who needs to make the proactive movement across the map, and Tordok can play defensively. Once they know their resources are down, it becomes a lot worse for Bounty Esports if they're not able to regroup themselves in the right manner and kind of establish battle lines against Tordok, especially when predetermining territory on their side. And it feels especially bad because Bounty Esports drafted this lineup with the intention that they wouldn't need to do so. This is a lineup that is basically able to do whatever they want as long as they have a strong enough lead. But when most of their lanes aren't able to eke out a true advantage, Todak get the entire map for themselves. And they are making that presence known. Yeah, I don't know. I think that Bounty definitely should have considered mind games and having a level of finesse if they want to pull off composition or at least split up their forces. A lot of their movements seem a little bit too forecast, especially with the way that Yanlord and Aziz kind of position themselves towards where the jungler usually is, giving free information for Koda. Itaewon finally falls. After nine and a half minutes, Momo just going on a split push mission. The Bounty can't even get close. They were attempting a four, five man gank, in fact, but. To see this draft clump together, like Sadafa mentioned, it is a very, very sad state. Uh, before we get into the potential Lord fight, quick fire round. Would we rather do a chip or Loi? Uh, probably. Ooh, it's a tough one, actually. Uh, I would say chip. I would rather chip. At least you know that it's going to happen. Loi, it's like you blink and suddenly you're either dead or you walk into your teammate to tell them about the situation and then you're dead still. If it was if it was brawl, I'd definitely rather deal with him. <laughs> but, does but, he have a portal in brawl? Um, he actually does. <laughs> except they don't really bring you much value because it's one straight line anyway. Um, the thing is, what a chip has in terms of flexibility and utility, Loi makes up for in terms of straight up damage. And the amount of damage you take from these Yin Yang reactions is honestly ridiculous sometimes. The only reason she's not picked up more often is the fact that she doesn't have as much mobility as other mages. But that damage. Oh, I, I hate it. I'll just straight up say it. Yeah, it's not the f most fun to deal with, especially for people who are not mindful about the yin yang reaction. They're like, hey, buddy, you want a high five? I'm dark. You're light. We should, like, touch hands. We should kiss. Yeah. You want to yeah. kiss real quick? And it's too late. Especially when you, people are also not aware that Dispersion splashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. That's the worst. <laughs>
Uh, it just feels so bad. Like, I know opposites attract, but Loi just makes them attract a bit too hard. Yeah, sometimes you want to get a toxic relationship and Loi brings you back, you know? That's <laughs> yes. not the one you want to get into, oh. but Rafflesia, he doesn't want to get dragged underneath the inhibitor. He's gone, and Gary taking too much damage for his liking. Zyme Step brings FOMO to underneath the inhibitor. Zyme Step Boy ends up going to fall. Oh, this could be a defense that Bounty can pull off. Shizo will take care of the inhibitor, but it's still... Bounty getting most of the kills and Toda they're just gonna try and walk away as much with as much damage to the base as possible. Okay, firstly, Todak did not need to trade that much, but at the same time, it does take a little bit of that Langar mindset to see Rafflesia get one-shotted and then still decide I'm gonna TP into their base. And still win. <laughs> and still and you get two inhibitors off of that. I mean, to be fair, you gotta give it to Le Ian Lord there, right? I mean, that was a good I'm offended. Really pulls people out of position. Really allows Bounty Esports to prioritize their targets one by one rather than having to like look at a mess and kind of figure it out. If you look at the overall items, full builds starting to come on through for the marksmen at the very least. But uh, man, Chizo really, really, really getting there a lot quicker. 2.2 thousand ahead of his opponent, Panda. And even when we're looking at Momo as well, right? He hasn't died a single time. Five kills, zero deaths, three assists. Basically going on to his last item as well. Hard to deal with, very fast, very tanky, with a 2.3k lead. Is that going to be BOD or Malefic? But either way, it's going to be great for him anyways. As a Legion sword, just casually in his inventory. Yeah, honestly, he can afford to go BOD in this game. There's no one that's really tanky enough to necessitate the Malefic Roar, so you just take advantage of that to take down the Squishies even faster. Tona currently with a 7k net worth lead. They have full control of the map. They're willing to teleport in and use both Zion Simpoint and Momo as bait so that Shizo can get three towers because they are just in full control. Alright, next Lord is going to spawn, and now here are the big questions. Bounty, how are you going to control the map? They're going to go from the bottom. Ooh, from bottom side, yeah, Lord. He oh, wow. Where did he go? <laughs> Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't learned their lesson yet. They haven't learned their yes, lesson yet. That's the saddest part. If they're going to be opening the map, they really should be walking up at least. Either they're looking to walk up together in different directions, or if they're going to check, they need a safer way of doing so, right? There's just no way they can walk up like that. But the thing is, there's no safer way of sort. If you have Brace Might, then sure, right? It sort of triggers and you know someone is there, but you have Concussive Blast. Uh, true. There's no okay. true indicator. It's like, oh, someone is in that bush. Uh, it's it's a little tough. It, it, it's tough. It's tough, right? I, I think that at the very least, at the very least, if they are going to be able to walk out, uh, walk out of their base, no, no, I honestly think they shouldn't. They shouldn't even be walking out of their base. There's just no reason to actually withstand the ground. They can't even fight on top of the uh, on top of the Lord because their composition is is very well des designed around close quarters and more importantly, so in a very concentrated area. So it's got to be frustrating for Bounty Esports. It feels like they they don't have a lot to play for. And more importantly, there's not a lot of outs. The team comp isn't even particularly good at base defense here. Todak just diving in. Oh! Look at Yuna. He's gonna die. Dime Senpoi claims that kill and Todak looking to claim this series. They're gonna lay out the confetti red carpet in front of Todak. They have completed their mission. It's their bounty, not claim. And they take down Bounty Esports themselves 2 to 0. Another point, another badge on the mark here. Well done to Todak 2-0. Bounty Esports GG well played, well deserved. Very well prepared for Todak's side. Yeah, Todak did a great job here. They pulled out some really interesting compositions that caught Bounty Esports off guard. In game one, Bounty did a good job of responding, all things considered, but I think we're starting to see a little bit of that classic Langar. And Langar in a different manner, right? It's no longer, oh, we see you, we're gonna run straight into your face. You don't see us. We are coming at you from multiple angles. Chip portals, Loi diversion, whatever that you can think of. Toda, they have ascended to become magicians on the competitive stage. But still, good fight from Bounty. Toda just outwitted them at the very end. Let's send it to Rose on the stage to talk to Toda about this glorious and majestic 2 win. Kemenangan yang Toda tengah cari sudah dapat sekarang dua bebalas kosong tiga mata penuh. Hello. 
Hi guys, super sehat? Happy? Everybody's pumped? Alhamdulillah sehat. Alright, okay so kita start dulu dengan Momo. So ini baru match ketiga untuk todak musim ini kan? So betul kau orang cakap actually dua game sebelum ni todak belum lagi panas dan sekarang sudah start engine dah makin lama makin panas. Demam ke? Actually kita Demam. orang <laughs> Actually kita orang uh, ada sedikit masalah untuk minggu pertama dan minggu kedua So untuk minggu ketiga ni kita orang dah makin better So insya Allah kita akan kekalkan momentum ni Wow, ini yang kita suka, ini yang kita nak Okay, can we please pass the mic to the coach? Coach Coach Fly solo Okay Hi coach, how are you? Okay, so coach, the first match, the first game actually, a lot of people were surprised because Chip and Masha was both open. Was it a planned or did you guys actually practice this combination in screams or was it just like, it's open, we take? No, we just try just now. Memang style Toda. Dapat try je. Because uh, we watch MPL page and MPL Indo, they pick it, so we try it today. Ah, I see. Okay, it worked. It worked. That honestly, that split push did you guys so much uh, benefit. Okay, guys. So I nak tanya side tau dah ni. You guys rasa siapa sepatutnya jadi MVP? Dorang cakap Kuja yang MVP, kenapa macam ni? Okay guys, jom. Mari kita tengok MVP. In 3, 2, 1. Teng, 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 teng. Zaib Sempoi! Hai Zaib! Hai. Okay, Zaib. So, tadi Zaib guna Lui pertama dalam musim ini. You rasa... Adakah Lui ini satu hero yang sangat relevan untuk meta sekarang? Ataupun ini akan jadi satu playstyle ataupun trademark daripada pasukan Toda? Uh, betul, Lui ini akan masuk meta balik sebab dia punya teleport tu boleh buat enemy pening lah. Uh, so, saya akan spam Lui sampai playoff. Oh, okay. Ja, I nak tanya pasal uh, since you guys cakap you guys tengok MPL PH kan? MPL PH, diorang ada keluarkan apa ni Louis dengan Claude. Toda akan bawa ke tak? Louis Sorry? Claude. Louis Claude. Ha uh -uh. Yang teleport ke sini ke sana ke sini ke sana. Boleh nampak tak? Boleh Indah. boleh. Kita orang boleh bawa macam-macam lagi selain Louis Claude banyak lagi kita orang boleh. Ah, ni yang menarik. Ni yang Toda semua orang kenal. Okay, sebelum I let you guys go, can we please pass it to Gary? Gary. Okay, Gary. Match Toda seterusnya akan lawan tim lama Gary, which is Team Hub. So first of all, sekarang Momo cakap you guys dah solve the issue behind the scenes. You rasa dengan um, Toda baru ni minggu ketiga ni, dah confident kena lawan Team Hub nanti? Uh, saya rasa confident lawan bukan Team Hub yang siapa-siapa pun. Wow. Alright, so. Gary, apa yang you nak cakap kepada Team Hark? Uh, kat Team Hark, uh, sebab selalu jumpa Iris kat Ren. Kalau kita orang lawan dia, dia, dia main dalam tower. Esok keluar tower, Iris. Wow. Okay, let's give it to Rafael Shah. Last words. Rafael Shah, what do you want to say to all the fans that came to watch you guys today and obviously to those supporting you in the Philippines? Uh, thank you for all the people who supporting us and trusting us. Thank you for everything and happy birthday, MLBB. Thank you to Toda and once again congratulations. Saya akan lepaskan korang tapi korang jangan lupa ambil duit raya dari floor manager kita dan pilih pemenang duit raya yang datang ke stadium MBSJ. Alright guys, untuk semua orang yang tak tahu kalau you guys datang ke stadium MBSJ hari ini dengan esok, jangan lupa pakai baju raya sebab players akan bagi korang duit raya siap ada autograph korang dekat sampul. Alright, ini adalah match pembukaan yang sangat-sangat penting untuk Toda. Sangat manis pun. Tapi mari let's show it back to the casters untuk dapat tahu macam mana Toda menang dua bebalas kosong dan mendapatkan tiga mata penuh mereka. Casters, silakan.
Todak definitely looking a lot more comfortable on the stage and in the Land of Dawn as well. Hopefully, the fact that they were able to resolve everything that they had problems with the first couple of weeks was true because we got to see an excellent performance from them this match. Yeah, excellent performance from Zyme Senpoi. Still the stable pillar as always. Bit disrespectful on the Lilia in game one, but he was really pushing his limit. At the end of the day, I think this is probably one of the hardest MVP to pick, right? Reflation yep. had his moment, Zyme had his moment, but overall, I think Zyme Senpoi really uh, accelerated the tempo for their team in game two with this Loi. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that, you know, especially in a meta where it's all tank, it is now really leaning in towards tank junglers. It's not often do you see an assassin jungler actually make it through the draft the majority of the time. It's good to see that at least things like Loi can now stick a lot longer than it should. I don't know about the next upcoming patch, but I think so far it's been so good. It really makes team fights difficult to approach sometimes. Yeah, like I mentioned during the draft, this lineup from Bounty takes a lot of finesse to be able to pilot properly. And unfortunately, it feels like they tried to step on the pedal a bit too hard without realizing which direction they were going, trying to jump onto players like Rafflesia while Zyme Senpo is just standing at the back waiting for the yin yang reactions to happen. And with the snowball that happened for Todak, it became impossible for Bounty to make that comeback, which is how they were able to come out on top in game number two. Even when you look at the item builds, uh, you got to really feel for Yan Lord. There's really nothing much that he could have done in this game on this Ruby. You are just hoping that he gets like some godlike uh, I'm offended into a flicker to isolate key targets. But aside from that, a team fight breaks out. He uses all his abilities. He's going to disappear from the fight. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the early game could have been played very differently. I definitely think that I still don't like it. Mid lane, mid lane Angela, st it just takes away the playmaking capabilities of good players, and especially pillar players. People like Aziz, he would have much preferred if, well, assuming that the Lilia wasn't banned, uh, banned in this game, he probably could have gotten some other picks other than this Angela. I feel like it's a little wasted on him. Yeah, I think when, especially when you are really full doubling down on a comp that just wants to go fast, go hard, that Angela, if you put it in a, a Roman row, then mid lane becomes open and press Bounty was just worried that there's no other uh, front line considering that Yuna got the dire off. The problem is they didn't really have much of a front line regardless though. Like yeah. yes, Ruby is the main tank, but she's really not designed to be a main tank unless she's well and far ahead of the enemy, which is how you see Yan Lord just getting bursted most of the time. He did get that one really nice pick onto Rafflesia flickering into the inhibitor, but it still didn't make enough of an impact for Bounty Esports to actually try and get anything back. Unfortunately, when you have a lineup like this that wants to create pressure through snowballing and ganking, and you don't have any lanes that you can actually take advantage of to win straight up, it just doesn't work. I think the key point also for Bounty was how they kept putting a lot of emphasis in that middle lane. I'm not, I, I really am curious what the comms are. Is Aziz constantly calling for help? I know he definitely called Yanlo to help him shove waves, but we kept seeing Yuna show up. Yanlo keeps sitting in the bush and trying to clear our vision. And every single time they do it, from minute one onwards, it has always resulted in Toda killing one or two of their members. And Bounty, they just kept banging their head against the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I think this might have been one of the few situations where there should have been consideration for both Aziz and as well as Yan Lord to actually go for a early on double Rome Boots situation where one of them can actually leave the lane and still get some kind of value where the other is, absorbs the wave and they trade out back and forth consistently to make sure that they can apply pressure and kind of direct Todak, hey, come over to this side of the map, come over to the opposite side of the map, goad them into taking on fights and rotating a lot faster than they should based on false information and then look to find these holes. Something which I think Bounty is going to take some time to learn. Yeah, that's the finesse we were talking about. And at the same time, it's a little bit difficult to reasonably say that Aziz or Yanlord can really leave that mid lane as well because there's no nowhere on the map that they can really make a big difference on because Panda wants to farm safely, Havos isn't likely to win against Momo even with some help, and obviously Gary is going to be absolutely fine. So the mid lane was just them trying to make some kind of pressure so that both Yanlord and Aziz could be unlocked to help out somewhere else. It just didn't work. Yeah, I think the thing when you have a Dyroff on your team is he's going to get to 4, sure, but that very first gang, it has to result in something. And fortunately for Bounty, that first gang resulted in Yuna dying, and then he respawns, comes back, and dies again. That O2 really, really slowed Yuna down to a point where there's no, no, 
no longer any space for him to work in a team fight. Even with assist onto him, as long as Gary follows up, there's the healing gets reduced. Uh, it's just a rough spot to be in. I guess he's called Dyra for a reason. <laughs> His next skin is just die a lot. <laughs> die, die a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the next next Zena skin coming out. That'd be crazy. But I, I think overall, it's just it's just a tough draft to deal with overall, right? I think that Toy Dot came in extremely prepared. When we, when we look at the bands alone, it all kind of comes together, right? You get rid of all the tank junglers that especially Yuna is familiar with playing with. You also make sure. Uh, you also make sure he's in a position where even if he does get an assassin style jungler, which we know him for, it's not exactly very comfortable to play, right? Because how many lanes does he actually have access to to punish? He cannot punish in the EXP. It's a little difficult to do that. Zyme Senpai is always backed up by Revelation in the earlier stages of the game, so you have to wait till the first turtle before you... And even then, you might just die before even walking into that fight because of the full 5v5, and Torak is playing around a team fight calm. And that's the foresight that you pointed out during the drafting phase where Fly Slow just want to make Yuna as uncomfortable as humanly possible and really force him into a pick that sure on paper is good because of the armor shred, but overall as a unit it, it just does not get any space to, to function. No space at all. It feels bad here. And I do wonder the validity of what Coach Fly Solo said on stage that they just decided, oh we're gonna try out this meta we saw that we haven't <laughs> practiced before. Sure, you know, we don't know how true it is, but great adaptations. Toda definitely looks a lot cleaner as a team, and I think with some improvements, they have a lot of potential to contest for the top again. Yeah, I bet Toda fans are going to be really happy that they kept the essence of Toda, but reinvented the wheel in, in for this season. Hall of Fame, rich guy, Shizo, alongside as being a carry as well. Uh, and the Lord, fortunately, the only sandbag available for Bounty and Zyme Senpoi, again, is the best wingman for the team. Hey, man, when you switch roles into the roamer position, it never really leaves you, even when you <laughs> come back. <laughs> yep. No. <laughs> the poor guy, I'm a mid laner, still gets nice. It's like, come on, man, come on. Zyme Senpoi is a classic player of MPL MY. He's been around for a long time. So seeing him play on some of these older heroes that have been around a while, but never really got the chance to shine. It's always fun to see. Now we just need that Kagura buff. <laughs> yeah, a, a Farsa, you know, bring Farsa back. <laughs> bring I, the classics back. Bring the Farsa back. Bring the Kagura back. God. Uh, I, think, I think the only times... You know what? No, I'm going to hold that for when it does happen. Then it'll oh, look a lot okay, more epic. Because okay. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, Kagura is going to be one of those pocket picks, right? They're, that's going to be in Zyme's pocket. Same goes for same goes for uh, the Farsa as well. It's just need to be at the right place, right time. I think the way that Todok is looking like right now, very, very good. However, I will say in overall individual performance, people like Gary felt kind of overshadowed overall, right? I feel like he's doing his job, but when do we see Todok go bigger and better when do we see them make significant plays that again we've seen again things like this this is expected out of gary he's coming to uh, come into these fights he's looking to peel right when are we going to see gary go into his big playmaking moments like when we saw him win an mpl with team hawk i think i think it's also uh, very fair to say that told you are seeing star players right you're seeing players who do uh, who go above and beyond who contribute slightly more in certain aspects to get the team the lead and then you have players who are just very stable they do their job and it is just enough because everyone else backs them up. Individually, I agree. I think that Toda definitely have top players. I think it's I'm Semboy, uh, even Rafflesia to a certain point, right? This man is has the eye of opportunity. But if you compare to Bounty Esports individually, I would dare to make the argument that Bounty Esports, everyone is a star player. It's more like the unit isn't really there, at least for game two. I can agree. I can definitely agree with that. I, I think that individually they are brave enough to actually encourage each other to make the play. Tordok, as a unit, very difficult to deal with overall, but it feels sad that it feels like that might be the next plateau that they might be facing. I mean, even seeing in the standings alone, they're in fourth place. There's still a lot of work to get to the, uh, to the likes of King Empire, for example, or even SRG. The level of difference in terms of, like, the edge of play is so significantly different. Yeah, the gap in skill, in terms of performance, in terms of consistency between the top few teams and the rest of the board this season is probably the widest we've seen in a very, very long time. Not necessarily a good thing, but if it allows these other teams to get that spirit necessary to try and make the difference and catch up to their peers, then it will make all that difference. 
Unfortunately, because of this lost bounty, Esports going to drop down into ninth place, which is definitely not where you want to be. Uh, into the red zone, so at risk of being, being relegated if they are still there by the end of the regular season. Luckily for Bounty Esports, I believe they still have five more series to go. Plenty of time to kind of regroup and recoup for the next fight. I, but for the top two, SRG and KG, I feel like they are currently playing in a league of their own right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. No, no team comes even close. Yeah, that's the thing, right? A lot of their fundamentals are extremely good. They, they have a bit, at least they have their most comfort identity. The question is how many lines of play can they start developing for themselves before they really reach that international level? Because we've seen teams play to one particular style the entire season. Works out for them, goes well during the playoffs. But as soon as we hit an international, that's when it's like, oh no, a lot of teams can do some research put a couple of brain cells together and figure out, hey, their draft is very compromisable. So again, they need to start learning different lines and different outs of play just to make sure that they can actually stand against some of the best of the best in the world. It all comes down to how well they can adjust when things change, right? When there's new patches, new updates, mm -hmm. when they're facing against different teams on more international stages, that is what makes the difference between a team and a international standard. But we do have to tell you guys a little bit about the MPLMY rating website. You guys can see the link right there, where the star rating system currently live to be tested on the official website itself so you guys can check it out because you can comment and rate everyone that you've watched in these matches including the players even the talents and basically every what what does minions mean here hey man <laughs> last season if this was your last season i know i can definitely think of a couple of games with the minions mvp oh the, you know i totally forgot yeah i, have, I was like who are they calling minions, minions. then i forget we have <laughs> minions <laughs> we do have i mean i i know who i'm gonna rate five star right off the bat replace <laughs> Right off the bat. Because no. of that chip player. Oh, uh, was it because of him or was it specifically because of the Is there a rating system for the portal? Yeah, there, can I rate the portal? Can you rate the portal? Can we rate the potato chips? Yeah, can we rate the potato chip passive as well? Uh, we got a lot of questions here. The line of transport on the land in the line of dawn. <laughs> yeah. It comes up right after the game. <laughs> There's a post-game rating system. I can't, I can't. The more I That's think fun. about it, the funnier this gets. Uh, it is very funny. Make sure you guys check that out. But make sure you guys check out what's going to be coming up next because this is still Seru Saturday and we still got two more amazing matches for all of you guys to catch. And I think the next one is really going to be at the top of everyone's mind. King Empire versus Homeboys. Which is pretty... I think this is crazy in of its own. First of all, we got two Kages going up against each other. They're both legends in their own name. Mm -hmm. Second of all, King Empire, they, when they started the season, everyone was curious, how are they going to perform? Now, they are still expanding their domain. Whereas for Homeboys, as much as they are the previous season's champion, right now, they're looking a bit shaky, right? It doesn't seem like they are the kings. They've been overtaken by the likes of SRG, KG, and even Team Hark, to a certain extent, is in better standings on the leaderboard. Yeah, no, this is going to be an interesting bout, right? Because again, Homeboys, Yes, shaky, but as we've heard from Daddy Hood many, many times before, our first two weeks is like where we suck the most. After that is when we're warm and we're ready to get to perfection. No more fasting debuff, right? Yeah, no more fasting debuffs. That's the important one. <laughs> yeah, we have to see how well the team will perform now that they've been given that one week break for Raya. How, what kind of new strategies, what kind of new coordinations we're going to see coming out of our defending champions and whether or not the old royalty will be able to overcome the brand new empire that's sweeping across the nation right now. That's gonna be game number two. I think it's very exciting because definitely just in terms of rankings itself, King Empire are going in the favorites, but what do you expect to see? I, I'm expecting to see just cool, cool, calm, calculated gameplay from KG, just like what we've always seen. And homeboys, perhaps just play back to the style, right? Homeboys known to be very, very explosive, likes to play tempo, likes to get in your face. Something that is the polar opposite of what KGE is used to playing. Let's see if the sword is stronger or if the shoe is sturdier. Well, I'm expecting KGE to play towards goal lane and homeboys is like, how do we smack Sasa? How do we punish this guy? He needs to, he needs to get knocked down a peg. Well, logically, if anyone would know how to knock down Sasa, it would be one of his fellow Kages, right? Mm -hmm. 
You, know, you got that history, you got a little bit of backdoor information from all those years ago. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> the backdoor information. Guys, ban Kimmy. <laughs> I remember a long time ago. <laughs> Yo, I used to play with Sasa, just just ignore him. You know? just, <laughs> and it's just focus on everywhere else. You know? That sounds a lot more like Udo, I'm not gonna lie. That sounds a lot more accurate to his personality. Just don't give him any attention overall. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna go on a short break before we come back for this exciting match. So if you guys want to grab something, go do it. We'll see you guys in just a little bit. Okay. I have bolt guys. I have bolt on top. Okay, bro. I try to fight. Nice boy, Zahir. Nice boy. Nice boy. Nice boy. Nice boy. Nice boy. Martis here. Controlling Martis. Martis. Hurra. Hurra. Nice. Nice one. Okay, okay, okay. Lilay, lilay, lilay. Bati, 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 bati. Aku ada, aku ada, aku ada. Five, 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 five. Masha, masha, masha. Simi, simi, simi. Masha, masha, masha. Tengok panah, tengok panah. Masha, 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 guys, masha, masha. Mati, 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 mati. I think Fedri. Eh, eh, kepuro, kepuro. Sikat. Kait, 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 kait here, kait here. Eh, fourteen second ya. Kait, 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 kait. Can help, can help. Can, can, can. Masih, nice one. Dead can, dead can. Be, be, be careful, be careful, be careful. Bot, bro. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, I don't think Ah, uh, Momo, okay. get ready on me, yeah, Momo. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Ready to find them, go, yeah? Go, 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 go. Go, guys, Gensari, we can lock, we can lock, we can lock, we can lock. Gensari, go, get it. Nice. Nice. Nice, bro. Nice. You guys won? No, 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 no. I think, I think we can win the fight. Outie, 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 Mino, outie, Mino. Mino, no, outie, outie. Go, 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 Yes, just go, just go. Lot me, I'll get ready on me. Nice. Healing you. Cancel. Nice one. Hero first, yeah? Hero first. Naughty, naughty clock. I think I can. Hero first. Kill, 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 kill. Let's go, let's go. No, 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 no. no. Hey, nice, guy. Nice, nice. nice bro. Nice. Dave. Nice. Third. Sejarah baharu telah tercipta. Namun, setakat itu sahajakah kemampuan kita? Setiap kali ke pentas dunia, pasti kecewa. Sampai bila kita nak kalah? Ditundukkan serendah-rendahnya. Sampai bila kita nak dihina? Tiap musim harapan peminat gugur. Sampai bila nak kalah? Sampai bila nak kecewa? Setiap rakyat pasti akan melaungkan semangat Ingin mempertahankan rumah mereka Jika patah sayap Raja Wali Bertongkat jua kita kemari Tahun ini pastinya kemenangan semakin dicita Demi menjulang nama Malaysia di pesada dunia Di mana bumi dipijak Itulah langit dijunjung. Stadium MBSJ Serdang Jaya secara rasminya menjadi rumah MPLMY pada tahun ini. Seterusnya, melangkah ke arena besar di Timur Tengah, di Riyadh Arab Saudi. 
Juara kita bangkit menghadapi cabaran bersedia mencipta sejarah. Utara, Timur, Barat dan Selatan, kita semua MPLMY play off musim ke-14 akan berhijrah ke Johor mendekatkan lagi silaturahim MPLMY bersama. Hasrat kita semua bersatu dan bangkit dengan satu tujuan yang sama. Naikkan martabat negara, kejari juara dunia, kemuncaknya di M6. Pastikan kemenangan dan kebanggaan dikecap di rumah kita. Datang ke MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 Di mana yang terbaik akan berentap dalam pertempuran sengit dan penuh strategi Seperti pada musim yang lepas 10 pasukan profesional akan bersaing selama 6 minggu Dalam arena yang penuh aksi di regular season Namun, bermula pada musim ini Cuma 6 pasukan akan layak ke playoff Dan pasukan di tempat ke-7 dan ke-8 hanya dapat stay untuk musim seterusnya. Tapi sayang sekali, tiada slot ke play-off buat mereka pada musim ini. Bagi pasukan di tempat ke-10, slot musim ke-14 mereka akan diganti oleh tempat pertama MAL Conference Group. Mereka akan di-reset dan harus merebut kembali peluang melalui MAL musim kedua. Dan apa itu MAL? Mobile Legends Bang Bang Academy League adalah Liga Amatur di mana terlahirnya bintang-bintang baru. 15 pasukan akan bersaing untuk meraih kejuaraan dan dua pasukan MBL Conference Group teratas akan berpeluang merebut slot ke MPL Malaysia musim seterusnya. Okey, kembali ke MPL. Pasukan MPL Malaysia tempat ke-9 akan berentap dengan pasukan tempat kedua dari MAL Conference Group dalam pusingan MPL Malaysia Challenger Stage bersama format Best of Five semasa Grand Final MAL musim yang pertama di mana pemenang akan menentukan slot terakhir MPL Malaysia musim ke-14. Enam pasukan yang layak ke playoff akan berentap untuk meneruskan jalan ke Grand Final MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 dan merebut peluang untuk ke MSC 2024. Jadi, bersiap sedia. Persiapkan strategi anda. Bersedia untuk aksi profesional di pentas MPL Malaysia musim ke-13. Siapa saja yang salah naiknya sekarang ini Zaim Cuba untuk dapatkan Zaim berjaya Minum Fury tergedek atas dua Masih lagi ada Ram Momo di bangga belakang berjuta Dapat ke padang Hilang ke satu dimensi yang sangat-sangat besar Satu tangan kata Aziz Bakar itu bakar Aziz di sini orang Shizu Unstoppable Tiga orang disikat Tiga orang dilempar Tetapi satu yang tumbang Momo terus saja terkantoi Tapi lihat Ram Lizia Berjaya untuk menghentak dua orang pemain Ya Lord Akan ditumbangkan Walaupun berjaya untuk dapatkan Zaim Zaim Tapi Yuna juga Masih lagi dikejar Walaupun ada hadgat tapi tak dirasakan Healing tak akan memberikan apa memakna Buy one free one Nak satu Memancing Yuna Masuk ke bahagian dalam Tetapi lihat Yuna yang bakal berjaya untuk didapatkan Yang Lord juga nyawa sangat-sangat rendah Dengan penggunaan Mira Fury Masuk ke dalam Fury Fadi kelepaskan
Berminat untuk mengetahui info lanjut mengenai prestasi pemain dan jadi sebahagian daripada MPM Malaysia, layari laman rasmi Liga Isukan No. 1 Malaysia untuk dapatkan maklumat terkini dan lengkap. Layari laman rasmi MPM Malaysia sekarang. Ayo kita bersama menaikkan mutu MLBB di Malaysia. Jangan terlepas kemas kini Liga Academy rasmi MLBB Malaysia, MAL Malaysia. Ikuti semua platform rasmi kami. Ayo sokong MAL Malaysia musim pertama. Ikuti semua platform rasmi. Semua peminat dan penyokong dijemput ke arena MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 di Serdang. Anda berpeluang berjumpa dengan pemain kegemaran anda. Kumpul tanda tangan eksklusif dan sertai kampen Fan of the Season. Interested in knowing more about player performance and be a part of MPL Malaysia? Visit the website of MPL Malaysia's number one esports league for the latest news and league updates. Don't miss out on updates from the official MLBB Malaysia Academy League, MAL Malaysia. Follow all our official platforms. All fans are invited to the MPL Malaysia Season 13 Arena in Serdang. You will get a chance to meet your favorite players, get exclusive autographs, and join the Fan of the Season campaign. Melampangkan satu sosok tumbuhan. Tumpuan untuk melakukan yang terbaik. Tumpuan untuk menjadi seorang role model. Sorotan itu penting. Ia membuatkan kita percaya. The support that we witness our fight and our struggles. Memikul harapan untuk mempertahankan kemenangan. Menjadi cabaran terbesar untuk mencapai malamat kami. Pastikan kemenangan dan kebanggaan dikecam di rumah kita. Harapan masih terpahat di hati. Untuk menjadi juara. Meneruskan legasi kami. Di bawah cahaya, semuanya menjadi lebih jelas. Ada dok, kuda hitam? No, kami adalah most ambitious. Cahaya impian telah menerangi pentas ini. Kejayaan bukan lagi dongeng. Not just a dream. Ia arti harapan yang sebenar. Mungkin ada yang sangka bahawa harapan ini akan hilang. Tapi bukan kami. Ini harapan kami. Ini semangat kami. Bersama kami, Mencapai satu tujuan. 
Mencari Sina yang paling terang Nikmati jaguh 5G untuk gaming sepantas kilat dengan hotlink prepaid 5G. Internet 5G tanpa had dengan kelajuan 5G tanpa batas untuk layan gaming tanpa gangguan. Nikmati latency rangkaian 5G terunggul dan gameplay termantap sepanjang malam. Semuanya hanya RM32 sebulan dengan 20% cashback. Dapatkan sekarang. Again. A princess in a tower is just a bird in a cage. Your queen. It won't take long, I promise. Posing eh. Mati, 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 mati. I think Fedri. Eh, eh, Kefuro, Kefuro. Sikat. 
Guide, 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 guide here, guide here. Hey, 14 seconds, yeah. Guide, 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 guide. Can help, can help. Can, can, can. That's it, nice one. Dead, can. Dead, can. Be careful, be careful, be careful. You can go bot, bro. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Ah, Mamo, get ready on me, Mamo. Ready to find them, yeah. Go, 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 you guys won? No, okay, no, okay. Right, I, th I think we can win the fight. Out, 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 Let's go, let's go! No, 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 no. Hey, nice, guys! Nice, bro. Nice. Dave. Nice. Done. Dapat dikecapi, sejarah baru telah tercipta. Namun, setakat itu sahajakah kemampuan kita? Setiap kali ke pentas dunia, pasti kecewa. Sampai bila kita nak kalah? Ditundukkan serendah-rendahnya. Sampai bila kita nak dihina? Tiap musim harapan peminat gugur. Sampai bila nak kalah? Sampai bila? Nak kecewa Setiap rakyat pasti akan melaungkan semangat Ingin mempertahankan rumah mereka Jika patah sayap Raja Wali Bertongkat jua kita kemari Tahun ini pastinya kemenangan semakin dicita Demi menjulang Nama Malaysia di pesada dunia Di mana bumi dipijak Di situlah langit dijunjung Stadium MBSJ Serdang Jaya Secara rasminya menjadi rumah MPLMY pada tahun ini Seterusnya melangkah ke arena besar di Timur Tengah Di Riyadh Arab Saudi Juara kita bangkit menghadapi cabaran Bersedia mencipta sejarah Utara, Timur, Barat dan Selatan Kita semua MPLMY Playoff musim ke-14 Akan berhijrah ke Johor Mendekatkan lagi Silaturahim MPLMY Bersama Hasrat kita semua bersatu Dan bangkit dengan satu tujuan Yang sama Naikkan martabat negara Kecari juara dunia Kemuncaknya di M6 Pastikan kemenangan dan kebahagiaan dikecap di rumah kita. Selamat datang ke MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 di mana yang terbaik akan berentap dalam pertempuran sengit dan penuh strategi. Seperti pada musim yang lepas, 10 pasukan profesional akan bersaing selama 6 minggu dalam arena yang penuh aksi di regular season. Namun, bermula pada musim ini, cuma 6 pasukan akan layak ke play-off dan pasukan di tempat ke-7 dan ke-8 hanya dapat stay untuk musim seterusnya. Tapi sayang sekali, tiada slot ke play-off buat mereka pada musim ini. Bagi pasukan di tempat ke-10, slot musim ke-14 mereka akan diganti oleh tempat pertama MAL Conference Group. Mereka akan di-reset dan harus merebut kembali peluang melalui MAL musim kedua. Dan apa itu MAL? Mobile Legends Bang Bang Academy League adalah Liga Amatur 
di mana terlahirnya bintang-bintang baharu. 15 pasukan akan bersaing untuk meraih kejuaraan dan dua pasukan MBL Conference Group teratas akan berpeluang merebut slot ke MPL Malaysia musim seterusnya. Okey, kembali ke MPL. Pasukan MPL Malaysia tempat ke-9 akan berentap dengan pasukan tempat kedua dari MAL Conference Group dalam pusingan MPL Malaysia Challenger Stage bersama format Best of Five semasa Grand Final MAL musim yang pertama di mana pemenang akan menentukan slot terakhir MPL Malaysia musim ke-14. Enam pasukan yang layak ke playoff akan berentap untuk meneruskan jalan ke Grand Final MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 dan merebut peluang untuk ke MSC 2024. Jadi, bersiap sedia. Persiapkan strategi anda. Bersedia untuk aksi profesional di pentas MPL Malaysia musim ke-13. Komposisi macam siapa saja yang salah dari oh, sekarang ini Saib Cuba untuk dapatkan Saib berjaya Minum Fury tergeri ke atas dua Masih lagi ada Real Momo di bangga belakang berjaya untuk dapatkan pandai Hilang satu di pesan yang sangat-sangat besar Satu tangan kata Aziz Bakar itu bakar Aziz di sini oleh Shizu Alstopable Tiga oh. orang disikat Tiga orang dilempar Tetapi satu yang tumpang Momo terus saja terkantoi Tapi lihat Refis Ya Berjaya untuk menghentak dua orang pemain Ya Lord Akan ditumpangkan Walaupun berjaya untuk dapatkan Saib Saib Tapi Yuna juga Masih lagi dikejar Walaupun ada hadga tapi tak dirasakan Healing tak akan memberikan apa pemakna By one free one Nak satu Memancing Yuna Masuk ke bahagian dalam Tetapi lihat Yuna yang bakal berjaya untuk didapatkan Yang Lord juga nyawa sangat-sangat rendah Dengan penggunaan Mirror Fury Masuk ke dalam Fury Fadi dilepaskan Untuk mengetahui info lanjut mengenai prestasi pemain dan jadi sebahagian daripada MPM Malaysia, layari laman rasmi Liga Isukan No. 1 Malaysia untuk dapatkan maklumat terkini dan lengkap. Layari laman rasmi MPM Malaysia sekarang. Ayo kita bersama menaikkan mutu MLBB di Malaysia. Jangan terlepas kemas kini Liga Academy rasmi MLBB Malaysia, MAL Malaysia. Ikuti semua platform rasmi kami. Ayo sokong MAL Malaysia musim pertama. Ikuti semua platform rasmi. Semua peminat dan penyokong dijemput ke arena MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 di Serdang. Anda berpeluang berjumpa dengan pemain kegemaran anda. Kumpul tanda tangan eksklusif dan sertai kampen Fan of the Season. Interested in knowing more about player performance and be a part of MPL Malaysia? Visit the website of MPL Malaysia's number one esports league for the latest news and league updates. Don't miss out on updates from the official MLBB Malaysia Academy League, MAL Malaysia. Follow all our official platforms. All fans are invited to the MPL Malaysia Season 13 Arena in Serdang. You will get a chance to meet your favorite players, get exclusive autographs, and join the Fan of the Season campaign. Let's go! 
Dallas can you do it? And Albert is on the other side. Yeah. Let's fight as long as it's been shot down by the Blazing Duet as well as the Electro Final Blow. This is going to be easy cleanup for Tordok as most of the time. Albert is not on the Zipa. He's 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 on the Zipa.
I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Pangilaku rock star. Ini ke Johanna kita semua orang rock star. Kita rock star. Kita buat saja kaya kita. Makin panas apinya sudah membara.
I'm a, I'm a rock star. Yeah. Rock yeah. star? Ay, ay, ay. I'm a rock star, baby, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. PL Malaysia Season 13 is powered by Muntal. Enjoy a superior 5G network and lightning fast gaming experience only with our official mobile internet hotlink. A big shout out to ROG Phone 8, the official gaming phone for keeping our players at the top of their game. Grind on with Nescafe to keep your gaming spirit going. Thank you to all of our sponsors and partners for your support in MPL Malaysia Season 13. It's a beautiful day here in MPL MY Season 13 as, and we, we continue the spirit of Suru Saturday and of course our Riang Raya MPL. We welcome you from a full house here at MPL MY. Welcome to the English stream. My name is Staffa along with Gideon and Husky for our most anticipated match of the day. The most anticipated rumbling is about to happen. We got a preview of how it felt like just now on, on the desk, but I think the audience watching online is going to experience that very, very soon. Two Kage is about to clash on that main stage. It pro it's probably one of the highest profile best of trees in the regular season. I mean, we can tell with the crowd alone, we got a full house here today. Oh, I'm so excited for that. <laughs> I'm so excited to get my ear with drums just bl absolutely blown out. But the quality of the match is only going to justify the screams coming in from this crowd. As mentioned before, Kage versus Kage. Both villages are out to play. 
It's gonna be an exciting one here because we do have the old champs, the defending champs of Homeboys going up against the new Empire. King Empire so far, an undefeated team looking very strong going into MPL MY Season 13. I think just from results alone, a lot of people are going to be expecting them to be the favorites. But Homeboys have already stated before that the first couple of weeks are just a warm-up. So this could be their true form coming out to play. And the first litmus test against the true form, uh, with their true form, is against the Empire, which is out of this world. But I think you know the secret to their success, right? Ooh, I'm not supposed to say, but here's here's a secret for all of you. Are you guys listening closely? You guys just need to try out the ROG Phone 8 because you can dominate with spectacular performance, spectacular gameplay. It is your ultimate gaming phone, the king of performance itself, the ROG Phone 8. Big shout out to them for being our official gaming phone and keeping our pros at the top of their game. We've already revealed their secrets now. I mean, it's, it's about to be revealed one, in a, well, sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. Every yes, time I play a ranked game and someone first picks Layla and wins the game, I'm like, yo, bro, why you picked Layla and how did you win the game with Layla? Anyways, and it's like, yeah, because I used the ROG Phone 8. I was like, ah, that's why my Layla was feeding, because I didn't have the phone. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need, really, to make yourself set apart from the rest of the competition. And speaking of setting apart from the rest of the competition, I think both of these teams up here today want to do the exact same thing because there's been a lot of comparisons between King Empire and as well as the homeboys, right? Obviously, looking at the lineups, it's like, it's pretty, pretty good. I mean, we're talking about superstar lineups, lineups that are designed to succeed immediately. The pickups from Udil and as well as that's the fact that we are also seeing Sasa and Smooth from the side of King Empire on top on top of the fact that they've got Sutsujin as well, it's hard to say that this is going to be a easy battle. I mean, you have shadows of the runner-ups from last season up against the defending champions, right? With a bit of a twist to their roster, high-profile imports, like you said. I think the best part about this is the fact that KGE, we didn't talk much about x and Sutsujin, but they have proven themselves over time. Mm -hmm. They really have. All of these players have so much to show, but we also have something to show. We have a video for you guys, so check this out. Paling tak lupa tak minta maaf. No idea with that. Maybe uh, kasi ingat banyak lah. <laughs> nak cerita buruk ke, nak cerita baik eh. Biasa dia lah macam confit sikit. Macam saya bergaduh dengan mak saya kan. Nak masuk sport, masuk sport. Sampaikan saya kena lah rumah. Aku ada terbaca lah orang cakap. Game ni dah, dah rasti teruk lah. Dah boleh pergi kerja kilang lah. <laughs> <laughs> tapi tapi ya aku aku okey je sebenarnya yang video aku viral nangis-nangis apa semua tu itu bukan sebab aku kecewa dengan kecaman orang apa semua tak ada kecaman ni tu semua aku tak kisah apa semua ni semua tu like aku disappointed dengan aku punya performance je dengan apa yang aku bagi apa yang hard work yang aku put tapi end up performance aku macam tu ah sebab aku tahu orang-orang yang komen apa semua orang tak tahu pun apa yang terjadi ah orang nampak daripada luar orang tak tahu apa-apa yang dalam macam ibarat kita tengok bola dia ni passing Pasing tu betul lah. Kita bukan tahu, kita bukan join training pun. Kenapa Harry Maguire minus setiap minggu? Kita tak tahu pun dalam training dia macam mana. Pergaduhan yang paling risau, perit dan pedih lah kan. Kita tak ada cakap apa-apa. Cuma waktu tu, MPL season 6. Di mana Todak tak tak ada kalah lagi best of three. Waktu tu, pressure dia sangat besar sebab orang semua mengharapkan kita menang daripada regular season sampai habis. And waktu tu, masing-masing pelik gameplay dia, pelik gila kan macam timing tak kena pakai hero pun pelik-pelik kan, dengan pressure apa semua pun bengang mental ketuk meja, kata kita main apa benda ni kan, waktu tu dah nak play off dah tak silap pun, lagi dua hari dah nak play off season 6, kalau korang main macam ni beta aku pergi main dengan parti-parti indo joki apa semua kan lagi bagus daripada aku main dengan korang kan biasalah kan, kita bekerja as a team, as a kumpulan kan 
So kalau tak gaduh tu Bukan team lah maksudnya kan So bila habis tu Dah macam biasa je lah Basically kita orang gaduh macam tu je Dia tak ada lebih-lebih sebab Try to be professional lah Try to not take it personal Sebab in the end of the day Kita nak kena bermain dengan orang Orang tu juga kan The M3 lah for me It's so hard for me The M3 I, Until now I still Cannot forget about it Just like We scream We, we will stick I think for the two day already Almost 12 game like that And then I I score to Zayim I score to everyone And then we almost want to fight like that But after that I still I still think I'm correct like that But I didn't say sorry to Zayim And Small like that I feel so bad Until now like that. I cannot forget I think this one moment also Okay, it will make someone cry. I think a lot this time. <laughs> Actually, it's a lot. I feel that I, so bad on this. I, every season, I think quite because of me. Like, because of pressure, I pressure him a lot to cover me, to become a best slider. My bad. Sorry. Every, my tank. Saya adalah minta maaf dengan ibu saya sampai saya meletut. <laughs> sampai saya meletut dah, saya minta maaf dengan dia sebab ya kan ibu kita kan nak uh, yang terbaik untuk kita kan. Uh. Tapi mungkin sebab dia tak dia tak nampak lagi lah masa tu game tu macam boleh buat duit lah. Dia fikir macam masa tu game tu hanya main untuk hiburan, macam buat masa lah. Tapi bila saya start yang uh, ni yang sebelum ni yang saya start tier 2 tu saya dah start macam menang tournament. Lepas tu dengan RTZ kan. Saya menang tournament, menang tournament dapat duit lah. Dan tu baru dia dah macam dia dah start support so slow lah dia start so support. Ha. Kira dia macam penyemangat saya lah untuk teruskan dalam support lah. Untuk yang memaafkan AJ, memaafkan orang yang dengki dengan AJ Dengki itu maksudnya dia sampai buat sesuatu Sampai menutup perut nasi AJ sendiri Tapi AJ tetap memaafkan orang tu. Itu yang paling besar Bagi saya, saya banyaklah uh, salah dengan AJ sebab Masa ke arah AJ, saya 10, saya banyak marah dia Dia buat dia nangis lah sebab saya tak suka sikap dia dan sebab saya terasa lah sampai sekarang benda yang saya buat tu salah tapi saya mungkin ego tak minta maaf dan sekarang baru saya rasa lah saya sebagai sini saya tak sepatutnya buat macam tu lah kat dia masa kat RG. dan saya terharu sebab masa tak ada orang uh, ingat saya uh, ambil saya dia yang uh, cari saya dan try saya untuk ke tim hak Yalah, saya banyak buat salah kat dia tapi dia masih ingat saya dan saya nak berterima kasihlah dekat Iris sebab bagi saya peluang lagi untuk ke pro scene ni. Actually after the game I will apologize to them just like because I thinking just like uh, I want to win only because for my positive everything is I want to win. I want to improve myself. I want to improve the tank. But I never care about the people feeling anything like that. So Aku tak rasa semua orang boleh macam aku untuk minta maaf sebab bagi aku kalau kita minta maaf ni kita dah lepas satu tanggungjawab. Aku dah rasa satu kepuasan. Macam even benda tu bukan salah aku, especially salah aku, aku akan minta maaf. Sebab aku tahu kebanyakan manusia ni dia tak dia tak nak minta maaf. So aku aku minta maaf. Sebab benda tu simple lah, dua perkataan lah, minta maaf tapi tak semua orang boleh buat. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We hope all of you enjoyed the little program we prepared for you there because it does carry a very important message to everyone who's watching that no matter how much we may look at these players, how much we may judge them, how much we expect the world of them, that there is still a world of struggle that they are going through themselves behind the scenes. And we should give it our all to really support them when they are on that stage. Could I have said it any better? I think the 
it's like the old saying, right? The best way to move forward is to admit that you have done something wrong in the beginning. And I, it's, it's great to see behind the scenes of these players, you know, makes them a lot more human. They're not just robots that wins games for the fans mm -hmm. and for themselves. They also have a lot of problems that they need to tackle. But the improvement is what makes it all worth it, right? The ending montages of the team celebrating their wins. These little moments make up a lot of, make up just a little bit of the struggles that they had to go through. I mean, these players are extremely young. Some of these players have been playing since the very beginning of all of the MLBB tour tournaments that have been starting from Tier 2s all the way to Tier 1s, of the first inception of the MPL itself. People like Zion Senpoi, or even people uh, like Lexia himself. Six years worth of gameplay. Six total years of competitive gameplay coming out from some of these guys. Even from AIM himself. It's good to see that at least from kids, they're slowly becoming men. I think it really does open your eyes to realize that when you are a pro player, when you are dedicated to esports. It is not just all the training, all the improvement, all the chasing victories that happens to these players, these very young individuals up on that stage. It is that personal development that pushes them forward, allows them to mature and become stronger individuals, and allows them to pass down better lessons to newer generations of esports players as well. You see, diamonds are made out of immense pressure, made under immense pressure. So I think this itself is already a good premonition of what we can expect. Maybe the fans will be a bit more empathizing, uh, empathizing and more sympathetic to the players. But we're going to talk about the matter at hand. It's the Kage showdown between Sasa of KG and Udil of Homeboy. And now, I was already talking about six years worth of gameplay. Both of these incepted very, very young as professionals in their own right, starting one of the greatest runs for Onik in a very long time, and then eventually breaking apart to eventually where they are here here now, MPMY Legends Award, MPL Invitational Champion, both Udil and Sasa. Their monikers, they're just going to keep on racking up. The, the whole fact that after all of this time, these two are still considered Kage's, that the title, the name still persists to this day, shows the level of gameplay, the level of skill that these two players have brought to the MLBB scene. You know, if you, I'm going to do a quick enemy reference. If you have watched Naruto, we should have the stone monument of these two, you know, somewhere, right? Yep. Graphic designers, I've given you the idea. Don't need to pay me. Just do the design. <laughs> because I think even whether they're together or whether they are apart, the fact that this is a reunion, uh, maybe a bittersweet one on the stage, at least in a competitive sense, it's going to give us a very good insight on how these players are thinking and how they will go up against each other, right? They know each other like the back of their palm. Sasa definitely has a lot of insight about Udil, and you can stay the same for Udil. Mm -hmm. I think at least with the roles that they're playing on, it's going to be more so how it's going to affect the rest of the team that's going to be playing around them. Because again, it's pretty clear that KGE still plays around, you know, the God King, Sasa of the gold lane, and will continue to do that, I, unless they're changing it this time. More so, how does the homeboys kind of approach the situation? Yeah, we've seen that King Empire still plays very disciplined style, likes to go for that late game scaling, and they play it safe. They don't try to push their advantages too hard for fear of risking it all. And so far, this type of strategy has worked out pretty well for them. Whereas on the other side, we know traditionally homeboys are a very aggressive team that likes to start out flashy and bombastic right out the gate. And yet, they haven't quite shown that yet this season. They're still having some difficulty getting that coordination working. Yeah, I think you are looking at two teams who are really good at not cracking under pressure, right? They can play 20, 25, even 30 million games and still pull off incredible comebacks. Homeboys was literally famous for that last season. Whereas KGE, well, when the players are still on, were still on SMG. They were famous for letting these comebacks happen. But right now, they've fixed that. And now we're looking at two giants about to take on the main stage. Well, speaking of these two giants, let's go ahead and invite the players of King Empire and Homeboys on stage. King Empire Esports. Undefeated and looking unbreakable, the kings of the new era are looking composed and confident under the leadership of MPL Malaysia legend Sasa, along with reliable comrades at their side. The Empire is ready to expand their conquest. All hail King Empire! Looking fresh and looking swag after the Raya break, led by 
by the spicy boy himself, Udo, and many iconic players of MPL MY, the boys are back for some quality action on the land of dawn. It's time to bring the house down. Make some noise for the home boy. And of course, no match is complete without the brains of the operation, the coaches and analysts of both teams with our head of League of Cedric take to the stage who will ensure fair play and professional integrity. We got Coach Ryzen as well as Coach Paz and Assistant Coach Nobody for the side of King Empire and Homeboys. And with the fist bumps going across the stage right now, we are about to enter a brand new era of battle between two wordy opponents. Oh man, what a heartwarming sight, Tasa and Udio. One last handshake before they take each other on and then the rest is going to happen at the end of the series. That itself is already monumental, but I can only imagine the pressure these two teams must be feeling, right? KG, they work hard over the past series that they played to prove their worth, whereas for homeboys, they're looking to prove their right to stay. Well, at the end of it, it's still just another game. There's still plenty more in the regular season, but I can't help but feel that the pressure is starting to build up, especially with the crowd around us. More and more people are still swarming in towards the arena. So get yourself an opportunity and come live to watch this game. It might just be worth your time. Uh, we thought it was a full house already. Apparently it can become a fuller house. I'm interested to see whether it'll become the fullest house by the end of this match here. Because these are two teams with huge fan bases with some history behind them. Even though King Empire, it's the first time that this org has entered MP. MY just purely from the legacy of the players themselves. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Recently, they kind of branded their fans. It's called the Battalions. Battalions against Flame Boys. Uh, the atmosphere is definitely heating up. <laughs> so much to go for, but let's keep you guys up to date with the current lineups of both of these teams. Starting off with King Empire Esports. It's Deto, Smooth, Sasa, x wing and Sutsujin, a lineup that hasn't fallen just yet. The big question here, even though they're not facing the Kage, they're not facing each other in the same role, can Deto stand up to Udil himself? Ooh. I think that is that is definitely a, a question that, that has to be answered. But so far, I think Deto's performances overall in the tournament has been solid, right? Rock solid, in fact. But like you mentioned, going up against Homeboy's lineup, you have the Kage in the mid lane, the Udil alongside Nets, the Subbat, Zorn, and Chibi. Yep, homeboys, our defending champs, have become fan favorites across their long history here in MPL MY. And all of their players are individually talented. They're just looking for that one final spark to pull the entire composition together. We're, of course, going to highlight a lot onto the Kages themselves. But even in the other positions, there's some very interesting matchups. I especially have my eye on Zorn against x -Win. Yeah, I personally am also looking at that matchup because x -Win one of the rookies that joined KG, a lot of pressure on his shoulders. But from game number one, I think that time was against Niners. Up till this point, he has been very, very solid on that role. Very opportunistic, willing to pull the trigger. And the team is there to back him up. I remember this that game against Niners. We dragged on for like almost about half an hour. And it was always x win that is looking to find an opening to give KG that lead. And he always finds it. Funnily enough, I've heard, based on word on the street, rumors out there that before x wing even became a pro, he was DMing Zorn every other day, asking him for tips and tricks. But based off your uh, own idol. Yeah, we did hear Ooh. that x wing was a big fan of Zorn. Basically, like you said, considering him an idol of sorts. And now he gets to face off against him on the stage. Mano a mano. Honestly, if you were in that position, how would you feel? How would I feel? I think, well, if it was me, I would just play my best, right? Like, besting the master is one thing, but being able to cross swords with him itself is already an honor. Well, the game will start soon, but before that, one more thing. KGE Season 13 punya lineup lagi hebat ke? Ataupun Season 12 punya SMG lineup lagi hebat? Saya rasa KGE sebab kita tengok daripada best performance 2 week. 
Dia orang sangat bagus, win streak. Oh. Segi Roma, X-Win tu antara orang yang bagus lah yang dia orang dapat. Jadi campur lagi dengan Deto dan Susu Jin membuatkan dia orang lagi solid untuk season ni. Tahu tak tadi I cakap dengan X-Win, dia cakap you idola dia. Dia nak jumpa tak you tahu, dekat. Dia selalu chat I dulu sebelum dia oh. jadi pro player sini. Selamat Hari Raya. Ailid Fitri, maaf Zahid dah batin untuk semua orang yang menyambut Hari Raya. Korang hati-hati dekat Hari Raya nanti sebab apa banyak kenderaan yang laju-laju. Okay? Selamat Hari Raya guys. Now that you guys are one of the strongest team this season, yes. which team you want to meet this season? Like you really cannot wait to meet. I think Homeboys and SRG. Homeboy because last season they champion and then yes. we lose to him grand final. Yes. And then I want to refresh and then I want to bantai him. Want to bantai? Who you want to bantai in homeboys? I think Udil got. Wow, Udil. Yeah. Listen. Okay. okay, then in SRG? SRG because of Somi. La. Because of your bestie. La. Yeah, because Somi always says SRG so good, so good like that. I cannot listen like that. La. I want to bantai him. Oh, so like you still don't believe they so good la, because yeah. you say... No, I mean, I mean the team good. Stormy not good? Yes. <laughs> homeboys dengan Todak. Wow, okay. First, kenapa Homeboys? Homeboy sebab macam biasa lah sisi lepas. So ha. nak balas dendam lah macam tu. Okay. Todak pun sama juga. Todak pun sama juga? Season 11. Wait, dia ni, <laughs> he hold his his anger from how many seasons ago till now? Two seasons eh. Selamat Hari, Hari Raya! Raya. It's clear that both these teams have something against one another. Whether that be friendly or not so friendly, we are going to see them let it all out on that stage. And speaking of the stage, just look at how full the stadium is right now. We're being surrounded by the K3 Battalion. It is just the, the roar, the echoes of the drums, and this is just the beginning. I bet Smooth has the ancient collect this ancient artifact of the dwarves because he holds a book of grudges. <laughs> Hold up, homeboys. So many storylines, right? Kage against Kage, a disciple against, uh, a disciple, well, admirer against idol, the revenge of SMG players. I can't, I can't wait for this to start. I'm so excited. Ah, me too, me too. Once that draft begins, we'll see where the priorities are going to be landed. We already have a rough idea of what KGE generally wants to do, so the real question is whether homeboys have their own game plan to deal with the homeboys, or are they just playing their same old ways? Got to keep the flame boys happy and play their, to their own true strengths. Will that true strength be sufficient to take down the new empire? Only time will tell because we're jumping into the draft for game number one. And we can see that homeboys are giving their opponents the respect they deserve. Instant ban, Benedetta. That's the smooth classic. Take out Deto's Novaria. I mean, Deto has played a very solid Novara throughout the season, right? And he did even say that he has a lot more in the tank to show. So homeboys, they're going to make Deto show it. Very interesting. I mean, a lot of target bans here from both sides. Now KGE getting rid of some priorities, leaving a lot of the Assassin junglers open once again. Who's going to fall for the bait now that Arlot is out of the way? There's Chip available. Homeboys signature. Oh. Yep. Angela also going to be left open by King Empire. They're testing each other out right now. See how this is going to start panning out, right? Because if we follow based on the last time we saw Homeboys draft the chip, it was their instant first pick. They didn't think about anything else. We did see their opponents actually pick up the Angela on the rotation back as a reply. Still couldn't find the answer. So here we go. First pick chip for the side of the Homeboys, and the crowd immediately goes wild. Doing the Flame Boys a bit of a fan service, and Dawn's feeling really happy that he gets to make this amazing place. We've already seen one chip play from Kodak early on, and now Homeboys maybe looking to one-up that or to replicate the success of Chip. Up the original player that debuted him in this season. 100% win rate still on the heroes on the hero in two showings. King Empire, will they be the first ones to take down this lazy fox? We'll find out. With the Frederick and Roger, King Empire still sticking to what feels comfortable to them. But now that they don't have things like the Benedetta and Novaria, will it become more difficult for them to extend the games like they want to? Well, I think that the homeboys at the very least have an opportunity to attack, right? Roger generally ooh, wants to ooh. dominate the lane as hard as they can, and now we see Farsa get locked in for Udil. Rather interesting because it goes, it's double-edged sword, right? It's either you're too far away from a fight or you're too close to a fight. That this is crazy. Both teams prioritizing the Kage's heroes, but Farsa this early on. Sure, you can be the artillery support for your team, but you're up against the Roger, right? Roger, if he jumps onto you, it's gonna be lights out. And they even give Nets that carry. So naturally, 
not a, an advantageous matchup for the Roger in lane, but homeboys, they're willing to take the risk means that they got something prepared. Alright, what's gonna be next for King Empire? Most likely a mage or roam here. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be the mage. We see the Faramis coming out. So wow. Deto, this is gonna be the first time he's actually bringing this hero to the stage here. Slightly different style than Novaria, that's for sure. Let's see how on point that Nether Realm is. Into yeah. Farsa, nonetheless. Yeah, again, this is not exactly the best of matchups. Farsa's overall AoE and raw damage is something to be admired for, and definitely can force out a, uh, force out a Nether Realm really quickly as well. Now, KJE, they're batting at the Xborg on that side, which does kind of give us a rough idea that, you know, at least for Smooth, he's going to be okay in the EXP. They're probably going to start looking for counter picks for him. Yeah. There's a fun fact for everyone. Across X Win looks up to Zorn and always idolizes him, DMs him for tips. Well, those tips they're paying off, right? X Win now making it to one of the big stages and facing off against Zorn. Grok getting banned out. That is one of X Win's most comfortable hero. Homeboys coming in very prepared. Really good ban. Really good bans all across the board here. A natural counter to Farsa, something that he, uh, X Win is extremely comfortable on. KGE now looking to reply. Overall, I think. If they're going to get rid of smothering EXP matchups, to kind of force Zipot in an awkward spot, but there's still Paquito, there's still Terizla, there's still like a good number of picks for the EXP to really change things up. However, because the Farsa got shown, it does beg the question. The traditional EXP laners, the EXP laners who would look to dive, the Lapu Lapus of the world, uh, the Yuzongs of the world even, both of which have not been touched by the homeboys just yet. Yeah, I think those will definitely be the heroes that King Empire will most likely want to look towards here. And of course, I think it's a fun fact, but most of us here already know this. The OGs, the Kages, Udil and Sasa have lifted three trophies together. And now they encounter each other as rivals on the MPL MY stage. Yeah, lifting trophies, local trophies and regional trophies. So big achievements overall. And speaking about Teresla, the fact that the Paras and x are banned <laughs> now does I'm lead us to believe that there is a chance we see the smooth Tarisla again. It was one of his staple XP lane picks back in Season 12 and has won uh, back then SMG a lot of games in the, at the 11th hour. Mm, I mean, this could be a CC, uh, a CC pick as well. Yep. That's another smothering pick that they have to worry about. In terms of... Uh, they've also gotten rid of the Guinevere and as well as the Barats on both sides. Really limited you know, down the options overall in terms of supports as well. Uh, if they go for the Terizla, it's still a bit of a risk because Chip is still able to affect the side lanes like we saw in our previous matches. It doesn't matter where you are, you're never really, really safe. So I think even if you go for CC, yes, you have some form of counterplay, but you're not necessarily going to reach a fight fast enough to really abuse Pharmacy's Nether Realm in the later stages of the game. I agree. We do see the Lapu Lapu coming out. Considering that Grok and Guinevere are gone, that means that the job of catching out Udil is going to be a scientist move here. I think it's basically the best choice that he has overall to try and deal with this feathered airstrike. Provide some good AoE as well, just in case Chip comes on in with that big portal play. But a lot of that will come down to X Win's pick now that his signatures are both taken off the table. Mm -hmm. I think one last ro tank roamer that has the initiation and you know, AoE control is the Tigru, right? We yep. haven't seen this hero in a, in a very, very long time. But considering the options on the table, there isn't really much Please. left. Upon the edge I don't think it's too void. bad. Uh, Nolan geez. gets picked up for the side of the homeboys. Oh, Are they going to go for the Rizzler? Oh, they go for the wow. Thomas instead. The tempo Ooh. actually shifting. So they still want to contest with these neutral objectives, and they want to do it through the EXP lane. They want Carry to survive the lane, and once the mid lane finally hits two items, then we start prioritizing the opposite side. Good call, Husky. That's going to be the Tigreal locking for the side of KGE. Yep. Makes the most sense overall. Kind of the same application as having a Minotaur into a chip, right? He puts the portal, you're just going to wait and see how many people you can catch with the implosion. That being said, you still have not that easy of a matchup to go up against, right? Chip, a lot more mobile, can move around the map and create these pockets of opportunity. Thamus is just naturally good into your tanky front lines. He's gonna chew through them bit by bit. If you ask me personally though, I think homeboys so far have come the closest to figuring out how to manipulate King Empire's drafting phase. These are not the signature heroes that have brought King Empire all the way to their several victories. 
Will it be enough for the homeboys? Well, let's find out as we head into the land of dawn. Despite this best of three, the full house continues to rumble, and we're only going to bring the roof down if this goes all three games. As junglers begin, let's see where they start on the map, and at least that'll give us a rough idea of where they're going to be playing towards. And with this, homeboys on the blue side, King Empire Esports on red. This arena is just about to heat up, and of course, a ceremonial tech pass. Uh, you can hear the crowd, the excitement. It's going to let it steal for a little bit. Let it simmer. I believe it's a call from the side of KGE. No audio, it seems. No audio. The timing woo, woo, could I, not have I, been worse. I love it. I love it. Hey, man, at least the fans are still amped up about it. They're like, oh, and they continue slide cheering with the drums. I mean, we know what's coming, and we know what is at stake here. So if any of these players are having technical difficulties, they got to make sure to resolve it so that they can put their all on that stage. But this is going to be a very exciting match here, because so far, King Empire's win condition has basically just been give us as many signature heroes as we can get. Now that Homeboys has forced them into a more reserved type of style, since they basically respect ban everything, it's going to be interesting to see how they'll perform in comparison. Yeah, it does to be a type 2 issue, so do bear with us for a while and just let this atmosphere build up. I think Homeboys, like we all have already kind of touched on, did their homework, right? And having that blue side advantage as well, you have the liberty to start banning up heroes like Novaria, Benedetta, the supporters, KGE, the Battalion, the, Sasa, the Kagi supporters. All right, now we got to find one for Udio. Where's Udio's one? <laughs> They'll be there. The cameraman will get into position in the meantime. But yeah, no. As you mentioned, as for mentioned before, they have manipulated the draft to a certain degree, but at the same time, at least they have very clear plans of what they want to do. The fact that we're seeing a Thamos of all things in the EXP does tell us that they want to play for the earlier stages of the game towards where the objective is going to spawn. If we do see the turtle end up spawning on towards Goldzon, expect a lane swap at the same time, right? Homeboys generally want to play for their neutral objectives, and King Empire are going to be playing for their gold lane. I have no doubt about that. The real question is, once we get into the mid game, once it turns into First Lord, that's where it's going to get a little uncomfortable, right? Because that's all dependent on how far ahead Sasa is ahead of the curve compared to his opponents, and more importantly, how far ahead is Udil because he can basically one-shot this Roger. Yeah. This Farsa so far, not been popular for a while because despite the explosive damage, oh, that can be... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, the oh, that's the fan That's the fan That's the fan yep. Thank you very much to everyone. We're back in the game. That is how you hype out the crowd, man, with good matches and, of course, our Marshall to officiate things. There it is, finally in the game. Got to check out. I believe Fuyo started with one with uh, the health crystal, so extra health in the mid lane to just survive against the ghost bursters in the earlier stages. They already found X Win, Thorn with a bit of that harass with the concussive flash just to make sure that X Win does not disrupt GB. Yeah, this, again, respecting no man's land here. They're gonna get a little bit of a trade, but at the end of it, Thorn knows that he will be able to out sustain this Tigreal at the end of the day. If not health, at least in mana. Um, but it's clear to see as well that both these teams are going to be looking for that early engagement. They're expecting skirmishes to happen at that first turtle fight, considering that both Sutsuchin and Subat have also gone in pure rage in a similar style we saw in the earlier games. More damage, more survivability means more fighting. Yeah, as much as Homeboys manipulated the draft a little bit, you still can see that King KG managed to find a draft that suits their playstyle. Why play together? It's all about those big, big fights. Stick gets five. Whereas Homeboys, they're gonna play tempo. First turtle spawning on this top side. And it seems like they're applying a bit more pressure onto Smooth to make sure that he doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah, they want to deny them level four. They want to be able to hit four first, make it and start position and hold the turtle on their side before King Empire is able to do so. And considering that a majority of their members haven't hit a level four just yet. X Win, especially, the big key factor. I don't think they're gonna do this. Yeah, no contest. X Win, he's gonna try even use the flicker, but GB's level six. X Win just got the implosion. He's just gonna unleash a death to save him with another round, but only Sustajin is gonna be there. It is not enough. Subbot claims first blood, but Smooth somehow was able to fight Udio. Can't get out those arms with the flicker. The collection for homeboys, turtle and two kills. Two for one so far. First blood already achieved, and now Sutsujin 
He's in a very good position here, but however, GB has been power farming this entire time. He's already level six, and Zorn continuing to monitor Sutsujin's movements all across the map, Ooh. just to make it difficult. They know that King Empire, it's not x win who's the one who's gonna predetermine where the team is gonna be, it's gonna be Sutsujin. And Sutsujin thankfully able to secure his own purple buff. This time with Chibi, he is so, so far ahead in terms of experience. More than a full level, and Zorn, he knows that there's nothing much X-Wing can do. Chibi even steals that camp away to slow Sussujin down even more. This is what we expect from the defending champions here. This is the classic homeboy style. Three minutes in, already a 2k net worth lead. They're upping the tempo. Sussujin, be careful. Yeah, that's fine, Chibi and Udu in the bush. But it's an easy retreat for them. Smooth is going to assist Deto to clear out that wave. Return back to the XP lane. Uh, AKG just looking to slow things down a bit. Things looking quite intimidating right now for King Empire Esports. Their scaling is good. They definitely expect to lose straight up to homeboys in these early engagements, but I think they weren't expecting to already be this far behind. Especially with GB looking very comfortable right now. A full level up on Sutsujin. Oh, oh that off. Yeah, it's gonna be gone on. Instantly has to use that flicker. So he's not going to have it for the next two minutes. Zorn found, but he brings in the portal. The target is going to be Star Star GB, not even to get for the one shot. x will use his body as a brick. As Deto arrives, Smooth also takes the portal to join. They pull Serpai back, don't want to let Serpai oh. return to his lane. x with the assistant, Netherrealm will expire. Serpai wants to return home, but got sucked in by Sustergen. And King Empire this time will respond, and Deto picks it up. Great counterplay there, nicely done by King Empire, making sure that they're teetering on the very edge of a full commit to this fight and trying to maximize the overall space that they've actually created for themselves without putting an, an anybody in any real danger. Uh, properly pressuring as well, making sure homeboys can't take the portal. Oh! Only catching Chibi, and that is not enough. Udo though with the feather airstrike was able to get a, a two. KGE losing in terms of members, but the fact that Chibi is down means that Sustujin gets to secure the turtle. But somebody wants to join this fight, can't do it. Homeboys gets more kills, KGE gets the objective. And they back away, they don't trade, even though it's a two for one there. At the very least, they got the neutral objective and head back into lanes. Look at this, Nets taking full advantage, nearly breaking it. Um, that bottom tower nearly falling, but Sasa makes it back just in time. What we are definitely seeing is the type of game we were expecting between these two titans right now. Just a back and forth consistently, but Homeboy is still maintaining that net worth lead. Smooth. He's doing a good job holding on to his lane. He is a level down, which is a little sad, but there's nothing much he can do for it, right? He's not looking to win this lane. He's looking to live. And then they're looking to find Sasa. Sasa needs to get away. Oh! oh! To send Zorn underneath the turret! And Zorn forced to Deco. x win will give up his life gladly. Great counterplay from KGE. Beautiful stuff. Oh, this is what we want to see from these world-class teams right now. Unfortunately, they're though just a little bit too late, a bit too greedy with another realm. Otherwise, X Win would have gotten out of there and they would have traded up. But King Empire Esports making homeboys work for it right now, despite the early lead. Yeah, and in terms of early lead, let's have a look at the goal differentials between them, right? We're seeing that Nets slight goal lead, about 500 against Sasa as of right now. 400 goal between him, X Win, and Zorn. Udil as well, 300 difference. Again, we're not seeing significant enough differences between most of the lanes, except for jungle. Chibi, a full level ahead of Sutsujin, and there's nothing Sutsujin can really do unless Chibi goes down. Perhaps one benefit King Empire may have is that Zorn has unfortunately been the one picking up a lot of the kills instead of Chibi himself. That extra gold would be very useful if it was on the Nolan. But because so far he's been getting consistently picked off by x Win, this Nolan hasn't quite achieved the same quite pressure you'd expect with this lead. He is affecting the side lane, so that top tier one is going to fall as he clear up the wave. KG will arrive at the turtle first oh instant pullback. So he gets a taunt onto Sabat. But they're not going to fully commit to this. Get the butt vengeance out of the way. No vengeance, no ultimate. Oh, and they get a free top top turret just like that. All thanks to GB's overall aggressive behavior. Cuts the wave. They don't even. They know that this turtle is basically useless. They have the lead towards themselves. Spread your influence across the map. Let them have it. Look at GB. He's going to cut the wave again. Better air strike to win it down to Suji's health bar. There might oh be an angle God. for opportunity. X win. 
cannot find that space. It's going to be Chibi oh. to catch the turtle as it comes through the chip portal. Another round just as the insurance policy. KG looks like they want more. Subbot is going to be the target. And Sasa is kind of isolated. Homeboys gets to retreat, and it's just everything for the Flame Boys. Homeboys are doing an incredible job right now. The macro utility that Chip provides, allowing GB to just basically go anywhere he wants to split push, and knowing that he will have a way into the fight every single time is excellent. And also King Empire Esports committed quite a few abilities to try and keep Homeboys there. They're consistently on the back foot. So gross, so disgusting. Homeboys slowly choking out King Empire here really maximizing their tools. I think if King Empire wants to force a mistake out of Homeboys, they gotta punish Zorn. They gotta force him to use that ult early. I mean, Homeboys have been slowly increasing their lead. It's now around that teetering at, at the 4K mark. And the only objective, or the next one for Homeboys, is to take down this mid-tier one, and then they can, definitely, they can just take control of the map and really start to strangle KGE. Oh, looking at the itemization right now, you can see Deto still at the top of the damage dealt rankings. That bear miss having good pressure overall, but the damage starting to really kick in when Hunter Strike have to see is completed for Nolan. X Win only finding Subbot. Is that enough though? Push the Subbot away. So Sujin, he's gonna try to block everything. Ends up going down the net. Subbot eventually falls to Deto, but the portal has been brought in. And Smooth did not stand a chance against Net. Homeboys effectively winning this fight with five force by KGE. Nicely done. Once again, they tried to do the same uh, combo, but they put too many resources on the Subbot side, and that Vengeance bought him just enough time to force King Empire to commit even harder to him. If not, there just wouldn't be enough. And Homeboy is now continuing to take advantage of this map, continuing to take advantage of their overall mobility, now zoning away farm, purple buffs included from Sutsujin. This is very calm, collected, and surgical coming in from the homeboys. They know exactly what it is they want to do. And although x win tried to get a big cash with the implosion, great positioning again from the homeboys meant that he only caught the Tamas, which is basically the last person you want to catch in those kinds of situations. Now a 5k net worth lead for the homeboys, a free lord going to the hands of Chibi, and King Empire, it looks like their days are going to be numbered. Only going to continue to get worse now that homeboys have free reign off the map. And in KG, we're also starting to see the impact of Ness, right? How fast he chewed through Smooth and Susujin's help us. Susujin didn't even get to use any abilities in that fight despite trying to use his body as a sandbag. And this poses a big issue for KG. Your front lines are melting. Yep, they can't do much here. Again, it's not like Sasa was dominating this lane against Nets. Both came out pretty equal, but Nets every single time was able to pick off the kill every team fight, right? All thanks to Zorn and that TP. Now, a late Thunderbelt purchase coming in from Nets just to ensure if, if he has to deal with either Smooth or Sasa at their max build, he will be able to survive. This is now a very threatening carry. And Udil as well, doing a great job on the far side. No longer a meta pick, but feeling like it is regardless in the hands of the Kage. Lord crashing down bottom, and it looks like homeboys are going to walk out of this with every single external tower. King Empire now forced back behind the safety of their own doors. Homeboys expanding has successfully expanded their influence across the entire map. It's bad enough that you don't have vision because of no outer tier turrets. The fact that there's chip portals in your own jungle that Zorn can now utilize to move around even quicker in KG. The fact that you're stuck behind your base right now means that everything points to Sasa. Sasa has to be the one that really drags them across the finishing line. It's going to be tough, right? Because they, he needs to be in a position where King Empire are able to start peeling and shredding. Oh, wow. Instant flicker to try and start a fight. Try to bring in the cavalry. Subbot dies to the back. Artillery strike is here, but you do have the Nether Realm x win barely kept alive by his teammate. Homeboys, they really didn't lose much. They didn't. They didn't at all, and they know it, because they're using their abilities early. They're forcing it oh super early on, because they know that the next net objective that they're going to fight over is 60 seconds away. So this is just, to them, we're waiting for cooldowns. We're waiting for you to make a mistake. This is a statement to say, hey, come out here, fight us. We don't got alts. It was quite an eye for opportunity as well, with Zoran actually flickering forward to try and get that basic auto-attack stun onto Sasa. If he hadn't dashed away just in time at the end there, he may have become a casualty of that fight. So Homeboy is still upping the pressure. Zoran just absolutely controlling the map. 
and he's gonna have the rest of Homeboy join his fight. Look at that! This move is already gone, I mean, same as x Wing. They didn't even get to do anything in that situation. Just in time for the Lord to spawn as well. GB is just too far ahead. He's just too far ahead. Level 15 compared to Suzujin's level 13. To Smooth, he's three levels in terms of difference. To x win the fact that he lost his, his flicker in the first place was already sad enough. And then another fight occurs after that. It's not like he can forcefully make the play as well. So now homeboys, it's, it's all tactical from here on out to close out this game against King Empire. This is the most ideal situation. Yeah, especially since, like, even in the past, we, oh, going into a short pause again, oh. right as Chibi gets the Lord as well. But this is something that has happened to King Empire in the past. They've been pushed into their base. Unfortunately, this time, they don't have the value of heroes like Novaria and Benedetta to try and prolong their presence on the map. Homeboys has made sure of that. It's such a tough spot to be in. Homeboys, the flame was clearly fired up, but it's for KG. The battalion isn't really giving up yet. They're showing the support. We're looking at a 10k co-lead for Homeboys with the second Lord. So this is only going to get tougher for KG. The base defense is what's going to matter, and they might only have one attempt at that. Might only have one attempt. Uh, I mean, uh, X-Wing needs to get the implosion of his life. That's true. He really does. That's true, but he also needs his flicker to make that happen, right? I think there's there's too many angles that it's too obvious, right? Homeboy shouldn't be able to fall for the simple tricks, but if he does flicker in for it, that's a different story. And I think as of right now, I think even homeboys are very aware of that too. If we take away his one battle spell that makes him relevant, I think we've got a, you know, dead to rights chance of closing out this game before it even begins. And it's not difficult to force it out as well, just because of how fond the homeboys are now. Every single one of them does so much damage that even x Win cannot survive long enough without using Flicker to escape. King Empire finding themselves back into a corner. Yeah, you've seen less damage, right? He ran down x Win when x Win didn't have a Flicker. And, and it's not like KG could respond to this carry. What you're gonna do, send Smooth <laughs> after him? Smooth also dies uh, if Chibi or Udo gets their hands onto him. So. I think, you know, probability-wise, KG, their hands are really tight. Yeah. Even a miracle might not be enough. Exactly, right? Homeboys have kicked them in the right places. They've kicked them in the shin. They've made sure that Smooth is unable to basically play the game. Udil has finally scaled and unfortunately... <laughs> All right, let it happen. I love it. Yes! We know what the We got two watch. clips for TikTok today! Yes! We're farming the clips, the views! Oh, I bet your Indonesia TikTok is gonna blow up after this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just wait for Spicy Boys interview later. Oh, yes. <laughs> that, that's gonna be number three. We're gonna interview the Marshall one day. <laughs> yep. From that PCU, it's PCU day, baby. <laughs> People are going to want to see that as well, I am pretty sure. But with Malefic Roar now completed for Chibi, 11,000 gold lead for the homeboys and the Lord crashing down mid lane. Could this be the end for King Empire? Oh, the wave synced up. Lord gonna crash in the mid, inhibit the first move. Has to do with both Chibi and Zord. His Whoa. helper evaporates in the presence of Chibi's blade. And that means the top inhibitor will fall, but KG for now able to barely hold on. They need almost half a minute for Smooth to return. Ooh, things are looking bad here. Oh, Sasa, lethal ignition. Sasa is gone. Sapa dives. Homeboys looking for the first blow onto the Empire. They will paint the map with the insignia. Homeboys takes game number one. Woo! Hot game coming here from the Homeboys. An adjustment plan needed for KGE. My goodness, that was... Uh... That was an unlosable scenario. It would have been the biggest throw if we saw Homeboys somehow drop an 11k gold lead from that position. Well, perhaps that is a good thing that we didn't see that because this was easily the most well-coordinated game plan, draft, and execution we have seen the entire season. If Homeboys can continue on this kind of momentum, the jams are back. The, the awakening of Homeboys, to say the least, well, week one, week two is over and now we are seeing that true form and what a way to demonstrate that one of the highest profile matches. Felt like KG wasn't even ready to receive the beating. Oh, 
Uh, I mean, there's nothing much they can really do about that, right? Because they're still so true to themselves. They continuously think, you know what? If somebody has to sacrifice, it cannot be Sasa. At the end of the day, he is the gold lane player, and he's going to be able to scale us to victory. Unfortunately, in this case, I think they might have uh, underestimated how fast Chibi actually is. At one point, he was like, what, four levels up, three levels yeah. up on Sutsujin, majority of the game? Even after the first turtle, right? I, don't, I think Sutsujin got it, but still Chibi was able to keep getting that, uh, that experience lead and those side lane pickoffs as well. Well, I guess Chip still maintains 100% win rate and it's gonna get banned next. And Chip is a problem here, seriously. Especially in the hands of a player like Zorn, it gives him so many chances to just decide, hey, I am going to do this and no one's going to stop me. I think a problem that Zorn has had as a player for many, many seasons is that he played at a tempo that was too fast for the rest of his team. Well, when you can just bring your whole team with you, that's no longer a problem. Yeah, eases the burden. We're gonna head over to Homeboy's camp just a little bit to take a look at the MVP for game one, because I think, you know, you put Chip in Zorn's hand, he's just gonna show up and hey, yo, you, you need some friends? I have friends. <laughs> but not your friends, I had to beat you. Let's head to homeboy's side as they celebrate this win. We're gonna give the MVP over to Chibi in this game number one. Fantastic performance on the Nolan. Deathless, flawless, clean. Woo. We definitely want to see more of this kind of thing. We've seen tank utility junglers for so, so long that sometimes you forget the roots of some of these players. Chibi made a splash as an assassin, as that hyper carry. And we got to see a flash of that once again. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to see his hand cam even during some of these fights. He is fast. He is really, really fast for such a young player as well. He continues to grow exponentially. And uh, I don't know, feels like King Empire definitely have to change, adjust some of their picks here because it feels like homeboys are walking in extremely prepared as much as KGE are also prepared for certain picks, it doesn't feel like they've got the whole mix down. Yeah, and I think Homeboys really hit it where it hurt, right? They know which which point to press, to apply pressure on when they went against KGE. In terms of bans, you're banning out KGE's uh, comfort picks. No Benedetta, no Novaria. You ban out all the picks that KGE usually want to go for. Minotaur. And then KGE, we have a contingency plan. It still sticks to our identity, but these are all plan B and obviously it doesn't seem as as smooth as what they would like. Yeah, I think they've definitely broken the formula right open. It creates a very concerning question of whether or not King Empire is too heavily dependent on having these pocket picks in the first place. We'll find out in game number two, but for now, looking at the itemization, is it, of course, very, very one-sided. Yeah, I, mm, I wouldn't say it's because of the pocket picks that make them better. It's more so, I feel like, the picks that they've selected now, it, it, some of them definitely could have changed, right? I think the one the one minute thing that they could have done within red side, especially for KGE, right? Instead of the Lapu Lapu go uh, for the fourth pick, I think they should have just locked in the Tigreal then and then look for the counter matchup later on from the homeboy side. Pose it to the homeboys, and if Sabat decides to still go at the very least for the, uh, for the Thamos, at least you might have some form of counterplay, a guaranteed way to actually stop Udil from utilizing that Feathered Airstrike. Because half of the time, right, the fight begins with Udil utilizing the Feathered Airstrike. KGE thinks that it's done, and that's when you see the map slowly go dark with the Fog of War because Chibi and Sapphire are able to walk wherever they want and still be part of the fight thanks to Zorn. I think on top of that is also how homeboys are positioned in these fights, right? Most of the time, what x Queen sees on his screen is probably only Sapphire. And even then, if he sees multiple members, his flicker range is never never far enough to reach the back line. You have seen multiple implosion attempts. It's always only on the Sapphire. And Sapphire happily eats it up. I'm going to pop my ultimate. I'm going to use Vengeance. I go down, but it's fine. Zorn brings in the rest of my team. I'm going to win anyways. Yeah, and I mean, that's why Nets always shows up late to the party. Doesn't need to show up. He only needs to show up when literally called upon sometimes. And that's and that can be pretty frustrating for KGE because that means the tempo is never really in their control. Even if they decide to start a fight, homeboys know how to close that out. Uh, it's very clean performance, very clean execution, and the homeboys ge generally feel very comfortable with entering the fights at their own paces here. And the fact that their positioning in respect to X-Win as well meant that basically it was never a situation where more than one person would get caught by the implosion. Even GB only got caught out that one time. I think X-Win was expecting to maybe catch Udil with him, but because they couldn't, 
Homeboy just has so much damage in their back pocket. I think on top of that is also how KG's composition doesn't necessarily get to punish you too much if you just disrespectfully walk up and spam recall. We kind of call back to the opening series of MPL when homeboys went up against SRG. They also wanted to play a fast tempo, but SRG has picks like Arlot, picks like Grog to punish homeboys when they overextend. I don't think KG has that. The most they have is a Tigreal, and Tigreal always needs that implosion, always needs that flicker, and he can never get close to homeboys. Yeah, they can never apply it as well. I mean, if I if I were to be hypercritical about this, I would also consider that Sasa's build probably could have been adjusted a little bit better. Like, Wind Talker definitely is a, mo uh, a first pick uh, a first pick in these situations because as soon as you see Nets disappear off the map and show up on the other side, you want to be able to clear that wave fast. Either join in with that portal or back off entirely and look to push the next wave afterwards, right? Then he decides to go for a Haas Claw. That's when I draw the line, right? Because it's either you double down on the crit build that you're going to go for, or you go for the bigger burst, right? You go for the Endless Battle Malefic Roars. Because people like Udil is basically useless as soon as his uh, cooldowns are down. And I think that maybe KGE could have utilized that. Yeah, they def definitely feel like a bit too greedy of a build here because they need Sasa to start doing damage in these team fights. They cannot purely rely on Deto because when you're competing against Udil, Chibi, and Nets at the same time, there's no way a single Faramis is going to match up here. So unfortunately, because of that, you could see that neither x wins move nor Zutsujin felt safe enough to actually walk off due to the damage disparity. I think the first sign of KG really, uh, kind of really falling into this po unwinnable position was when, I, I believe in front of the Lord Pit, Homeboy started a fight, KG wanted to kind of fight back, Susujin intentionally walks forward to try to tank everything and ends up dying without getting anything done. At that point, that's where you draw a line. This carry is way too strong, we don't have any means of dealing with him. Smooth leaps to the back with the Bravest Fighter and he gets shredded. It, it, I think at that point it's like, man, do we start thinking about the next game? Like, what's the plan? Yeah, I think you start thinking about the next game at that point, right? That or KGE just says, we all got to just go in together, right? Our, our composition is a team fight. Let's turn into a dive because we need to be able to bypass that front line. But diving in is pretty difficult as well because homeboys are just farming so well. Look at Chibi, 931 gold per minute. Probably the highest we've seen this season here. Udo, 51 damage on, 51,000 damage on the Farsa. Classic pick, no longer meta in the Kage's hands. It sure is. x men actually has a really nice number for his total damage taken. <laughs> but it's also not a good feeling to have to take that much damage from the homeboys. I mean, man hit, man hit the jackpot at least, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's featured with the number. Chibi was just printing money in this game, right? Uncontested. Uh, I think you can also give credit to Zorn. Normally, you have a Tigreal. Tigreal wants to disrupt you, right? Sort of like what certain heroes like Hilda or Kaja likes to do against assassins. But Zorn finds x at level 1, completely pushes him back, I'll sustain same with the Concussive Blast and it's passive. And I feel like even x uh has this this feeling that his hands are tied. I can't rotate around the map, I cannot find Chibi, I might as well try to mid resolve. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely think that x had to play a more defensive role here, right? In the earlier stages of the game, I think they needed to recognize that going, especially for that first turtle, that was unnecessary. You didn't need to look for position, especially if Sutsujin is nowhere close, right? At the end of the day, when somebody makes a call, especially if it's coming from your jungler, I don't want to do this, you follow that order. I think this is the exact play, right? Sutsujin was trying to clear his orange buff. At that point, the turtle was already at like, what? Almost within red tree range, and yeah, at I think actually even committed a flicker for that. Sure, move somehow got to Udio, but at what cost? He ended up going down, his wave got shoved in by Subbat afterwards. It was just kind of a series of micro decisions from King Empire. They felt like they needed to stop the tempo of Homeboys and ended up giving more instead. The worst part about all of this, right, is after that situation, Homeboys never really let go of the lead. And King Empire, on the other hand, understand that it just takes one good fight to kind of even it out, to equalize it, in a matter of fact. And they never really found that. They always found either an, uh, uh, an exact 50-50 trade between Homeboys, which is not bad considering that you're the team that's behind the goal, or Homeboys is up by one extra kill, one extra tower, one extra buff. Homeboys are very good at holding on to their leads. We've known them to be an aggressive snowball team for a very, very long time. And we were worried we, they lost that identity going into this season. But if this is anything to go by, they're back. And it is looking very, very good. Unfortunately, like you mentioned, 
King Empire were never able to find that one fight they needed to even up that goal. I think a lot of it coming down to the fact that it's so easy for homeboys to rotate multiple people over to join the fight. And they naturally have a lot more damage early than King Empire. I think early on we also sort of discussed something about being able to play mul having multiple faces in the game, right? Having needing to play and adapt to multiple comps. Now I'm curious, this question is posed to KG, can they bring out a different style or is this going to stick with them for the rest of the regular season? Because homeboys clearly have the formula to stop KG. But can KG play as fast? Like what is the what is the next plan? Well, I think KG at the very least you can see that they're very much prepared to deal with the chip. I don't think they were prepared for the other underlying factors on top of it, right? The fact that all of a sudden, hey wait, when was the last time we've seen somebody actually play the Thamos in a matter of fact? Almost never, really. He would have gone for the Paquito on those situations. He would have even picked up the Lapu Lapu for himself even, right? Or Give him the Rizzler, at the very least. I think that this was a bit of a curveball. They weren't expecting the homeboys to take a very AP brand sort of approach, where again, they have a bell curve. Each stage of the game, everybody has its purpose. Um, everything has its purpose here. Just like how having fancy skins has a pretty important purpose of making you look good when you're on the land of dawn. And if I'm talking about skins, we gotta talk about the first ever high rarity Zenith skin Twisted Fairy Tale now available for Vexana from the 25th of March until the 30th of April, so not too much time left. You guys can participate in the Twisted Fairy Tale draw and enjoy 30% off on your first 10 times draw if you haven't done it yet, as well as 50% off on your daily first one time draw. It's not just the skin, you get things like battle emotes, elimination effects, and other amazing skins. So make sure you guys check this out if you somehow missed out on it this whole time. Music to my ears. I got the battle emote, I got the elimination emote, and now all I need is Vexana. Sana to complete the Ooh. Holy Trinity. But the best part is that you can still get a lot of other ep uh, crazy epic skins if you don't get Vexana. I got a Barat skin off of that draw. You got Ooh. a Barat skin? Yeah, That's the, not bad. The daily free draw is good. Hey, man, you still got 10 more days of that to hopefully crack open that skin. If you're lucky, you better you better let us know if you get real lucky. Now, I'm going to ask Rose because she got it. That's fair. He drew it in front of us. <laughs> she did. It's such a nice skin, though. Like, seriously, looking at the model in game is like, whoo. Blows your mind. I can only I can only imagine what the champion skins is gonna start looking right? like once the AP Brand one comes Ooh. out. That one, that's gonna be fun. Hey, Paquito throws a punch and he's just one punch man, right? Creates a terrain. Hey. It creates a new terrain. <laughs> I don't know. It has the MVP. Changes the map itself. <laughs> <laughs> he has a kill and he has a, every time he gets a kill, the opponent has to watch a cutscene as you go down. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be atrocious. That would be so toxic. How I'm do you make lie. calls? You know, like. you can, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. What do you want me from me? Guys, we got the Paquito. Oh wait, gotta wait three seconds. <laughs> Now my, <laughs> now my entire team is dead. What do you want me to do, huh? <laughs> hey, man, how long is it going to take you to respawn? Just a little longer than this cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be too fun. That would be too fun if skins had cut skins as well. God. Uh, it really time. would. Well, thankfully, we don't have that for now. But let's talk about what needs to happen going into game number two. Homeboys has clearly carved out a really comfortable style for themselves that works well against King Empire. What does the Empire have to do? Switch to blue side. Yeah, I was about to say ah. that, right? Blue side. The blue side, it's just, it's arguably just the better side at this point, right? Counter picks, counter picks seem like a good idea, but that's only when you have an overwhelming majority of good picks to kind of compensate for it, right? There's three lanes, three opportunities to do so. And I think for most junglers as well, not as, not affected as much, not not following the same conditions or rules in this case when it comes down to the draft, but it can be very, very difficult when you have three losing lanes. I think the, the hardest thing about being on red side is that a lot of times you look at the first three picks and you're already like, man, how are we going to draft going into the second phase? Because we don't get priority heroes. We get to counter pick, but then afterwards, the second phase, we don't really get to do much. I think a lot of fans are asking uh, Daddy Hood for uh, the Do It Raya. Yep. <laughs> I, should, I should do that. And it looks hey, like yo. he is saying yes with the double thumbs up. He's saying up yes? There. All right. I'm ready, man. <laughs> All right, we got to invade the Hold whole place. Hold the desk for a while. I'm ready. <laughs> 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 Next thing, we're going to see Husky on the on the camera with the sign as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to finish what Poji started last season. I'm going over to Homeboy. <laughs> with that being said, we do have confirmation that that was the highest GPM we've Ooh. had this season. In first place, going to Chibi, breaking the record, getting up to 931.
Man, that's quite a bit here. But honestly, we've been getting a lot of high GPM scores from our players this season. The fact that we already have five 900 plus GPM scores just in week three shows that these players are hitting new levels of just straight up efficiency in their farming. And that is what I like to see. Chibi is the only jungler on that list, and That's he's number true. one. Mm -hmm. Like everyone is a marksman, and Chibi is just looking at them like, do better. <laughs> do better. You get the farm wave, uncontested, people help you. I'm all alone, and I farm better than you guys. <laughs> you got the gold lane, you got gold minions. When I was your age, I had to wade through the jungle. It's called gold <laughs> lane, and you're still not number one. What, what are you doing with life? Oh. Surprisingly, KG still takes red side, but at least they banned the chip. They ban the chip, they also continue on with the Harv <laughs> as well as the Matilda, right? Oh, wow! Oh, boy! Man, poor Detto, man. <laughs> doesn't get Novara, now gets Faram is stolen. They're really digging into his pocket. I mean, uh, that, it just means that he picks Valentina, right? They pick Valentina, they probably go for like a jung uh, jungle EXP flex. It could just be like a Fredrin, uh, Fredrin Valentina from this point on. It's also an Arlet there if they want. Oh, you're right. They did swap out the Arla instead for the chip. Mm. Mm. Will they go for it, though? Ooh, okay. okay. The carry first, making sure that Ness doesn't get that again, huh. along with the Fredrin. So basically making sure that the typical marksman counter to him is no longer available. All right, Nets. Show Sasa how it's done. Lock at the Roger now. I feel like he's going to do it. It's either that or the Harif, you know? It's either that oh, or the Harif. Banned. Oh, wait, Harris banned. Yeah, yeah, Roger then. Come on, come on. You know you want it. Come on, give it to him. Give it to him, Pops. Just, Pops, look him in the eyes. Look, look at Nets dead in the eyes and be like, you're going to win this lane. You look at give you Roger. You better win this lane. And then he'll respond to Roger. Nets is to do it at the end of the table. Come on. Yes, Who do you think Pops is talking to? <laughs> I don't know, man. He, he was looking at like, nobody. You know what now. you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking at Nets. Come on. Come on. Come All on. right. Roger. There's the barrage, there's the bots. Give it to him. Give it give the man a lane dominant hero. Surely he's a Roger, right? Okay. It's, I mean there's Zorn and Subba that can utilize this. Alright. I think fine with it. I think it's okay. I think it's okay at the very least, right? Nets is a decent player, but now that means that X Borg gets locked in for the side of KGE for a way to actually try and deal with attacks. For all we know, this could be Arla uh, for Zorn in the roaming position. Maybe looking for some kind of redemption. There still could be a Sapat Barats if they want it, right, F? Also cool. True. Yeah. Let's pick. Some good flexibility here. I do like the x Borg pick. I think it's a very safe choice now that Barats and Arlet have been showed. And it's something that Smooth himself is very comfortable with. It means that right now, homeboys are still going to be looking for that gold laner. And then, well, depending on where the remaining two heroes are flexed, it could be anything. King Empire can be looking for that mage and roamer position. That's not the Nolan first that has cost them a lot of pain. I guess at least if you can make sure that this barrage goes into the jungle, you sort of, you sort of free up some space overall. Mm -hmm. But then again, you have an export and a Fred with the barrage, it's going to be A-OK -okay to a certain degree. Yeah, I think overall it's going to be all right. I think for KG, the hardest part is locking in, uh, uh, locking in your roamer here, right? Yep. And homeboys immediately right on top of that. They have a rough idea of what they want. So they ban out the Grok. I'm surprised they don't want to also just ban out the uh, Valentina as well, just to make sure at least they can't steal away the Nether Realm. It does make you wonder whether they know something that we may not. There's, is it a possibility that Deto is just not comfortable with the hero? I guess you have to be, right? Like you no, can't he's just, played it before. Yeah, he's played it before. Can't quite remember. Can't just have like two heroes for the entire <laughs> tournament. <laughs> yeah. That would be a travesty. You never know. Hey, man. Just you wait. I'm sure Yuna has some words for you. <laughs> I... What'd you say about my Fredrin? What'd you say about my Boxia? No, no, Martis, Martis. I'm oh, sorry, Martis, oh, yeah, my Martis bad. as well. It's three, it's not two. Get your facts right. <laughs> All right, we see now it has come down to this last pick for the side of the homeboys. What is it going to be? Hunt. Last yep. bad, Valentina, thank goodness. That means they were using their time to really talk about the last couple of picks here. Because keep in mind, KGE will have priority on first pick for the second phase, while homeboys must complete their composition immediately after. Mm. I think right now you probably might be looking at your Roma, right? At least, again, if we want to talk about winning matchup, there's actually the Lilia for KGE. If they want to put Detto on it, it's still available. Decent again into the Barras, decent into the Faramis. As long as we have to purify, I think Lilia is pretty good overall. The Guinevere hasn't been banned this... Oh, Take the Vexana, okay. 
I guess it's not too bad, but my personal preference, I still prefer the linear. Yeah. Your, your face looks very judgmental right now, Gideon. Like, I mean, what, what's thought? I mean, overall, why do you want the Vixana, right? Well, what, what, what's, why, what does Vixana bring that Lilia doesn't bring in this particular matchup? The Venus Kid. You know what? You're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually correct. This could be one of those bling moments. It's like, I, you got uh, the coach is like, you either get Vexana or you get Lilia. Yes. See Deto searching through the skins and sees the Zenith. It's like, you know what? Vexana it is, coach. Lock me in. It's like, he'll be so shiny that homeboys cannot look directly at him. <laughs> Uh, that, that's the strategy. You just blindside your opponents oh, with bling. Blindside the opponents. <laughs> you get the Sapakito and the Natan out for homeboys. Oh, it's going to be quite an experience for Sasa in that goalie. Yeah. This will be interesting. At the very least, Vixana does have the fear to actually have some form of counterplay against the Pikido. In comparison, if he was the Lilia, you just have to hope that he doesn't deal enough damage to force you to Black Shoes. Now, finally, KGE with their last pick to round up the entire composition. I'm starting to feel like this might be another Tigreal Tigreal pick. I know the Guinevere is led through. Yep, there's no Guinevere. It was banned previously. They made sure not to give X Win either of his more comfortable roamers, but now he does get that Guinevere. The question is whether or not it's going to be good enough against that Netherrealm. Suppose if you want to play a bit faster, you want to have a lot more uh, coverage on the map, Guinevere is a good choice. Single target lockdown, uh, at least you make sure that someone actually dies in your combo. A lot of combos that you can make. Vexana, Fredrin, we allow the carry to go for the spread. But in terms of big team fight controls, that's where KG lacks a little bit. Yeah, I think that KGE, they gotta be real smart about this, right? As much, as good as the Magic Thump is, it is single target, well, Quote unquote single target, just a very, very small hitbox overall, right? If you hit multiple people, that would be ideal. But he cannot hit the Arla because Arla can dash right through it. Can't hit Barata after level 4. Daytona's welcome says no. Not a lot of good targets overall. But the conclusion is he can only hit one target as we head into game two this time. Homeboys, one game ahead in the series. On that blue side, once more, and KGE on the red. KGE, they gotta somehow pull magic out of the pocket to stay in the series. Zorn already up to his usual shenanigans here to try and mess with Sutsujin. Which means that Chibi will be able to farm very safely here on the Barat. This is something King Empire will need to overcome. Oh, man. What do you do against this man? Uh, he's gonna force him to retry, isn't he? Yep. 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 And Barat instantly gonna go for the Lithal Wanderer. x win has already started this leash for Sutsujin. They've done this before to kind of speed speed him up, right? Yeah. As much as Zorn has kind of slowed Sutsujin down, he evens up the score pretty quickly and now is up a camp. It's also very important to do just to make sure that once the enemy sees you've already used your Retribution, they don't go and invade your other buff and steal it away. So King Empire making sure that Sutsujin isn't too heavily bullied in the first few minutes. And of course, x win he's going to be able to poke Dawn out just a little bit, get away with the Spatial Migration. Oh, they actually connect with Shadow Stampede to bring, bring, bring x win back. Oh. x win gets away just in time. Oh. They actually lose the Red Tree, they want to lose the Jin. Well, forced back. into a corner, Daytona's welcome. And this should be first blood inbound. Home boys getting oh. it again, Vexana knocked out. That's three, actually from x win But it's not enough. Good reckoning. Wait, hold Wait. on. Teto should be okay, he manages to get he manages to get the fear off, but now he's going to get zoned out from this juicy wave, which is a little annoying here, but overall, really good identification from the side of the homeboys, right? They recognize, oh, Smooth is in level 4, and he doesn't have a lot of burst damage. We know that Deto recently used his fear, so that's going to be down for a while. We still have Daytona's welcome, so it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. x win also used the Magic Thumb and the second half of it with the Spatial Migration. Therefore, with all resources down, very good call coming in from Chibi, literally to just run down Sutsujin. Yep, that's gonna easily put him at a level lead now, which means that contesting this turtle is gonna be very difficult for the Fredrin on the side of King Empire. Zorn in position along with Smooth, but homeboys have a lot of people here. I don't think you fight this, right? Deto's not even four yet, but Zorn might want to force the issue. Sapat already found Deto. x win shows up, gets the knockout, but gets eaten up by Chibi. Still, Sustajin gets the turtle as Deto hits for and calls out the Eternal Guardian. They got the slam with the Zorn, who was not covered by the Nether Realm. And KGE, they get one in return. Wolf hits the bag with the last Sandy, but doesn't have damage. Gets pulled back after the flicker. It's Udo to secure that. 
Ooh, Udil really showing up right here. Definitely feeling it, knowing that his fellow Kage is on the opposite side. Being able to get that final pull in, I feel like Smooth did not need to push that so far. He clearly didn't have enough damage to finish off Chibi, but still, not too bad. As Sutsujin was able to take advantage of Chibi's mistiming due to him focusing on getting that Detona's welcome on x Win. Uh, definitely a possibility. I think that there is a consideration of whether Sutsujin should have followed up immediately after we saw Smooth get so deep in. I, I mean, yes, it sounds like a crazy thing, 1v3, but the rest of the reinforcements should have been able to come on and back him up immediately afterwards. So it kind of begs the question, what is King Empire trying to do? They go for the reset, they go back into their lanes, and then we look at Sapa, and then we look at Smooth specifically, right? In terms of gold, not too far apart, but you can tell that Smooth is playing a more defensive build. He is on the back foot a majority of the time. Yeah, that's understandable here. Oh, get knocked up. Gonna get the finish onto Zorn. That's a big combo. Deto collects that one. All right, this is the pressure that King Empire is going to be looking for here. I did notice earlier that there's three Dreadnought armors on the side of King Empire already, which is going to be very effective at lowering Sapa, Chibi, and Zorn's overall damage. Asa was able to push Nas out of the wave uh, with, by freezing it just now. So gets a level advantage, gets a bit of a lead in that bottom lane and just allows his wave to crash into that turret. And Lee's KG this time has a better start compared to last game. Second turret spawning. A much better start overall, but it's not that much of a goal lead yet. It looks like Homeboys has definitely picked a trip up or two here because they're still keeping up in the farm quite a bit here thanks to the fact that they were still able to trade many of these fights evenly. So King Empire, not quite the lead they're hoping for yet. Check the push, bounce, find Zorn. We do not able to get the pull onto Detto, but now Zorn might have a final slash angle as Chibi shows up. Still a level ahead of Sutsujin. Move able to push Sabat away. The ga KG gains priority over the turtle pit. How are you going to start this? Oh, Flicker! Final Slash! Finds Detto and x win Detto instantly disappears. And KG, I don't think you can fight this. They're going to bring Sasa in. Reinforcement shows up the Kage to come in and get a piece of the pie. KG finds two in return. Good play. Good play. They made sure that GB died. So now there is no retribution left. Free turtle. Sabat also ends up falling, and that one delivered in the hands of Sasa. Mm, this all does mean, though, that Net is getting a free lane down bottom. 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero on the Natan. This is most likely where all the gold on the homeboy side is going to. Sasa making a very good choice to rejoin that fight, where in the beginning, although it looked like homeboys were in control after a massive final slash by Zorn, it still wasn't quite enough. Oh. When is it going to be enough is the real question. I'm, I'm looking for opportunities and angles, right? I think Zorn most ideally would want to catch both Sasa and as well as Deto. I think Deto is prime target number one for homeboys because there's just a lot of utility built within this Vexana, which is a little annoying to deal with, right? Secondly, now that we are seeing that homeboys at the very least are utilizing their resources to take control over this mid lane, they're trying to keep Deto away from the side lanes from affecting these types of fights. And Smooth, I think, just got the War Axe. What was trying to go on the Nest? Couldn't find that knockup. Sasa within range of Zorn and just a bit of spatial awareness of where the final slash could hit. KG getting that 1.3k goalie. Zorn actually used the Conceal, broken by x Win. x Win though still gets Ooh. final slash. It's a pull right back, swept. Get pulled back again by Wudio. Despite the help from his team, he still goes down. Still the tanks up everything. The Brazil Sprite didn't get to go off. But Smooth shows up with the last of Sandy and Chibi, terrified, will be burned to a crisp. At least KG gets something in return, but Sapat, he might not let this go. Smooth trying to keep his distance away from this Makito. Deto there to support him. KG retreats. Ooh, these players are bloodthirsty right now. They're all just very eager to find any opportunity, any advantage they can get. With the exception of Nets, who is just finding these opportunities to get free structures on the side of King Empire Esports. I really want to see the individual network values right now because this Natan is becoming a problem very quickly. Yeah, Natan is scaling and scaling fast, outraging the carry and just overall number of auto attacks. Carry, however, she can be pretty scary too if she catches you off guard. The question is, how do you close in on the space, right? I think that's the big question. As much as Chibi is able to kind of anchor down his team, I, I think the homeboys failed to attain space without the help of Zorn specifically. 
KG, they definitely have priority on this turtle. X Win goes in, GB will gobble him up, and again, Sosujin takes the turtle for his team. The Netherrealm all gets broken. GB in the front line, but it's actually Net finding a killing spree, taking that smooth to make that happen as GB gets traded back. The KG, they get the objective, they get one extra kill. Thorn with the conceal once more broken, terrifies Sosujin in front of him. They're gonna lock him in place and give Sasa the kill. Ooh, this is quite something. King Empire Esports feeling a lot more comfortable now. x especially on this Guinevere, now that he's actually able to make setups, able to make catches, is giving King Empire so many opportunities to play with here. And Homeboy's unfortunately not quite being able to match the tempo. Even with the Nether Realm, the damage coming out of Deto and Spoo may be a bit too much. I think it is too much for now. Uh... We'll have to wait. We'll have to wait a little bit. Currently, both teams not making much in terms of gold differential. Both at 24k. Let's look at the damage dealt, right? Because Smooth is sitting right on top when it comes down to damage dealt ranking. Second is Deto, then finally Udil, and then Chibi. When we look at the itemization, however, that's where it's starting to get interesting. Third item almost complete. The Demon Hunter sword coming in from this carry almost done for. First item, glowing wand coming in from Vixana. I also noticed Zorn built Fury Hammer on the Rome Arlet, so he's actually going for some degree of damage as well. This could be affecting his survivability in the long run. The glowing one of Vexana definitely helps with withering down the Arlet and the Barat, especially with the help of the Eternal Guardian. But Ness is closing in on that Holy Crystal third item, and that's where his power level is only going to spike upwards. The first Lord is going to spawn on the bottom side, and the homeboys have already positioned themselves to receive a hit. Mm, what's the play right now? So far, both teams have kind of just been butting heads at one another. And both Nets and Sasa now are actually fond enough that they are genuine threats if they're not able to be found within these team fights. Unfortunately, Zorn and GV starting to have difficulty actually making these catches now that Smooth and X-Win are comfortable enough to form the front line for King Empire. Oh. Let's see whether the formation is still going to be able to hold here, right? Udil has been making it particularly difficult for King Empire to really capitalize. So now, here comes the Lord Dance, right? Sumpat on the split push. And I'm not sure if that's a good idea, though. Smooth just steps a bit too far forward. x Queen also attempts to go for a catch, couldn't find it. They throw out the, Nito, the Eternal Guardian, and that's crucial ability is gone from KGE. Homeboys now will step forward to take the space. Especially with Zorn, which is going to try and disrupt this as much as possible. King Empire needs to take the Lord. Udio gets the two-man pull. The Lord drops low. It's Sustujin to get the secure for KGE. Deto first to go down. Arlen gets the swipe, swipe. But it's going to be Sasa, gone on by Udio. Needs to get away. At least they find a trade. And Smooth also wants more Sustujin. Ends up dropping the Zorn Sepat. Happy tanking that. So Homeboys finds more kills, but lose the Lord. They lose a lot, but I think this is still very worth it for the homeboys overall since they've finally been able to stop the advent of Sasa here. The carry taking just a little bit too much damage. Gotta give props to Sister Jin. Being able to beat out TV and red retiving is always impressive. But the homeboys now starting to regain that confidence here. Mm. I mean, they're doing more than just that, right? They're taking over the lead back onto their side. I think, especially for KGE, Looking, looking to hold their battle lines is going to get even harder, right? Because Zorn has been finding some great engagers, whether separating the front line from the back line or the opposite way around, making them one big giant group. I think that at least with the help from Udil, it gives him a certain level of, uh, I wouldn't even say, I would the word is it's stress, more so the freedom to do so. Yep. Yeah. I feel like something that King Empire may be doing this wrong is the fact that they do seem a little bit desperate to be the ones to make the first move. X-Win oftentimes being the one to jump on in and try and make a catch. But if he misses, it means that he doesn't have the ability to really get that knockup for a while. So I think they do need to take a slight step back here. I mean, let's talk about the state of the map, despite everything that's happened. The fact that KG got the first floor, there isn't much uh, a, a big goal lead for both teams, but the map tells a different story. Homeboys have taken all tier ones and the bottom tier two, whereas for KG, they only cracked the top tier one because Sasa got an early lane swap. Up to today, up to right now at least, they haven't been able to really push past the middle point of the map. No Man's Land is being respected from both sides, and I can definitely understand why. It, it just takes one big mistake for this, team, this game to completely snowball out of control, right? 12 minutes in, 
10 to 9, it's as close as it could possibly get. And now everybody is starting to like clump as close as they possibly can. The fact that the prediction still says that KG has a 61% chance of winning. Ooh, this is really a test. Whether KG can hold it together. Map definitely not in their favor, but com compared to game one in contrast, at least they can walk up and get these resources, start feeding it to Sasa. Yep, I agree. I think right now, which team makes the first move is going to have an interesting choice to make here because both sides have reached the point where they have a pretty good amount of sustainability within team fights itself. And again, a lot of focus is going to need to be given over to Nets and Sasa. These are the primary damage dealers for their respective sides. It's logically easier on paper for King Empire to maybe find Nets since they do have X Win and Smooth. But so far, the positioning of them has been a lot more aggressive. Yeah, and Smooth need, just got the Radiant Armor, but still needs to be aware that you can't just walk up and boost a Flicker or oh. that Dragon Armor. That's win. An attempted catch, but look at the health. Thanks to Ness Entropy. Torndo pulled back his Sasa to look for him. That's Immortality gone live number one. The follow up with the Eternal Guardian. Sasa being the target for Subbot. KG looking for the retreat, but Zorin's the first one to go down. And Smooth tries to burn him off with the last Sandy. Susujin not looking too good. And Praise of Grab to regain some health with that healing, but gets pulled back. And the jungler for KGE falls. Ooh, the, the Subbakito from the back really messing with the formation for King Empire. Smooth and Susujin did an excellent job of holding out for so long, but because the rest of their team was no longer able to back them up, Susujin was just being juggled around. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's starting to become very, very difficult for anybody from the side of KGE to solo, uh, to solo zone the rest of your opponents there. Your safest option is Smooth, but even as you can see now, Smooth, his overall impact is dependent on his anchors from the side of King Empire. Blade of Despair completed for Subbat on this Bakito. Sasa is not safe back there. And even Winter Trunkian on both Nets and Chibi means that King Empire needs to waste even more tools to potentially get the engagement they're looking for. Homeboys are looking to get as many towers as they can with this Luminous Lord. I, I mean... KG, they have these big combos, but even that now becomes a problem. Sasa was ready to receive that, but TB takes the other way, so no carry out for just a little bit. They have to defend against this Lord first. Homeboys, they're not shy to really push the envelope. This Lord shouldn't be able to take the inhibitor, but with Nets that yep, it's more than enough. That was still a lot of damage, though. Nets has to be careful, but he's still fine. Trading for the inhibitor in that situation is going to be very good for the homeboys. Slowly but surely, they're going to reach that 4k net worth lead uh, difference. King O. Oh. oh, looking to look at Udo. to get all the combos. And Udo, he's just going to purify out of that. X-Win loses the immortality, and subsequently his life Susujin also takes the full brunt of surplus punches. Homeboys in front of KG's base finds two kills. Ooh, this may be too much. That's a Paquito being a massive issue. Nets being a massive issue. X-Win no longer in a position where he can actually survive, even if he's able to get a catch here. And with two men down for another 20 seconds, homeboys are in position to potentially end this. Winter Trunction, Nets is safe, and TV takes the damage from Sasa, but Netherrealm keeps them alive. Smooth needs to flicker away. Subbot tries to go for Deto, ends up losing his life to Sasa, but Sasa gets swiped back by Zone, flickers to safety. KGE stays in this game, but loses all inhibitors. Oh, how do you bounce back from this? You get so close, and then yet, Homeboys continues to keep on taking. And that's why Battle Spells is such a valuable resource in this game. And uh, this 4.5k lead may seem like a lot, but they've really, really worked hard to get to 51,000 overall to make sure that a majority of their carries at this point now have full items. AR prediction, winning prediction, going to be leaning more towards Homeboys, 78 to 22. Of the AI finally realizing that the hedging its bets on King Empire Esports now look not looking very promising overall. With only the crystal standing between homeboys and a clean sweep. Oh, even Blood Wings completed from Nets. That is a full build Natan there. What do they do? Next Lord in 20. All waves are going to be pushed towards KG, uh, KGE. The KG and SRG are the only two teams that have been undefeated in terms of series. KGE themselves dropped two games, but never a series. This could be the first. And to be broken by homeboys, one of the Kage teams. What a poetic moment. How does KG handle this? I can't even contest. I think they have to force something. 
think it's a similar situation to the previous game. x uh, needs to get a god catch, basically, on like two or three members, and anything barring that is not going to be enough unless homeboys make a big mistake. They're going to go for it. Chibi is targeting. Gets the gobble up first, then around. He was very early on. Smooth will just throw his body to the back. Chibi needs to go, but Winter Trunction again! Coming in clutch, and his homeboys that finds the juggler of KGE for dead, and only Sussurgeon to watch as the King Empire domain crumbles in front of his face. And in the wake of the Flame Boys, under the echoes of their tears, homeboys reawaken. They will not be denied. Empire expansion beat them. Homeboys breaks their streak and takes them down to O. The defending champions make their mark once again in a true return to form. In a 2-0 clean sweep, Homeboys overthrows the new king. 2-0, GG, well played to the Homeboys. Fans and in the audience going wild out here. But well played, well deserved. Something really switched on in all of the players here coming in from the side of the Homeboys. In the end of it, despite all the taunting, still a handshake for a gentleman's agreement. Well, the wish, I wish this would have lasted longer, but Homeboy is just on a different level. Maybe the break really was what they needed, so Homeboy is coming up clean, a fresh reset for the regular season. Let's turn it over to Rose on the stage to talk to Homeboys about this triumphant win over KGE. Ini adalah defending champions anda. Sebelum I start interview, I nak dengar suara the Flame Boys. Kita ada full house hari ini. Guys, bagi tepukan kepada Home Boys. Wow, ini adalah matchup yang sangat sangat intense. You boleh nampak how hype the players was. Dua berbalas kosong, tiga mata penuh untuk homeboys. Dorang jatuhkan The Empire yang tengah duduk dekat nombor dua regular season kali ini. So, Chibi, yeah. tadi sebelum game habis, you dah tengah jerit. Tengah buat apa sebenarnya tadi? Tak ada apa-apa pun sebab anime AI je. Sabar, Chibi, sabar. Sebab, sebab apa tau? Sebab apa? Sebab kita tak kenal tim siapa enemy tu. Tak kenal? Tak kenal. Sabar. 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 Sebab senang sangat. Oh. <laughs> Okey, kita pass pula kat Zon. Game pertama kita dapat saksikan sekali lagi. Chip Zon. Now, if I'm not mistaken, minggu kedua ke minggu satu tu? Minggu kedua kan? Minggu. You pernah main Chip dan you cakap, Ben lah Chip. Betul. Betul. Tadi you dapat, apa yang you tengah rasa masa dapat chip tu? You tengah fikir auto wing ke apa? Saya rasa orang still tak takut lagi dengan chip saya. Jadi orang still underestimate chip saya kot. Guys, I rasa semua orang lupa. Zon ni lah finals MVP musim lepas. Betul tak? Jangan tengok dendah. Come on guys. Okay, so. Sekejap. Korang rasa siapa MVP? Lagi kuat, lagi kuat. Alright guys. So, MVP perlawanan ini adalah in 3, 2, 1. Jeng, 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 jeng. GB! GB, ni first match homeboys menang tiga mata penuh season ni. Ramai orang cakap, Homeboys belum panas lagi minggu pertama, minggu kedua. You guys agak rocky, you guys menang 2-1. Sekarang, adakah entire Homeboys dah online? Dia yeah, sebab macam mana ya? Sebab okay. key empire yang kita kena all out. Sebab banyak beri sangat bos-bosnya. Wow, main boss eh? Main boss? Banyak buat, banyak buat konten. Oh, banyak buat konten. Fokus pada tim lah. Macam mana banyak sangat buat konten. Wow. Okeylah, kita... Si Cibi ni agak pedas hari ini. Tapi korang rasa siapa lagi pedas? Apa kata kita pas dekat Udin? Udin, 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 Udin. Kage. Kasih faham tak si Din? Kasih Come faham tak si? Kalau gua kasih faham tak si? Tak, Udin. Udin, saya nak tahu. 
Tahu, I nak tanya satu sahaja. You sudah kalahkan your ex teammate Sasa. Satu kage dekat MPL Malaysia. Apa yang you nak cakap dekat dia? Tak payah pedas pun tak apa. Okay, jangan drop mic eh. Aduh. Kita habis mic nanti. Tak, uh, tak kuat hati dong. Tak kuat hati? Ya, tak kuat hati. Kenapa? Sebab dia ex teammate ku kan. Yes. Terus dia bilang, uh, kami harus prepare kan buat lawan dia. Tapi 2-0 ni macam mana dong? Easy banget. Ya. Yeah. Ni ke orang kata tak nak pegang mic tu? Ish. Okay. Udil, pas kat uh, Daddy, Daddy cakap sekali je dia nak cakap. Sekali je. Okey, silakan soalan. Okey, Daddy. Tadi Cibi tak puas hati dengan owner dorang. Sebagai owner, apa yang jadi actually? Okey, um, dia sebenarnya macam ini. Saya buat satu video. Saya dengan Fatah. Tapi Yoni buat 10 video untuk saya. Patut simpan sikit untuk tim-tim lain. Kesian tim-tim lain. Okey, okay, apa pun tak apa. Jangan risau. Saya nak ucap terima kasih kepada Flame Boys. I love you, Flame Boys. Kepada kawan-kawan saya yang dah tukar baju. I love you. Don't worry. Kita orang tetap banyak bajunya. Kepada semua yang datang. Korang memang terbaik. Walaupun korang dekat side KGE ataupun side Homeboys, korang memang the best. Saya nampak banyak yang pakai baju homeboys. Mungkin KGE belum keluar baju, tak apa. Kepada owner-owner, eh, tolong buat baju cepat sikit. Kita orang ni terlampau banyak sangat baju. Ah. Kesian yang datang tak pakai baju KGE. Alright, terima kasih MPL. I love you. Wow! Wow! Amazing match! Guys, kejap! Eh, dengar, dengar. Since sekarang raya, kita ni tengah rasa generous. So, FM kita tengah pegang duit raya untuk Flame Boys. So you guys ambil duit raya, pilih orang yang tengah pakai baju Melayu, baju raya dan bagi. Wow. Huh. Ini baru orang kata seru Saturday. Memanglah sangat-sangat seru perlawanan hari ini. Tapi guys, untuk semua orang yang tengah tengok dekat rumah, jangan risau esok ada lagi game yang sangat-sangat seru. So Sebelum kita mulakan game ketiga kita, mari kita pass back to the casters untuk dorang dissect apa yang jadi dalam game 2 kosong ini. So, casters, silakan. Homeboys really competing to see if they can be the team with the most clips on social media after every single victory. But who can really even blame him? Because it is true, this was a one-sided domineering from the homeboys. I'm just saying the most Chinese way possible, we nailed off. <laughs> We've done everything. I mean, what else, what else is there to do? We're not even like halfway through the group stage and and homeboys pulls, pulls this out. Yeah, I mean, you, we heard it in the post-game interview. We got to go all out against KGE, and I think that we definitely got to see a side of homeboys we haven't seen in a while in the early stages of the regular season. Hopefully, they're able to keep up the overall momentum and pressure. I think they played game two decently well. Game number one definitely had its differences, but at least game number two, where it felt like the draft was a little bit more even at the very least, pretty good. It's, despite it being an even draft, they made it look unbalanced, right? Just because of yep. the movements. And I would say, KG, that there are certain moments that it felt a bit... They're a bit disconnected, right? Some movements were really not followed up. The x wing constantly checking bushes. So Sujin taking unnecessary, you know, engages. Something that KG needs to brush up moving forward. But at least they were able to put up a fight against homeboys until when it, when all the chips are down. That's where homeboys yep. really strikes. I think we can see from this that King Empire definitely does depend a little bit on being able to control the flow of the game until they reach a point where they're comfortable fighting together. And usually they're able to achieve that by putting on pressure early with X-Win invading jungles and securing EXP lane with Smooth. Unfortunately, because homeboys were playing on such a high tempo, they weren't quite able to recreate those sort of uh, solutions here. And I do want to give again a shout out to TV. He got MVP in game one because he farmed like crazy, got so many kills. In game two, his timing on the Detona's welcome every single time X Win jumped in is insane. Have you seen the combo? Thorn just feeds him uh, KG target sometimes, yep. right? Final Slash. There you go. We eat need him up. We literally need a... swipes him into his mouth. Here, here you go. We need an Arlet skin where the spear is a spoon. 
Uh, <laughs> it's a pairing skin with Barats. Yeah. yeah. Barat has, has the... Uh, has a, a, a bib and a, a diaper. Bib, yes. And, and <laughs> Baby dinosaur. <laughs> so when Barat's not going to have sex, he's going to have the pacifier. Ah. Uh, Billion dollar ideas here at MPL MY's table. I'm telling you, the way that they're playing right now, the homeboys feel pretty unstoppable. There's definitely moments, uh, definitely moments that could have been a little bit better, but what can you expect? It's a game where there are forced mistakes between the two. And I think homeboys played it overall slightly better. However, KGE feel very, feel very tactical, for a lack of better words. They feel very militaristic, right? Every single time they go, they do the exact same approach. They have Deto in a position whereby I wouldn't have expected him to be punishing some of these angles, but I think homeboys like Subbot takes full advantage of it, right? It's such a split second decision of I could wait to get Sasa or I can get Deto right now. It is definitely true to KG's playstyle, right? That's how they've been doing it uh, since the start of the regular season. Again, you see sometimes the husk of SMG in KG's playbook, mm -hmm. but it can only last so long if if it's a, if there is some remnants of that. Homeboys know exactly how to do it. That homeboys have done it multiple times last season, and that's how they won the trophy. I think even for KG, even for homeboys, and how Ness plays, for example, in this game number two, doesn't stay in a fight a second longer than he should. Shows up, gets a kill, and he already took, takes a turret in the, in the side lanes. And just like, how is this Natan 3 and ON has taken two turrets? Yeah, I mean, I mean, when we look at the damage to turret, 17,000, he's doing more than that. He's taking out turret after turret after turret. And I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what exactly the comms must sound like. I do like this push and pull, uh, this push and pull of aggression coming out from the side of the homeboys at the very least, right? Where it's like, I only need you for this period of time. You get the kill, you quickly start applying pressure on the rest of the map. That's totally okay. The rest of us will figure it out. I mean, homeboys, they're like the matador, right? They're holding the red cloth and they're like, ah, KG, you want to come? Yeah. Here's the brick wall. It honestly does feel that way. When you're looking at it overall, the macro from Homeboys was really clean. Like you mentioned, Nets being able to find opportunities every single time to get towers. Chibi farming the highest GPM as a jungler in game number one. Subbot finding the angles to go for the backline and Zorn getting some really nice final slashes that he felt comfortable enough to go for a Fury Hammer as a Rome Arlet. Homeboys, it looks like they're back here. <laughs> Even in the in the fight where KG had the best chance of winning, it only takes one Supa to really ruin it all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey man, that's why damage EXP laners are back in, baby. It feels so good not having to always go for dominant. I know, I right? Go for C Halber. That feels so good. You not seen my um the BOD Terizla? <laughs> <laughs> uh, How far are we towing this line here? <laughs> How far are we willing to go? He just go? tied the blade of despair to his hammer. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start you know, getting paid in royalty at this point. <laughs> million, ide million dollar ideas, Monton. Listen up. <laughs> Here's our list. But overall, I think there's nothing else that we can really say about this, right? I definitely think that KGE, they got to work on some of their connections between some of the other players. I, I think that as much as Sasa is the in-game leader, and yes, they are playing around him, Rich Guy to carry, going over the net, Sandbag going over to Chibi, Best Wingman going over to Udil. I think there needs to be connections across the board. Maybe just uh, act well. I would have, I would have imagined, I would imagine that at the very, at the very least, that the Romer and as well as mid lane are able, are capable of working together, right? But let's, for a moment, smooth. Why? I, I hate the fact that he doesn't ever call for resources. Yes, you're supposed to smother my lane, but a single kill basically puts up out of the picture. And also, they are, especially during objective contests. You see, mm -hmm. smooth. He's really trying his best to be the guy that keeps homeboys away. But you can't just walk up and end up losing a Firaga armor and then maybe a flicker in the process. That's not really how it should be, right? You, you have to be able to fill up that uh, the heat meter, get your Firaga armor health back. It has to be this push and pull, not just losing that passive in the blink of an eye. And that's something that I think Smooth maybe needs to actively call for help, have someone to back him up, maybe a Deto stand behind him. Uh, I, I just don't think he was playing. Um, number one, he probably wasn't playing his best. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It definitely feels he was a little underwhelming this time around. Game one, not necessarily his fault. I do think it was his fault in the very first turtle. But other than that, not really. Second game here, definitely uh, a little ballsy to try and get, uh, get something back, right? It's always the retaliation mentality of, oh, I've lost a the member. Therefore, I must be able to trade back against my opponent. If not, it's just not worth our time. 
I feel like this has been a bit of a problem for King Empire Esports, where it does feel like they're very desperate to try and trade something back and try to prolong fights when it really isn't that necessary. And the way that they approach team fights as well, like you mentioned earlier, feels kind of militaristic. It does feel like because the goal is to protect Sasa and give space to Deto, Smooth, Sutsujin, X Win are just constantly looking to stand in front and eat damage, even when they're no longer in a position where they can do so safely. And the moment that uh, the Paquito comes in, messes something up with the formation, King Empire just doesn't know what to do. I think you can all even see signs of KG cracking under the pressure, right? Sasa overextending, it, and homeboys, they love it. They get you to overextend, and then you run into a brick wall. Understandings, with that, KG finally gets delivered their first series loss, an 0-2, in fact, and homeboys bump themselves up to third. Ah, uh, gotta tarnish people's rip. Uh, no, sorry, tarnish people's overall standings, right? You can't have the perfect score, and the only one left is SRG, and somebody, somebody's gonna try and do it. Well, the only team that SRG, I think the high profile ones, at least the highest profile one, is against KG. That's week five. So we still have a long way to go. They've already beaten homeboys. They've done over, done with Toda, they've done with Team Hawk. Mm -hmm. They've RSG all... yesterday. Yep. <laughs> they've actually beaten most of the teams that are occupying the top half of the charts here. So Red Giants are very much on track to hey. potentially clean sweep the entire season. But of course, anything can happen, so let's not hedge our bets too soon. When was the last time that happened? Uh, have you ever had that? We have. Where, where a team has won the entire like the, regular yeah. season. Yeah, we Todak, have. right? Uh, it was Todak. Uh, we also had... Wait, I'm thinking whether or not RSG, RSG had the perfect right? run. Was it the perfect they, run or was it at the very end it didn't go well? I think they lost one match at some point. I just can't remember exactly. It'll come to me in a bit. It'll come to me in a little bit here. It'll come to me in a little bit. But it looks like something's going on up on the stage. It looks like there is going to be some guys give it. Good, uh, get, Raya, do it. Ra do it, Raya. Give oh, it. Oh, is that so? I'm guessing. I'm seeing diamond shape. Can things. we go up on stage right now? I don't think we're allowed. To. I do see. I mean, it's a uh, diamond Raya. Diamond Raya. Well, Ooh. this is exclusive for anybody who's coming over to the MPL MY live here at MBSJ. Please come on over, join in on the fun, and be a part of this incredibly large crowd. I mean, you're missing out on activities, performances, great crowds, great games, great personalities, food trucks, drinks, coffee, whatever you want. Is that you can even participate in the. Uh, What's the recent viral TikTok dance, the Alama for Hari Raya? Uh, you can, ah, you can yes. perform there. The, we have a red buzz at the ticketing area. You you punch it, it plays the song, Disco Ball starts rolling, oh, and I you would, can record the I best TikTok ever. I didn't know that. No, you didn't it's know a, that? I didn't know that. It's a whole ensemble. Oh my god. Now, now we know who's recording the next TikTok dance on this <laughs> Oh no! Hey. But it is a good time here. We saw how full the stadium was a moment ago. And it was a fun time, like literally before this match, they did the Mexican wave as well, where everyone went hands up across the stadium. That was fun. If you guys want to be part of all that, MBSJ Stadium here in Serdang Jaya, it is free entry as well. So don't feel pressured, don't feel worried. If you're nearby, just drop on by. We've got so much to share with you. Plenty of do, plenty to do, plenty to see. And now I'm curious about the final match of today. Day. Boys and girls, coming up next, our final two teams to end off this Saturday. It's going to be Team Hawk up against the Niners. Have they come back? Have they recovered? Team Hawk, on the other hand, are they the one? Hmm, a good question. Team Hawk has been slowly improving. They're definitely looking a lot better now than they were last season. Whereas Niners seems to be the direct opposite. I mean, my, he my heart is heavy, right? I I've cut, like, this is Niners' fifth series. I've done three of Niners' series, and first one was against KG. That one was promising. And then the bounty happened. Oh. Yesterday, Barracuda happened. Yeah. Right now, uh, I don't know. I, I, I need to see something from Niners. Yeah, they, they, you know, I'm at the bottom. I'm, I'm just like them. I'm at the bottom already. We need a proof of concept at this point. We need a proof of concept with this particular roster. They got to get over the issues that they're currently having. And so far, it's just the disconnect, right? They are not making decisions as a full unit. And yes, sometimes that does mean that one of their players has to sacrifice to make that happen. And, and you can, and it not just reflects in the gameplay or the commentary or what people can see, right? It reflects on the players. A lot of times you look at the post-game player camps, Players are devastated on the side of Niners, it, and it's, it's not a good sight if you are a Niners fan or even the, the players, in fact. So, 
I don't know what adjustments they can make. It feels like I'm seeing some remnants of what Red Esports felt like last Ooh. season. But this feels a lot heavier. Yeah, it, it does. Definitely is not a good look here for Niners, especially considering that they were gaining quite a good amount of fans and supporters because last season, even though the results weren't the best, they put up a really strong performance for a newer lineup in the MPL. So seeing them revamp their lineup with brand new talent coming into the season as some a team that had a lot of promise in most people's eyes and just dropping off the face of the planet like this, we don't want to see that. We are putting a lot of hopes that the Niners can show why they are here. Well, this is the most important series for them, right? If they lose this, regardless of 1-2 or 0-2, they're going to have a 0-5 record on the leaderboard. And mm. if, you, if they want to go playoffs, this is a must win. From this point onwards, in fact. Yep. From this point onwards, if they get a 2-0, that's always going to be ideal. But even a 2-1 will make do. And I think even for the side of Team Hawk, right? They want to get higher up in the standings. They're still in a good development stage. Overall, I feel like they have the most potential to be the one team that really just comes out of nowhere during the playoffs. I agree with you. They're definitely looking to be in a bit of a dark horse position right now. And every single match that they've played, it does feel like they're figuring out something new, getting a little bit better each time. So they're definitely going to be coming in as the favorites here, considering Niners, Niners performance. But that will remain to be seen. We're going to go on a short break after this. We'll leave you guys with a mic check for this very exciting match. And when we come back, it's the last match of Saru Saturdays. We'll see you then. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I say, I'm going to be so much. 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 I'm going to be so much.
berbagai kejayaan dapat dikecapi Sejarah baharu telah tercipta Namun, setakat itu sahajakah kemampuan kita Setiap kali ke pentas dunia, pasti kecewa Sampai bila kita nak kalah Ditundukkan serendah-rendahnya Sampai bila kita nak dihina Tiap musim harapan peminat gugur Sampai bila nak kalah Sampai bila nak kecewa Setiap rakyat pasti akan melaungkan semangat Ingin mempertahankan rumah mereka Jika patah sayap Raja Wali Bertongkat jua kita kemari Tahun ini pastinya kemenangan semakin dicita Demi menjulang nama Malaysia di pesada dunia Di mana bumi dipijak Disitulah langit dijunjung Stadium MBSJ Serdang Jaya secara rasminya Menjadi rumah MPLMY pada tahun ini Seterusnya, melangkah ke arena besar di Timur Tengah, di Riyadh Arab Saudi. Juara kita bangkit menghadapi cabaran, bersedia mencipta sejarah. Utara, Timur, Barat dan Selatan, kita semua MPL MY playoff musim ke-14 akan berhijrah ke Johor, mendekatkan lagi silaturahim MPL MY bersama. Hasrat kita semua bersatu dan bangkit dengan satu tujuan yang sama. Naikkan martabat negara, kejari juara dunia, kemuncaknya di M6. Pastikan kemenangan dan kebanggaan dikecap di rumah kita. Selamat datang ke MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 Di mana yang terbaik akan berentap dalam pertempuran sengit dan penuh strategi Seperti pada musim yang lepas, 10 pasukan profesional akan bersaing selama 6 minggu Dalam arena yang penuh aksi di regular season Namun, bermula pada musim ini, cuma 6 pasukan akan layak ke playoff Dan pasukan di tempat ke-7 dan ke-8 Hanya dapat stay untuk musim seterusnya. Tapi sayang sekali, tiada slot ke play-off buat mereka pada musim ini. Bagi pasukan di tempat ke-10, slot musim ke-14 mereka akan diganti oleh tempat pertama MAL Conference Group. Mereka akan di-reset dan harus merebut kembali peluang melalui MAL musim kedua. Dan apa itu MAL? Mobile Legends Bang Bang Academy League adalah Liga Amatur di mana terlahirnya bintang-bintang baharu. 15 pasukan akan bersaing untuk meraih kejuaraan dan dua pasukan MBL Conference Group teratas akan berpeluang merebut slot ke MPL Malaysia musim seterusnya. Okey, kembali ke MPL. Pasukan MPL Malaysia tempat ke-9 akan berentap dengan pasukan tempat kedua dari MAL Conference Group dalam pusingan MPL Malaysia Challenger Stage bersama format Best of Five semasa Grand Final MAL musim yang pertama di mana pemenang akan menentukan slot terakhir MPL Malaysia musim ke-14. Enam pasukan yang layak ke playoff akan berentap untuk meneruskan jalan ke Grand Final MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 dan merebut peluang untuk ke MNC 2024. Jadi, bersiap sedia. Persiapkan strategi anda. Bersedia untuk aksi profesional di pentas MPL Malaysia musim ke-13. Kena hold Next point, makin lama semakin sakit Dia dapat orang yang salah, dia dapat support Tuntut ini yang bakal ditumpahkan terlebih dahulu Sonda buka pintu ajaib Pemain-pemain game baik dalam bahaya Double kill to none Oh boy Merata IB Tapi satu gerakan dari Tuan Suwakam yang membalas kembali serangan tersebut Dia telah Suwakam tersebut menjadi satu benda oh. tidak terbesar Hingga bahaya bakal diratakan
Sikat Semua akan hilang Terus disikat Why baru akan menjadi jenata Homeboy saya akan terus marah Homeboy saya akan Berminat untuk mengetahui info lanjut mengenai prestasi pemain dan jadi sebahagian daripada MPM Malaysia, layari laman rasmi Liga Isukan No. 1 Malaysia untuk dapatkan maklumat terkini dan lengkap. Layari laman rasmi MPM Malaysia sekarang. Ayo kita bersama menaikkan mutu MLBB di Malaysia. Jangan terlepas kemas kini Liga Academy Rasmi MLBB Malaysia, MAL Malaysia. Ikuti semua platform rasmi kami. Ayo sokong MAL Malaysia musim pertama. Ikuti semua platform rasmi. Semua peminat dan penyokong dijemput ke arena MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 di Serdang. Anda berpeluang berjumpa dengan pemain kegemaran anda. Kumpul tanda tangan eksklusif dan sertai kempen Fan of the Season. Interested in knowing more about player performance and be a part of MPL Malaysia? Visit the website of MPL Malaysia's number one esports league for the latest news and league updates. Don't miss out on updates from the official MLBB Malaysia Academy League, MAL Malaysia. Follow all our official platforms. All fans are invited to the MPL Malaysia Season 13 Arena in Serdang. You will get a chance to meet your favorite players, get exclusive autographs, and join the Fan of the Season campaign. As well as the Electo final blow, this is going to be easy cleanup for Tordok as most of the Yeah. 
很大。Melampangkan satu sosok tumbuhan. Tumbuhan untuk melakukan yang terbaik. Tumbuhan untuk menjadi seorang role model. Sorotan itu penting. Ia membuatkan kita percaya. The supporters we witness our fight and our struggles. Memikul harapan untuk mempertahankan kemenangan Menjadi cabaran terbesar untuk mencapai malamat kami Harapan masih terpahat di hati Untuk menjadi juara Meneruskan legasi kami Di bawah cahaya, semuanya menjadi lebih jelas Ada dok, kuda hitam? No, kami adalah Monster Vicious Cahaya impian telah menerangi pentas ini. Kejayaan bukan lagi dongeng. Not just a dream. Ia arti harapan yang sebenar. Mungkin ada yang sangka bahawa harapan ini akan hilang. Tapi bukan kami. Ini harapan kami. Ini semangat kami bersama kami. Sampai satu tujuan. Mencari Sina yang paling terang. Nikmati Jago 5G untuk gaming sepantas kila dengan Hotlink Prepaid 5G. Internet 5G tanpa had. Dengan kelajuan 5G tanpa batas untuk layan gaming tanpa gangguan. Nikmati latency rangkaian 5G terunggul dan gameplay termantap sepanjang malam. Semuanya hanya RM32 sebulan dengan 20% cashback. Dapatkan sekarang. This fairy tale ended with a poison apple and my tale began. Princess in a tower is just a bird in a cage. Confirm lah Nescafe.
Dapat, dapat, dapat. Guys, one B. Red me, bro! Jangan, 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 jangan. Abang, 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 abang. Eh, Roger, Roger, Blinker, Roger, Blinker, Roger, Blinker. Roger, Blinker, Roger, Blinker. Roger, Blinker, Roger, Blinker. Roger, Blinker, Roger, Blinker. Kai, 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 kai. Boleh, 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 boleh. Maju, 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 maju. Party, 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 Stop puri, Farami stop puri. Ya ya ya, let go ya toh. Ya lihat lihat. Gua depan ni, gua depan ni. Ah, tunggu tunggu tunggu. Lo fokus orang aja, gua fokus Arthur. Ya 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 ya, sas 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 sas. Nah dia makan gua, dia makan gua guys. Kena kena, barat barat. Kaiting ya, kaiting ya, kaiting ya. Eh guys guys, eh boleh tak? Guys guys, boleh boleh boleh. Pasai pasai pasai. Pan, AB, kau boleh engage. Tidak aku tidak aku tidak ada tiap. Aku tidak ada tiap, aku tidak ada tiap. Tidak aku tidak aku tidak aku guys. Iro iro iro. Ya tiap aku. Dapat ni dapat ni dapat ni dapat ni dapat ni. Nice, bodoh 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 bodoh. Boleh jam? Kali lo, kali lo, kali lo. Boleh tu guys, boleh tu guys. Maju jo. Maju, 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 maju. Ini, 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 guys. Maju, 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 maju. Eh, sebentar hati guys, sebentar hati. Fokus. Tahu apa? Tahu apa? Batu, batu. Nice, atas, atas. Boleh, boleh. Go, 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 go. Let's pan. Sejarah baharu telah tercipta. Namun, setakat itu sahajakah kemampuan kita? Setiap kali ke pentas dunia, pasti kecewa. Sampai bila kita nak kalah? Ditundukkan serendah-rendahnya. Sampai bila kita nak dihina? Tiap musim harapan peminat gugur. Sampai bila nak kalah? Sampai bila nak kecewa? Yang rakyat pasti akan melaungkan semangat Ingin mempertahankan rumah mereka Jika patah sayap Raja Wali Bertongkat jua kita kemari Tahun ini pastinya kemenangan semakin dicita Demi menjulang nama Malaysia di pesada dunia Di mana bumi dipijak Itulah langit dijunjung. Stadium MBSJ Serdang Jaya secara rasminya menjadi rumah MPLMY pada tahun ini. Seterusnya, melangkah ke arena besar di Timur Tengah, di Riyadh Arab Saudi. Juara kita bangkit menghadapi cabaran bersedia mencipta sejarah. Utara, Timur, Barat dan Selatan. Kita semua MPLMY Playoff musim ke-14 Akan berhijrah ke Johor Mendekatkan lagi Silaturahim MPLMY Bersama Hasrat kita semua bersatu Dan bangkit dengan satu tujuan Yang sama Naikkan martabat negara Kejari juara dunia Kemuncaknya di M6 Pastikan kemenangan dan kebanggaan Dikecap di rumah kita Selamat datang ke MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 Di mana yang terbaik akan berhentap dalam pertempuran sengit dan penuh strategi 
Seperti pada musim yang lepas, 10 pasukan profesional akan bersaing selama 6 minggu dalam arena yang penuh aksi di regular season. Namun, bermula pada musim ini, cuma 6 pasukan akan layak ke play-off dan pasukan di tempat ke-7 dan ke-8 hanya dapat stay untuk musim seterusnya. Tapi sayang sekali, tiada slot ke play-off buat mereka pada musim ini. Bagi pasukan di tempat ke-10, slot musim ke-14 mereka akan diganti oleh tempat pertama MAL Conference Group. Mereka akan di-reset dan harus merebut kembali peluang melalui MAL musim kedua. Dan apa itu MAL? Mobile Legends Bang Bang Academy League adalah liga amatur di mana terlahirnya bintang-bintang baru. 15 pasukan akan bersaing untuk meraih kejuaraan dan dua pasukan MBL Conference Group teratas akan berpeluang merebut slot ke MPL Malaysia musim seterusnya. Okey, kembali ke MPL. Pasukan MPL Malaysia tempat ke-9 akan berentap dengan pasukan tempat kedua dari MAL Conference Group dalam pusingan MPL Malaysia Challenger Stage bersama format Best of Five semasa Grand Final MAL musim yang pertama di mana pemenang akan menentukan slot terakhir MPL Malaysia musim ke-14. Enam pasukan yang layak ke play-off akan berentap untuk meneruskan jalan ke Grand Final MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 dan merebut peluang untuk ke MSC 2024. Jadi, bersiap sedia. Persiapkan strategi anda. Bersedia untuk aksi profesional di pentas MPL Malaysia musim ke-13. Kena home Next point, makin semakin sakit Dia dapat orang yang salah, dia dapat sepat Tuntutin yang bakal ditumpahkan terlebih dahulu So, dia buka pintu acai Pemain-pemain game by darah bayar Double kill to none Oh boy Merata EB, Tapi, satu gerakan dia terus welcome Yang membalas kembali serangan tersebut Dia terus welcome tersebut menjadi satu benda tidak oh. terbesar Hingga Faya bakal diratakan Semua akan hilang, terus disikat Why bawa akan menjadi jenata Oh boy, sangat terus marah Oh boy, sangat Untuk mengetahui info lanjut mengenai prestasi pemain dan jadi sebahagian daripada MPM Malaysia, layari laman rasmi Liga Isukan No. 1 Malaysia untuk dapatkan maklumat terkini dan lengkap. Layari laman rasmi MPM Malaysia sekarang. Ayo kita bersama menaikkan mutu MLBB di Malaysia. Jangan terlepas kemas kini Liga Academy rasmi MLBB Malaysia, MAL Malaysia. Ikuti semua platform rasmi kami. Ayo sokong MAL Malaysia musim pertama. Ikuti semua platform rasmi. Semua peminat dan penyokong dijemput ke arena MPL Malaysia musim ke-13 di Serdang. Anda berpeluang berjumpa dengan pemain kegemaran anda. Kumpul tanda tangan eksklusif dan sertai kempen Fan of the Season.
Interested in knowing more about player performance and be a part of MPL Malaysia? Visit the website of MPL Malaysia's number one esports league for the latest news and league updates. Don't miss out on updates from the official MLBB Malaysia Academy League, MAL Malaysia. Follow all our official platforms. All fans are invited to the MPL Malaysia Season 13 Arena in Serdang. You will get a chance to meet your favorite players, get exclusive autographs, and join the Fan of the Season campaign. I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Pangilaku rock star. Ini kejohana kita semua orang rock star. Kita rock star. Kita buat saja kaya kita. Makin panas apinya sudah membara.
I'm a, I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Panggil aku rock star. Ini kejohanan kita semua orang rock star. The rock star kita buat saja kaya kita. Makin panas apinya sudah membara. Cause they envy me Tiap game aku pasti 
pasti jadi MVP. I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star.
I'm a, I'm a rock star. Yeah. Rock yeah. star? Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Yeah, rock yeah. star. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Panggil aku rock star. Ini kejohana kita semua orang rock star. The rock star kita buat saja kaya kita. Makin panas apinya sudah membara. Jadi MVP, easy. I'm a rock star, baby. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. 
nanti siapa yang juara Ni peluang kita bawa pulang piala This is my game, this is my time Menang semua, everything will be mine Kalau jatuh ku pasti kembali Bangun balik ku tegak berdiri Kuatkanlah tenaga Ganjaran diperoleh Ni kejohanan kita Malaysia memang boleh Rise up to the top Kita buat bersama Semangat kita kuat di bawah satu bendera Ay. I'ma go hard for the win NPL Malaysia Season 13 is powered by Muntal. Enjoy a superior 5G network and lightning-fast gaming experience only with our official mobile internet hotlink. A big shout-out to ROG Phone 8, the official gaming phone for keeping our players at the top of their game. Grind on with Nescafe to keep your gaming spirit going. Thank you to all of our sponsors and partners for your support in NPL Malaysia Season 13. Y'all thought we had enough excitement for one day? Well, too bad. It's Saru Saturdays, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to MVL Malaysia Season 13. You're watching the English broadcast for Week 3, Day 2. My name is Stafa. Joining me today is none other than Gideon as well as Husky. Well, this is a heavy match. We've kind of you know, prepped ourselves for this. Mm -hmm. We prepped everyone on the broadcast. Yeah. Niners against Team Hark. Things are not looking good for Niners, but they got to make some drastic impact changes, I suppose, and I believe they have, but is it enough? I think that's the main question. I mean, it is a code red, to be fair, and I, I think with the current performance of the Niners, anything is better than what they were currently at last couple of weeks ago, so I I, I think might as well start now before they hit the uh, no return button. I feel like you said that very casually. It's like, it's a code red, to be sure. You know? like, I mean, it's not like they played five total games overall. It's getting close, but it hasn't reached that point just yet. So it's hopefully... Yeah, but they're getting there. I feel like it is definitely quite a dire situation there. They're going to need some energy. They're going to need to recharge themselves with some superior taste and quality Arabica beans by grinding on with Nescafe, which is all right here. Nescafe cans want to inspire you to keep your gaming spirit going, and I hope that it'll be exactly what our players need to come out on top in the land of dawn. Speaking of which, where are the Nescafe cans on the table? I, I feel like I know, right? after They're I cracked gone. one open last season, they removed it. So. Yep. It's sorry, gone. man. It's gone I'm forever. sorry. It's <laughs> not my intention. I just, <laughs> just wanted to give Nescafe a bit more shout out, you know? Hey, hey, Understandable. Hey. It's got to be it's under, It's under. got to be kept under boundaries here, right? Our FM already told us, it, don't, don't crack it open, and yet we did. So, yeah, can't be breaking the rules all the time. Speaking of breaking the rules, actually, Team Hawk. When I'm talking about them potentially being the one dark horse that's going to come out of playoffs hot as ever, they seem to always be able to, uh, 
I wouldn't even say steal away a tactic, but learn something from the game, right? As, as good as I can put it, and no, I don't think there's any better words that kind of explain the situation that they're in, because for time to time and game to game that we've seen, it's not only constant improvement, but also like major adjustments mid-game. It's not like a, oh, next game, and then we adjust. It's halfway through the game. Okay, new game plan. Yeah, very malleable, right? Very flexible and versatile in-game. In fact, I think this new Team Hug, this new face of Team Hug, it seems like they have evolved the team itself has a very rich history. Right? First debut in the NPL, wins the whole thing, gets relegated the next season, yep. comes back and almost didn't make it this season. And here they are, about to be, like Gideon said, the one. Yeah, I think a lot of this comes from the drive behind Team Hack as a whole, because I feel like their player lineup is made up of individuals who have all shown a lot of potential in the past, but have never really been utilized or given the opportunity to truly snatch that glory for themselves. We know that Iris, Noir, Lexia, all experienced NPL players with a lot of potential, but never really quite reaching the top. So that drive is there, and now that they have uh, Janus, they have Saket, I feel like their coordination has been really clean since week one. So it's just that passion, that drive, that need for first place that pushes them to like be flexible, be malleable, like you guys say. I think once you understand, or at least I, a lot of us have seen the mini backstory between uh, Iris and Lacey, right now it makes even more sense why uh, this team hug came to be this way. Leisha given a second chance and it was, of all people, Iris who got him into Team Hawk and now Leisha as the shot caller is actually leading his team in a very good direction. Janus, white hero pool, Saken also has a lot to prove. One of the most explosive players at one point in MPL ID. Now here in a new region trying to reignite that might again. Yeah, trying to get back to that to that or, or former glory or maybe even a new peak this time round, assuming that they make it all the way. It's going to be tough though, because against JP Niners, it feels like they've got like a landslide worth of advantages over them because very different situations. One is progressively learning while the other is trying to figure out what the foundation is starting to look like. feels like the floor beneath them is about to crack. Yeah, speaking of uh, the Niners, right, they actually, the MA Academy team, the JP Niners, they plucked Zay from that academy team and put it in the main Niners roster, right? So mm. yesterday we saw him in that Roam role. Definitely felt, felt like he had a lot more to show, but the team just was not coming together. So his hands are tight. I wonder how it's going to be yep. today because he's still going to be slotted in. But I heard there's some adjustment for Niners. We're going to talk about that in yeah. a little bit. I think for, Nine, uh, for Zay himself, he's put in a pretty difficult spot. He's playing with veterans. Some of them have been on the world stage. He's a fresh face mm -hmm. and According to what we saw yesterday, he was he was uh, labeled as the IGL, so I'm not sure how true yeah. that is. What? It's, yeah, he was actually. He I was. remember seeing that yesterday that he was labeled as the IGL. So that's rough. Like being the one to call the shots when you are a new face in the team, just plucked out of MAL, as you mentioned. Like it's such a huge pressure on your shoulders to have to deal with, especially on a team that already wasn't performing the best. And I think he is also the first player to get transferred in from MAL this season, right? So there's even more eyes on him to see whether or not this new system we've adopted actually works. Well, I don't know. I feel like when it comes down to bringing it, switching in players from your, uh, well, MDL team or MAL team, kind of depending on where you, what region you're from, most of the time, there are some form of results, whether it be winning or at least identifying what the problem is amongst your team. But I think for now, especially for the landscape of MPL Malaysia, every time we've seen it, well, not only just imports, but new players being attained during the transfer week, it feels like a band-aid over the problem. And sometimes we do get rare gems. Yeah, so speaking of band-aid, they even brought Max back, right? And put mm -hmm. Max in the jungle as opposed to what we saw from Secret last season where he had to play mid. And even then, it felt like they were not functioning as a hive mind. Like Max is off doing his own thing, Zay is just trying to keep up and everything feels so disjointed. So is that ba Bandit even stopping the bleeding is the problem for Niners? Yeah, it's it, it's a messy situation all around. No one wants to be playing under these conditions. So there's gonna be a lot of kind of introspection between the players be among themselves to make sure that there can be some kind of communication, some kind of compromise, because that is what is going to push a team forward. That's what evolves a lineup. So that is what we need to see here coming out of not just Niners, but from basically every team here in NPL. Yeah, I would say Team Hawk definitely is in a more comfortable spot. Like looking at track records, I think Team Hawk should be coming to this very prepared to 
win it 2-0 over Niners. And unless Niners really, really, with this code red, adjust something on the fly and the switch flips in them, they're definitely on the back on the back foot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about Zay and as well as Max just yet. I didn't watch yesterday's game on purpose just to have a first impression about their game today against Team Hawk, nonetheless. And I would say, if they, again, if Team Hawk is a great way to kind of set where the bar is as of right now in terms of teams who are having that layer of like polish or at the very least stronger fundamentals, if Niners can actually take this game away from the side of Team Hawk, I think it's you know a positive upward trajectory from here on out. It would be a massive upward trajectory if Niners are able to take this match from Team Hawk, considering literally everything we've talked about them so far. But it's not unheard of, it's not impossible. Literally the match before this, we were kind of talking about how King Empire was looking very strong, homeboys still looking for their footing from week two, and we saw the results of that. So any team is possible of making that reversal, and we've had time to look at themselves. We've had time to experience what they have to bring to the land of dawn so we are just gonna have to sit here we're gonna have to see what happens and we're just gonna enjoy the journey yeah. i think it i think it doesn't make it any easier that niners is the only team so far that has to play two series right yesterday and mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. so you're talking about time uh, the other teams have a lot more time compared to them yeah really so but speaking of it's about time for us to get things going team hawk Looking like they're making the right moves with the recruitment of Coach Wright and also imports in Janice and Sakin. With the experienced Alexia as the in-game leader, this team is determined to hold on to their third placing in the standings. It's time to rock on the Ibombe Team Ha! Niners. Beep, beep, it's a code red emergency and the panic button has been pressed. This team from the Gays and Bilan has made some quick changes to their lineups in hopes of resetting their form. Can the Riders rise from the bottom? Let's hear it for Niners! Maintain fair play and professional integrity. We have our head of league, Ob Cedric, bringing up on stage the coach and analyst of both teams. Let's hear it for Coach Wright for Team Hawk, as well as Coach Antagonist and Analyst Oshki for the Niners. Fist bumps all around from the coaching staff as well as all the players. We have 10 individuals up on that stage with plenty to prove, and it will all come to a heel in the land of dawn now it's time to really pull the rug out under out of niners uh, because we have to address this immediately as the first topic the code red right the point of no return and the fact that we have team hawk as the benchmark i think is it as good as it gets because if we look at the niners remaining series haven't played srg haven't played homeboys it doesn't get any better from here so if they have to pull something off it has to be now this is that line that when they cross it, there's no turning back. Mm -hmm. It looks like the competition is only going to get tougher from here on out. And I think that's something that, well, it's something to look forward to, assuming that you win the series, whether 2-0 or 2-1. 2-0, definitely a big confidence boost. And they really need that confidence boost right now. These players are at rock bottom. Their performance yesterday was not even just, just not so good. It just felt terrible to watch. It felt terrible to play for the players themselves. It's a very situa serious situation for the Niners right now. And we're all hoping that they'll be able to overcome. As for the opposite side, Team Hang, honestly, they just need to keep doing what they're doing. Their evolution is clear. Yeah, and I think they have a very solid game plan, right? We saw how they how Janus functions with the rest of the team. Very, very self-sufficient jungler. You give him his power picks like Fanny, he does everything on his own. We've even seen ma uh, losing matchups for Fanny getting turned around because it's Janus. So it's something that I think I hope Antagonist and Oshki did preparations 
going up against Team Hawk, the fans have to be catered to Team Hawk because they have certain heroes that you just don't normally see. I don't know. Some of them are, are, are bizarre. Sylvana and Jungle, for an example. <laughs> Where did that oh. one come from, right? The flex between Jungle Fredrin into EXP Fredrin doesn't happen very often, but it's still on the table and an option for the side of Team Hawk. Janus and Iris, I mean, somebody's got to put a stop to it. Oh, we'll find out whether or not their opponents are able to do so here as we jump on into the team lineup. Starting things off with Team Hack consisting of Alexia, Iris, Sakin, Janus, and Noir. I think the best part about Team Hack this season is, also, is Iris also evolving as a player. Hero Pool has been expanded. We see him on a lot of Terizla, some Lapu Lapu, X Borg in Season 12. Right now, he's pulling up Benedettas, he's pulling up Paquitos, and he's making big plays on his own, even against the toughest of opponents. And I think that's something very admirable about this player, right? You need to constantly evolve and adapt to the flow, and Iris has been doing that. I think Iris has definitely calmed down from his quote-unquote younger days, which isn't <laughs> too far before. But truly, he now is really taking his time with the way that he approaches these fights. Even Noir, for an example. Underrated, underrated Roamer. Does a good job, is absolute a pillar for the team. But then we come over to Niners, and then we think about Barbosa. He has a track record of actually doing pretty well overall if he can communicate with his mid laner, if he can communicate with the rest of his team, something which Niners have not exactly got down just yet. Yep, we can see it from the past. The coordination hasn't been the cleanest, but we can see right now from the lineup that there has been another switch up. Zay still maintaining his position as the in-game leader for the Niners, and Zavs, EA3, and Max rounding out the composition. But now Barbosa being switched in, which means that Zay will not be playing in the roam position for this game. Mm. Zay has a history of playing mid lane before this, yep. so mm, high, high chance it's going to be in the mid lane. But then we look at the Niners' track record in terms of what the players are playing around, right? We were expecting Wunji to play with Barbosa, and that actually felt like the case. They were sticking mm. together like two, but then you end up compromising the rest of the team. And then Barbosa gets taken out, Zay gets put in. Suddenly you see that synergy kind of dissipated. There's no connection between Moon and Zay, but now Zay goes mid and Barbosa comes in. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty complicated. It is. It is. It's only going to get even more complicated now that they're having Max in the jungle as well. So that's going to be another factor that's generally out of their control, right? They're hoping that the game sense aligns with the calls that are being made in the game. And then you have Yeth3 as well as Zavs, both of which have definitely developed a name for themselves. However, it seems like they're not exactly pairing well with the new additions to the Niners on top of everybody else. It makes you worry about whether or not some of these players may be getting a little bit too full of themselves or maybe there's like an ego problem going on that's causing like communication issues between like newer or older members or if they're trying their best and something is just not quite clicking. It could be any number of reasons happening behind the scenes here. So we're hoping that we're going to see something good. Now that they've decided to adjust things up, we're going to have the barbosa Zay combination and maybe it'll work out, but I do worry when a team keeps switching around their players like this. It shows that they're trying to experiment on the MPL stage itself, and that's usually a little bit late. Yeah, we've seen, I think, Team Secret do that, right? That's a very, very good example. But with the current regular season format, you only get one chance against every single team. And yeah. not to mention, this season, we only have six slots for playoffs. I think if you're a Niners, you're not thinking about playoffs. You're thinking about maintaining your MPL slot. Mm -hmm. And that could just be hard enough. I, I don't know. Let's let's have a look here. Because when we're talking about 999, what's the emergency? Will the last minute change rescue the Niners? I don't, personally, I don't really know. I feel like as much, as long as I've been in this career, it's tough to say whether a team actually works or it doesn't. It's usually internal, and most of the time, it's just either the players don't click or there's just a problem with the protocols that have been set in place. I think it takes a miracle, right? Like, if if anything were to change for the better, it could have, it would have happened. So if I, if we somehow see a 180 change, then it's easier to point fingers at certain individuals, but I just don't see that being a possibility. I'm I don't know. Maybe because after doing majority of Niners games up to this point, it can only go up for me, right? Like you, you can't bring my expectations down any lower. <laughs> I feel like it can be a bit dangerous to say things like that. But I do agree with you. It, it has to keep going up for now for the Niners here. The performance yesterday, very disappointing overall. And I'm sure they themselves feel that. There's that pressure now. There's that push from behind. 
We'll see whether it is a pro or con as we jump into the draft for game number one. We can see the X-Borg and Valentina being banned by Niners on the blue side. Hey, those rolls aren't right. What's that? Lexia, EXP, Iris, Jungle, and Janice mid? Come on. Unless. <laughs> Unless. Unless. I'm, I'm telling you. I know, I know that they can feel confident, but... This? That's probably a bit too much. I'm not too sure if those are correct. We do also see Zay as the rumor and Barbosa as mid. Hey, man. Wait, uh, wait. Hey, man. Let's it, just see this draft it's, first. It's not following the script, man. Yeah, if they lock <laughs> in draw, Selena, that's yeah. that's when we're like, okay, maybe, maybe they're actually doing this. <laughs> that's true. We've seen it before, the Selena. It did do surprisingly well despite everything there, but couldn't quite close things out. Team Hack still gonna be sticking with the typical bands we see on the red side with the Matilda and Angela removed from the pool. The second stick down, Niners Sir, have one band left, and it looks Your like it's gonna be that Fanny. Dead. So not going over to Janice for today. Yeah, I was jokingly saying in the talent room, I was like, let's see if Niners ban the Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if they want to, want to test it out a little bit. So I, I like this band. Uh, at least they have did bit of research, right? Fanny Band to kind of eliminate that from Janice's pool, and also the Valentina is just to take it out, uh, take it out from off of uh, Lexia's hands. Who said there Let's are see no the last band though from I Team High. It's gonna be the chip. I, I have no problems with that. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. Let's see what the first pick is gonna be for the side of the Niners. Niners are looking like they're in good spirit, which is good to see. We'll see after this game whether or not that's gonna maintain throughout the rest of the series. First picks can go basically anywhere at this point of time, I'm guessing going to go with the standard Fredrin opener unless they are really, really bold and they just want to show their assassin off first pick. Yeah. If you are Team Hawk, you, you are not going to be worried about taking a Nolan anytime soon, right? Mm -hmm. Janice, hey, given the Nolan, Fredrin for Niners, this one feels more like it. But I, I don't know, I mean, I've seen Max on Nolan and Fredrin yesterday. I kind of prefer this Nolan. <laughs> I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. You know, like they're not 100% sold. Just a little bit. You know? Yeah, it's a I prefer the Nolan. A very little less bit. for me to work with. You're holding down the down payment j j before you submit it for the upcoming investment. I, I, I would agree with you if you're on that fence on that one, right? Because again, it has been a while since we've seen Max actually play, and worse yet, it feels like you, you need a team that supports him in his aggressive moves rather than allowing Max to be malleable towards the rest of the team. I agree absolutely here. Let's we'll see whether yeah, Team Hawk right. does want to go Your for team. the Nolan. Looks like they're not going to lock in the jungle to pick just yet. Harris is going to be locked in for Sakin as well as that fair miss. Eyeing the fact that the Valentina has already been removed from the pool. They're going to give Alexia a hero that can set up for these big team fights. Especially when you see the Fredrin first pick for Niners, you know for a fact that Nolan is going to be untouched. It's not like they're going to run the Fredrin XP for Ye3 anyways. So I think it gives Team Hug a lot more room to lock in other crucial heroes. I mean, if it's actually Janice mid, then sure, the farm is not a bad idea. But the but the Harith is definitely going to give them a strong lane. Yeah, it's going to be a bit awkward to deal with the Harith. Regardless, I think there's still ways to deal with it. They still have plenty of mid lane options to go for to actually match up against the Farmers. But what do they want to really pair it with, right? What Do they want to just show I off with their goal lane early just to match up against ass. that Harith? Yep, looks like they are. It's going to be the Arla and as well as the Roger. Roger, a good matchup into the heart. If we've already seen teams do pretty well with this direct 1v1 in the gold lane, and Arlen is a good solution to the Nether Realm since that final slash will be able to find a lot of targets. But it also means that Niners are going to need to play pretty oh aggressively God, early like it, on. Man, I, I didn't wonder like if this might come out, but it is the Barats. Team Hack picked this very often in the first couple of weeks because they could flex it for either Iris or Janus. And and now you could, and because the export was banned so early on, the Barrage is like, now I can do whatever I want. Jungle, XP lane, not a problem. Now Team Hawk is going to have priority for the second phase. You look at Niners, it's the mid lane and a potential XP lane. I think if you are on the side of Team Hawk, you probably want to force this Arlet into Zay's hands and really shut down Year 3 to give uh, your own XP lane a better time. Yeah, I would agree with that, right? So what are the things that would really mess with Do Team Hawk's comp based on what Nana they have shown? Nana, I, I'm, I'm okay with that, right? Nana, Vixana, Lilia, all of them viable bands at this point in time. Do they want to invest one of them into the EXP, get rid of something along the lines of Benedetta or maybe even Paquito in this case? 
Or you could just ban Lilia and then you take Benedetta for Iris. Mm -hmm. Or whoever is playing the XP lane in this I game. I do always like it when Iris is on heroes like the Benedetta, like the Labu Labu, playmaking heroes, because that has always been his classic style. He's done a very good job of adapting to the position where he'll play utility tank if his team needs him to, but it's when he's able to set up plays and follow through himself that he really shines. You know he's a good man when he's willing to play Fredrin XP, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not many people would do that. I personally won't. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I would not play Fredrin EXP. There's nothing wrong with Fredrin EXP, man. There's you nothing get, you wrong. Get like, you get flicker. You get flicker. You get flicker with the big all. You do big damage and you flicker in their face so you never miss. Three patches ago, <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> Three patches No, ago. no. They nerfed, they nerfed that Greyhawk conversion. That's it. That's where I draw the line. Come on, man. It's true damage, man. If I can't watch for people at 12 minutes, no. <laughs> if, I, if I'm not doing it by 12 minutes, it ain't yeah. worth the time. Fredrin has been skipping arm day. <laughs> uh, he's been getting into leg day more often because all he does is rotate from EXP yeah. and still doesn't find the kill. Where's the protein? It's not here. Goes back into lane. Uh, last couple of bads here for the side of Niners as well as Team Hawk. Ruby ban. Interesting. Uh -huh. Getting rid of Ruby. Now that's interesting because I don't feel like that's something that Niners would typically prioritize very much. If anything, it's Noir who would typically want to play it more often. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose they did play it yesterday, play once, but the degree of success, I don't think, I agree, I don't think it's a crucial ban for them. Well, it does open up something for Niners, right? Now you have the luxury of a potential Lilia pick, which is honestly not that bad into Faramis and the Parats. Uh -huh. I think both of which are really, really good. So we'll see. We'll see what the options are going to be Wait, here. Oh, Justice in the world. For the side of Noir, okay. Niners? Okay. This is respect for Noir. Yeah, basically it. It's a very. It's specifically a pocket ban, and you can see Noir smiling as well. He understands that he's been given respect by his opponents. I don't feel like this will affect his hero pool very much. He's capable of playing quite a few different heroes. We'll just see whether or not Team Hunk wants to go for that as of right now. Because we're still not actually sure where this Barats is going to go. Yeah, um, hopefully Team Hawk they show us a little bit of what they want to show here. They could hold up EXP. Uh, EXP is a counter matchup because they do have last pick. This could be like a Grok pick here for Noir against the Niners. Some way to kind of separate their opponents. If you really want to just double down, Kaja is still open even though uh, even though Cho has been banned. So they still have knocked out. Ooh, Benedetta. Benedetta. Ooh, yes. I like this. Blind this is what Benedetta. we want to see. Does not care about the matchup. He's going to be able to function anyways. That means you get to hold off the Roma until last. I'm thinking of something like a Florin. Now that Angela's not in the pool anymore, the Florin wouldn't be the, that bad. I don't think Niners have enough damage to really just blow up Team Hawk at, at, at this point. I think if we're going along the lines of like Enchanters, Raph is actually not too bad either. Uh, supports the Barats, lets you move around a little bit more effectively and rotate so that you can get out of the final slash range potentially. Mm. I would still prefer more of a front line, but Team Hawk has options. Yeah, Team Hawk has options, but not as much as Niners though. They go for the Vixana as well as the oh, Florin. They take the Florin. I hmm. suppose they. Yeah, I, I was, I was saying that you know this Arlet, uh, Arlet Rome doesn't feel like a Niners thing, and yeah, they put in XP for year three. So, that but there's been weird to there's me. been word going around that Zay is kind of like Mali 2.0, like Mini Mali, right? Plays a lot of enchantment <laughs> supports. So I guess the Florian kind of fits the bill. Marley Jr. Marley Jr. But it, mean, <laughs> but it again means that Barbosa would be mid, though. It on does. The Mexana. That also feels a bit weird. I don't know. I, the way that I think about this is they're expecting Team Hawk to go for a counter matchup, specifically when it comes down to the Romers, right? What exactly it is is going to be predetermined by the Niners. So, I mean, the fact that they went for Florian, I mean, obviously, they, they just pick up the Rafa and they're still going to be faster, right? But when we look at the Niners, their overall composition is a little awkward to a certain degree. Yes, you are going to have some control, but you're walking away out of that lane with a little bit less of uh, a little bit less health. You're going to get topped up by the floor, but a lot of this game is resting on the shoulders of both Zay and as well as Zaz. Everybody else is just supporting cast members to those two pillars. I feel like if you are doing, you have taken Florin just to deny it from Team Hawk, it is a fatal mistake for the side of Niners. I would much rather that Arlon go into the XP lane. You get a strong matchup against the Benadera, right? I think Lapu, Pukido, there's still some options. CC. CC. We'll just have to see game number one, this one.
It's a doozy for the Niners as they take on Team Hawk in this last best of three of the Seru Saturday. Team Hawk, they're gonna be on the red side, Niners on a blue. Team Hawk looking to prove themselves by continuing to evolve across this season while the Niners are eager to get out of a code red situation. The first thing I'll say is that Welcome. this is a much more classic Niners playstyle. We know them for loving the Ube strats and for it is that style. But they're gonna really need to start getting some pressure with the Roger and Vexana because if not, Team Hack just has the more balanced lineup. Here's the thing, right? When we look at the mid lane, we can see that early on, we expect the mid lane to be able to rotate really quick here until Vexana hits level two, and then she can effectively clear the wave without even trying too hard, uh, trying too hard overall, right? So the question is, Team Hawk, how are they going to disrupt their opponents? They know that Iris is getting an incredible trade on that. Oh, oh my it. goodness! You're kidding. Oh. No I was looking. Way. I was looking at Noir and I was like, "There's no way you let that happen, dude." I bet Max is fuming. He oh. created that. He He's did not respect Noir. Fuming. Just, you already have the orange buff. Just red tree the purple okay, buff. Okay. To be fair, to be fair, it's not like you play against Rafa every other day. And to be fair, how can you judge the distance blindly of how far that whole, uh, that at least? for her first ability to go off like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know. The distancing felt a little like, ah, he doesn't look like he's in rain. I, I guess. mean, if you want to speed up a bit, Red Trina is probably like your best course of action, you know? Uh, against a Barat? I don't know. I don't know. That would just mean that Barat gets to walk into my jungle for free, and I have to back away. But now he definitely gets to do that. Yeah. <laughs> guess but what? It, You're one level down. But I think it's more important to secure your buff than to protect. Yeah. Like, be worried about the rest of your camps being stolen away, right? Like, I'll give props to Noir. His timing was excellent he there. Nasty. But Max definitely didn't need to greet that out so much. Okay. It goes back to my uh, my point earlier about the draft, right? Everybody else is a supporting cast compared to you. <laughs> compared to specifically Zayn and Well Zobs. Well, speaking of which, he's fine. Yep, Iris gonna be just fine here, even in a 1v2 situation. And that means Team Hawk have control over the first turtle. Don't Yetri out of experience early on, it seems. Yetri is still not four yet. Iris is four and a half. Turtle, of course, given away, uh, going given over to Team Hawk. And now they need to protect their buff. Here he comes again. All right, is Max. he gonna do it? No. Is he gonna do it? No, he can't go two for two, right? He, he's still here. Oh, he's even oh, holy crying. Oh my god, he's crying. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> Dang! I mean, at this at this point, it's like, why, why hold back? Man, that's some sociopathic <laughs> way of playing the game, dude. Real talk, that's so... That is some psychopath stuff right there coming in from Noir. Walks up, holy back... No, these two are just trading. Imagine he steals it, right? <sighs> the game ends right then and there. I would be more more afraid of Noir if Noir just did that on his own with nobody told, uh, telling him to do that. Only because that would just indicate how much of like... Oh, they want to kill Yetri. They're sending everybody. He's got final sight. Oh, uh, petrified. Final oh. flash even misses. Oh. Nothing you can do in that situation. First blood for Alicia. I have to talk about the value of that timing because they had two EXP cannon minions pushing against the tower. Mm. And then Iris says, this is the time. He's two levels down on me. We kill him. He doesn't get this EXP. Yeah. He got one. So at least he's level five. But this is a rough EXP lane. It's about to be a two level lead. Not, not, not if he cuts the wave, if he cuts the wave, it makes him miss one more. I see the last Ballista minion. Does it disappear before he gets there? Okay, good, he's he's in range. But Iris can definitely get a two level lead here. Looking to cut the wave. I think Yetri is, okay, no, he's not aware of that. Yeah, that wave is gone. <laughs> that wave nope. is basically as good as gone. Just gone. If Iris is out there, then he wins that straight up. Ooh, Ooh I mean. Iris is gonna take some damage, but it's fine, right? You still cut the wave, and he crashes the wave. Wait, look at where Yetri is going. Wait, where, where is Yetri going? Yetri is he's he gonna going? lose the entire wave. Barbosa, in the meantime, had to flicker the safety. What is this movement? Okay, okay. I guess Yet they want to contest the turtle, but yeah. Yetri yeah. is like, I'm. Keep in mind, supporting cast member, supporting cast member. Don't need to touch that wave. I don't need the exp. Just need to make the play. I'm not the one with the MC syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with this very much. Here you go, electro final blow. You got a good. Oh, <laughs> that is it. Gonna be Lisa securing the turtle and Iris. He is just slicing the back lines and doesn't even die. Flicker for Lisa forward. Zabs is the target. Noir with the follow up. They're just gonna dive underneath the turret. Three for Team Hawk and a turtle to boot. Dang. 
Noir, that, Noir, stop it, man. Stop it. You already took one buff. Now you got to collapse on four people with a holy baptism. When does this man stop? Baptize these child. Oh. Unbelievers. Oh, man. Oh, man, this is going to be a rough one. This is going to be a real yeah, rough it one. It feels really bad because not only did they get the really nice holy baptism, Iris was cutting off the entire bot lane. He now has an official two and a half level lead against the tree because Niners just like basically called him over for the turtle fight when they were already behind. Oh. Called him over for a turtle fight and he died. <laughs> and yes. It feels worse than that. Oh my, Holy Baptism, right? Mess gets pulled back. They get decent damage, but Noah heals them up. Yeah, Tree finally gets it done. Gets rid of the... Oh, oh. oh that's the next. And Danis get the swallow up. You do lose today. Now can they reply with more Iris? The next target, Prezo Scribe completely misses and Iris creates a no-go zone. Both teams trade one for one. Oh, okay, they want Iris though. No, Iris, Iris should be able to get out of there. He should be able to get out of there, no problem. Lexia has got him covered, great coverage from the side of Team Hawk here. And speaking of IGLs, right? Lexia is an incredible... Wait, hold on. Zops is up here. Wait, wait. Yeah, they went for the lane swap already. Lane swap already to the top side. Do they break this open? No, they don't. It's 3v2. It's not looking good. Harrods in mid. They're diving Yetri in mid lane too. Wow. Yep. Yeah, punish him. Punish Janus. Can't let Team Hawk just do that to you, you know? There's a certain degree of disrespect that <laughs> you have to put a cap to it. Yeah, we'll take it from Noir, but you, Janice? Nah, <laughs> this is where it stops. Wait, if he loses the buff. Oh, oh. That was close. But that oh. was, that that was, was close. actually close. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is very, this is like very, very disconcerting, I will just say. Also, mind you, this entire time, Sakin has just been farming his lane. He already nearly pushed the tier two bottom, so this Harif is just having a free time as well. Uh, better question. It's the fact that Zobs decided to go for the weakness finder compared to Sakin. I'm pretty sure Sakin's going to go first item. Uh, first item. Oh! Okay. Oh. Flicker, final slash. Get rid of the Rafa. Janice gets the swallow up. Brevin and Prezo comes down. He's secured the turtle for themselves. The team hot. They're going to continue to spike. It seems like that is not the intention. Iris also forced on the run. Oh, Nine is making some good recovery. Oh, man. Noir and the rest of Team Hawk caught slacking finally. Good play coming in from uh, Vignette 3. And now closing the level lead against Iris. Now pulling it to 1 and not a full 2 level. Oh. He's just going to eat the wave up. Yeah, Tree actually quite painful right now. Only with the Fury Hammer as well. So doing some good work. Being able to pick off Noir very early in that previous fight allowed them to just straight up win. So they'll have to keep it. I think more than that, right? I mean, look at the way the leads are currently for everybody, right? The fact that we're seeing the Necklace Advance already completed is just a great first item, especially if you are going to be playing Pharmus in this type of situation. So many ways to heal. Yes, there is tr quote unquote true healing, the non anti healable heal coming in from Barbosa. But uh, other than that, right? You just got to make sure the overall heals aren't going to be able to top them up, make them feel uncomfortable. And Team Hawk is doing exactly that to Zafin. <laughs> See Zav, he just, just does not have some space to work with. Team Hawk, they want this tier 1 and they want it now. Janus goes for the swallow up and still finds it! And the target fed into the wall, follow up with the Holy Baptism. Ye Tree needs to dash to safety. They drop the Nether Realm and the Zaman spawn. The Nether Realm will expire, but Ye Tree's life will soon to follow Iris with the collection. And now Max has to soak up the damage. Team Hawk gonna walk away with just one. Yeah, but I think Team Hawk is okay with walking with that just that one, right? Don't necessarily need to push any agendas here. 24 more seconds until the next neutral actually spawns. And the rest of the Niners, on the other hand, 3.7k behind, 3.6k now. Not too bad considering everything that has happened in the earlier stages. Yeah, but Team Hawk, though, being able to just dive the tower like that, five man. Honestly, I just want to see what the total healing of this whole game is going to be because the numbers <laughs> are going to be so inflated here. It's going to be a, a little over the top, but let's see. First Lord, let's see how they approach this. Give me some good news. Max has caught up in terms of experience, right? Despite losing the uh, purple buff early on, he hasn't died once, has three ass assists under his, uh, to his name. Oh. It's not the worst case scenario. In fact, he's ahead in terms of experience. Yeah, he's quite significantly ahead, right? I mean, yes, he's level 12. We saw Janus hit level 12, but Max, he's like 55. But I would say like 60% on the way to level 13. Good recovery, honestly. I think Janus may have participated in a few too many fights and got picked off here. Well, to be fair, they did get that one turtle in the middle of that chaotic fight thing with the help of Yeah 3 So maybe that's what kind of pulled the gap a little closer? 
your way. Closing the gap now means that Niners can actually put up a somewhat even fight. They still have to respect the 3.5k difference. And they found Yetri here. It's all alone. They want to burst Yetri down. The Florian Bloom is going to heal him up just enough for Yetri to get away, but he's forced to dash back in just to buy time. So Yetri will be fed to Team Hawk. Marche, Max wants to continue. Oh. No, the slam of all people onto Noir. Max finds the equalizer. Uh, at least, well, I mean, they're trading Yet 3 for a Roamer in Noir. Oh, okay. Decent amount of damage. Do they actually want to start it now? Finally, they begin it. But uh, it's dragged on for so long that Max was actually able to get level 13. Sakin can 100%. If he, had, it, he has his ultimate. He can actually 100% kill him. Nah, nah. Probably the rest not. of his team has moved up towards the top side. It's not worth taking the risk. I do worry that Team Hung may be grouping up a little bit too closely in some of these team fights. Like, yes, you're supposed to be gathered so that you can take advantage of the Holy Healing and the Nether Realm, but they're basically stacked on top of each other a lot of the time, which is allowing Niners to do quite a bit of AoE damage with the Abrazor's Wrath and the Eternal Guard in some cases. Yeah, I think that there has to be some communication on what spells goes first. You know, oh. Them. oh, no, Noir. Oh. I mean, we say he caught, he's caught slacking, but... Uh, I think he's sleeping at the wheel right now. Uh, I mean, nobody was nobody was face checking that brush, right? Whoever face checked that brush was gonna get CC to the ground. So rather Noir, who has a disengage mechanic, rather than Janice, right? All right. No final slash. Oh, Max goes for the engage. He's the one that gets swallowed up. Iris instantly hits the back. Fights Zay just like that. And now Iris is gonna be able to get away the rest of Team Hawk. We have the Hawk, protection why? of the Nether Realm. Iris still decides to go back in. Touch the man by Zap. He will lose that fight. But Yetri goes down with Zap and Max alive. This is the chance for Niners to really put the hurt onto Team Hawk. As Max is gonna to continue to hold Sakin in place. Sakin drops the Zaman Force. Barbosa. He should be sacrificed, takes it out of the Cyclone. Easter Holy Baptism is Sakin with the collection. Sakin's so strong right now. He's so, that's his second Salmon Force, by the way. He dropped yep. one earlier by the Lord Pit, and the fight dragged on until it's like, oh, I have the purple buff as well. I'm losing a bottom tier one, and I'm gonna drop the third Salmon Force to finish this quick. Oh, Max, Max why, I why don't you know that should still be here? I should go. But Team Hawk not gonna engage on him. Yeah, that fight lasted so long. We saw three Zaman forces. Heck, Noir actually managed to respawn and come back to rejoin the fight as well. So that was just very prolonged. I think it definitely would have gone Niner's favor if not for Iris cutting off that back line. Being able to find Zay nearly 1v1ing Zavs as well is what allowed Team Hawk to stay in that fight. Because otherwise, there's no way that Sakin would have found some space to re-jump back in. So Team Hack will be able to maintain their net worth lead from that, and Iris topping the damage dealt charts. Technically, the Niners sort of won a 4v5, right? I, I didn't, even Zaz was coming online. And Iris saving the situation for Team Hack. Now they want to escort this Lord to at least get the top tier too. Max not going to let it happen. Good defense from the Niners. They will lose this bottom tier too though. Yep, they have to depend on that next wave, right? They're expecting the Niners to actually respond towards that mid wave to try and protect the mid tier one. And that's totally fine with them. That second wave is going to crash on that top side, guaranteeing them a tier two. If they can break the tier one, it's nice. Duff. Oh. oh. <sighs> no Daytona's welcome, though. No Holy Baptism, though. Duff had to use the Purify just to make sure that he gets out of that. I'm very close. It's definitely worth it in that situation. If they lost Zavs there, they would have lost their final tier two as well. Max needs to be a bit careful here. Iris is going to be looking for a flank. But Team Hawk, I think they're going to make the proper choice not to try and push this here. Uh, no reason to. I think the main target still, like even Z Zavs might not necessarily be priority number one. I, I think that Zay here is always going to be priority number one between the teams. Man, Max is really... He's really going for it. He's going to get swallowed up. Daytona's welcome again. Iris Aww. now finds the back line. Max needs to start peeling back. Nether Realm also used by Leisha. Yetri a bit too far Ooh. despite the flicker gets pulled back. Niners overstep. They're gonna be shoving in mid lane now. Gonna be threatening that here too. Max still able to get that purple buff, but it is quite strange that he was positioning so aggressively. Basically did end up costing Yetri his life to be make sure that he was able to walk out of there. I mean, clearly Max doesn't like to share. He does not like to share the space. Let's look at the items real quick to see what we got here. Uh, oh, ooh, 
Ooh, opting to go for a very greedy Roger build. Pure damage, uh, pure damage, even going for the BOD as well. He's trying to be that finisher, but it might be a little tough. When we're looking on the opposite end, we're already seeing anti Kirasas already being laid on. Some of them not even complete yet, but especially for Janus, he doesn't feel like going down to a Lycan Pounce. Definitely not, especially with Antique, with the Guardian Helm. This Barat is going to be very safe a lot of the time. And I decide their items are not that far behind, all things considered. Even with that 5k net worth lead, they can make things happen. But now Teamfuck are getting a lot more effective at splitting up not just the map, but every time they go in for these team fights as well. So Niners need to be even more wary about the way that they are positioning, because we're definitely starting to see some cracks in terms of how far forward their front line is compared to their back line. I think Niners had the right idea also, right? Let's play push and pull, get the important abilities out and then we back off but sometimes you overstep and team how they can punish you easily max again in that position look at niners all stuck together oh. team Hang, they, they wouldn't take the time with this look at iris he's gonna cut that that mid wave he's gonna get a flank if that's the case niners they need to make a decision right here right now are we gonna double down on this or are we gonna give this up sending zaos to respond and of course resetting the lord Team Hawk, you're not gonna let it fully reset. Ah, oh, I bet Noir is just like, eh, let's make him suffer. Let's reset this one more time. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. He rubs his hands casually. I'd be very concerned if that's actually what's happening behind the scenes. I mean, the fact oh, oh, Daytona's welcome actually missed. It finally, he finally did it after three attempts. And the final slash also missed. I guess big abilities are whiffing. Or well, at least they both walk away with their lives. But the wave not in favor of Niners. They have to manage it. Yep, they guarantee at least a little bit of damage on the inhibitor turret. This just means that Team Hawk, they're gonna do this all over again. Rinse and repeat. They see Roger show up in, uh, show up in the mid and then head down to the goal. They know that Arlo is going for the recall. Plenty of time to do this. Plenty of time to stall this out. And Roger just got the Demon Hunter sword, but Iris is gonna let that wave crash. This could be an inhibitor turret. Team Hawk just dangling the Lord. The carrot on a stick. Now it's getting pulled around the map, and uh, I mean the only guy that can deal with Iris is Zav. Wait, wait, he's gonna go with that push, he's gonna take damage! They try and fight Iris? Oh, Zav does do a lot of damage. Oh, oh hell no! He's gotta get out of there, but now they know that they don't, don't have an Electo Final Ball as well as the Petrify. He's still chasing. <laughs> he's still looking for Iris. Okay, Iris able to fight enough distance. But now it could be a time to pull the trigger. The Gobbop is going to be there onto Yetri. Spat in right back. Oh! But Yetri with a great escape as they call over Zaz to join oh. the final slide onto the entirety oh. of Team Hawk. Yetri has found an opening for his team. Saken and Noir, they both drop and it's Zaf to find the kill. And Niners of the back of Yetri's heroics finds the Lord. This is what we call disrespect, basically. Team Hawk playing way too confidently in that situation. The moment that Iris loses the 1v1 up top, that is the time where you need to not decide to fight. But Team Hawk decide we're gonna go for it anyway. They miss the Detona's welcome stun onto Year 3, allow him to gather them up with the final slash, and Sakin ends up losing his life for the first time the entire game which is going to heavily shift that net worth lead. Not to mention Lord now in Niner's favor. We'll see how many towers they get with this. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be able to even out the gold for sure. But man, Team Hawk, there, there wasn't a sense of urgency there, right? The fact that they just got very comfortable. Too, too comfortable. The fact that you whiffed on a wall that's right next to you, like you had two walls as options to spit your opponent into, and you missed both. At um, least Iris is trying to keep it together, right? Get that inhibitor in that top lane. And Niners, they're not able to get any on Team Hawk's side. So still, I suppose a minor win from Team Hawk. Consolation prize from all of that chaos. Ah, uh, but uh, this... Uh, they, they're getting demerits for this. I'm just sure. confused sure. because, like, yes, they were having Iris split push the top lane the entire time. That's good. They kept pulling Zavs over to defend that lane. That's good. Why didn't they start the fight when Zavs was not there? Why did they only start the fight when Zavs had al already won out against Iris and was on his way back to the Lord Pit? And the Benedetta is clearly not ready to fight. Uh. I uh, mean, underestimation, possibly, and more so that they were confident to actually take uh, take on this 4v4. Honestly, 
I don't mind the 4v4 that much. My main issue was the fact that they stuck around for so long. The fact that, again, a lot of these mechanical mistakes shouldn't be the case. So I I'm probably going to have to watch that clip once more just to see whether Saken's Purify was off of cooldown because when I double-checked, it looked like it was off of cooldown. But then again, it might be one of those things where it's like, ah, he still had like four seconds left before he died. Well, either he had it and Zav just jumped in, in werewolf form, right? And he didn't have a chance to use it. Could have got that. He got executed. More so, he shouldn't have been hit by the final slash in the first place. That is true. Yeah. That's what uh, Sedafa point, uh, pointed out earlier on, right? Just Faramis and Ra Rafaela, you want to get the most use out of them, you got to stick together. And uh, this Arlet is really becoming a problem right now for Team Hark. That, that six death on the air tree is paying off. Yeah, man. I mean, Three, he's, he's finally, after three attempts of trying to dodge the Daytona's welcome with the Vengeance, he finally gets it on the third one. No, he got spit, didn't hit a wall, and instantly just <laughs> dashes out. I mean, that one is a pure mechanical mistake coming out from Janice's side. Can't yeah. say much about it, but this one, I think this is where Team Hawk kind of like gets it together. Like, guys, it's it's been 20 minutes. <laughs> it's been 20 minutes. We might have trolled a little too hard here. Let's clean this up. We still got it in us. We just need to not make some mistakes. I will say that like we gave a lot of praise to Team Hunk before this match started, saying that they were doing better, they were evolving. Um, yeah, we're gonna take some of that back here <laughs> because this is not clean. This does not feel like how they were playing before the break. Ooh, interesting. They're gonna, they're gonna pose as if it's a rush. A lot of things I've said, not, the ultra's gonna come from my head after this game. Oh, not reset it just I yet. Just looking for it. Iris on the back, Zay, the compromise position. There's a terrify, and now the fight actually goes off. The Daytona's Rocker misses again, and Janice needs the net around to keep him alive. Iris hits the back line with the Petrify and Electro final blow. Lord still not reset it yet to get the catch onto Lacey. Lacey goes down. The Lord stolen by Saken of all people. The Niners, they will still get Janice on the way out. Two for Niners, but no Lord for them. They gotta be more careful with their front to backs here. They just need to play a traditional front to back. How in the world are they losing members like Alexia of all people? The ones initiating and making sure. Wait, hold on, hold what on. What about Yetri? I mean, Noir is gonna go down, right? Holy baptism, and holy no. healing. Oh, they're is stopping there. them. They're trying is to stop. Hot. Iris is going for the back door. Your base is in danger. Max is not gonna make it in time. Team up. We're getting back doors. Good Lord today. Iris, the savior of the team. He's going oh, down, even he comes back, oh. it's just enough for Team Mark and Iris to pull it across the finishing line. Good call, good call. Fine, that's the second back door we've seen on Soru Saturday itself. Oh, I got very confused there. I was wondering why is the Raph and the Faramis trying to engage again? And then you realize Benedetta's in the bot lane. They're setting up for the back door and they get it. They get victory in game number one, but mind you, this was messy. We expect a little bit better from Team Ha. Of hey. course. All I've learned is that Noir is an absolute psychopath. He is. This <laughs> guy is a menace as a roamer. The one thing I learned from this game is that both XP laners and the respective teams are literally the heroes of their team. <laughs> yeah, three saving the game yeah. for Niners. Iris winning the game for Team Ha. Well, at least now we got a matchup to look forward to for the rest of the series. For sure, for sure. I mean, definitely they cannot disrespect the Niners like that. Again, if not, it's going to slip through their fingers once more when they start scaling up. I don't even know what to say. I feel like a lot of team fights were taken at weird timings. They grouped up a bit <laughs> too much. Like, yes, you have Raph, you have Faramis, but you don't need to be right next to each other. You are basically overlapping at that point. You are no clipping through your, yourselves. Uh -huh. You don't need to be that close. It's like you're dancing, you're jumping around in mud wearing white, uh, oh, full white apparel from pants, socks, shoes, all the way up to your shirt. And it's like, I'm not going to get it dirty. <laughs> start shuffling in it. Craziest thing was, Everything that could have went wrong went wrong, <laughs> and they somehow still stole the Lord. And they somehow still stole it somehow. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta oh, give it. Man. I mean, I gotta give it to them. Saken, at the very least, he doesn't make those mechanical mistakes. At the very least, nope. uh, it's not like missing Daytona's welcome, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Daniels, I'm absolutely watching you. Not. We're well, gonna head to Team Hawk side, of course. MVP Iris, no questions about that. Man saved the game. Man won the game. <laughs> Honestly, yes. If not for Iris's presence, I feel like Team Hawk would have thrown the game a few times already. He definitely wasn't able to get as clean of the Electro Final Blow Petrify combos as he wanted, because honestly, 
Uh, Niners did a pretty good job of splitting apart to make sure they weren't all caught in it. But the damage was still done. The fact that he's able to split these fights apart and consistently macro the map is what enabled Team Hack to maintain control even after a lot of questionable decisions. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple of times where Iris did kind of like the final blow into the air, but at the very least, there is some degree of purpose, right? It's not hitting exactly on the mark, but it is zoning them off from uh, from actually retreating back into the multiple different slashes that are coming through with the Electo final blow. I think that at the very least, this could have been a game for the side of Team Hawk that could have been much cleaner, much more... I wouldn't even say impactful, but definitely a show. <laughs> definitely a it's show. It's a show. Uh, I, we, we, are, we are learning things about the players that we wouldn't have expected. Like, you know, Noir uh, needs a psyche back after this. Yeah, <laughs> he, he really needs that psyche back. I would say I know. <laughs> this is actually the closest that Nine has ever came to tasting a, a victory, right? Like a, like a solid one. It's from behind. Um, well, I mean, they came closer, I think, once or twice. I think that game is when they went from um, uh, Selena Novaria actually came a lot closer in the yeah, end. Yeah, KGE than... Game 3. Yeah. <laughs> who can forget that, right? <laughs> who, can, who can forget that I want that to. Time. <laughs> <laughs> who can forget Sasa getting killed because he didn't have Purify? <laughs> <laughs> he still, still has Purify. Look, it happens to the best of us, right? Maybe they're not feeling up for it today. Maybe they're feeling a little warmed out. It is the latter half of the day. It's like 6.23 at this point, right? Most people are getting ready for dinner. And I think that for these players here, Definitely a lot of disrespect coming up for the side of Team Hawk. They need to kind of get it together if they want to close this out with a clean 2-0. Niners, on the other hand, were starting to take advantage of mistakes on the latter half of the game. They themselves were making quite a... Uh, not the smartest decisions, macro-wise. Like, some things you can give up. Like, clearly, some things you can give up for the sake of your laners. But others, I don't know what to say. I think all we can really say is that this was not a very clean game. Uh, we're expecting better from both teams going into game number two and hoping that there will be some evolution from both teams going into game number two. There are moments of brilliance, that's for sure. But those were definitely drowned out a little bit going into this. At least I'm glad that Niners are able to start punishing Team Hug for their over... Uh, their disrespectful demeanors, right? At least that's something that you know that Niners can and will take advantage of. You know, Zay felt pretty comfortable in that mid lane. Barbosa on the floor in was hitting good timings with the Bloom. And now the next step is to see if Niners can take pro uh, well, proactive actions. Can they take initiative and to play the game on their own terms? I think that's going to be... Uh, it, it's a little difficult, right? You're playing Enchanter-style supports. And like specifically, when we're talking about Florin, she doesn't exactly dictate the tempo very well. She's good at responding against her opponents in comparison to a Rafaela, who is able to get you into the position to make that call, right? That's the big difference between these two types of uh, Enchanter-style supports. I think worse yet, the fact that this game dragged on this long. Look at the overall KDAs of the, uh, of the overperforming members, right? Uh, Max is walking away. 2-0 and 7. Perfect KDA ends up over leveling against Janus, hits max level first. And then for Zobs as well, from what used to be a pretty dead lane to a I'm not dominating this, I'm not getting a lead. I'm actually behind in goal for a good majority of it. And from mid-game to late game, he catches back up in a span of four minutes. The easiest comparison is Max didn't die once, someone has to eat it, and he's yet to <laughs> Yeah, it was. <laughs> a lot of times Max is just like poking his head a bit too far forward, gets caught in Yetri, was like, I gotta do this again. <laughs> How yeah. many times has he tried to run away with a flicker and gets pulled back by Lacia? <laughs> <laughs> he's tried. He's tried a, a many, many times. I bet Yetri looks over to Max and he's just showing him the sign three. It's like, it's in the name, dude. That's how many times I'm willing to die for you. Any more, that's just, you're asking too much. It really is. Like, I don't understand why Max is being so aggro in some of these situations. Yes, he's tanky, but it's clear that his team isn't quite in position to actually take that fight. So, yeah, the moment he gets caught out, Yetri has to basically play the sacrifice, and then Max just like, I'm out, JK, bro. <laughs> it's, it's not a position you want to be in. I think that Max... Two, two, uh, two strains of thoughts are going through my head. Either one, 
he knows that his team is off the map, right? No information is being given. It's all about when you're la when you've last seen your opponent, and in this case, whether it be Zobs, whether it be Zaves, where whether it be it would yeah, yeah three, right? I can walk up aggressively to fake the idea that they're already nearby, and I already want to deter you from doing that. And Team Hawk respect it sometimes, saying, "Hey, this is a little too aggressive. Let's back up for a second. And as soon as somebody shows up on the map, it's like this kid is lying. He's just a JoJo fan. <laughs> it's either that." Or Max is like, man, my team is playing too slow. I need to get them to do something. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not going to give you a choice. <laughs> Runs on in. <laughs> not, not the healthiest mindset to have. Surprisingly, I think it did actually kind of start working, you know? Like, maybe, maybe that's what <laughs> happened, right? Like, Max is just, like, pretending his team's behind him. Team Ha catches him once or twice. And then they they start thinking, oh, he's actually lying. And then they're actually there. And then <laughs> Team Ha starts throwing. And then Yeah 3 pays for his bail. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with his life. <laughs> After dying enough times, Yetri unlocked and won them a team fight. Yeah, I mean, it took him seven times, right? Seven times, seven times worth the kills to get him into the final position where he finally makes it all happen and work together. Let this be known: no, no one person can catch Yetri in the Tona's welcome three times. <laughs> <laughs> Let this be known as well: no one person can make you actually die as much as Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the donations being made. The, no the number of X's in his name is not like part of his name, it's the, it's the number of deaths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three, Max, X, 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 it's adding up, man. <laughs> oh, the arithmetics are gonna be too much. Too much indeed. I do think that the Niners do need to wake up a little bit, uh, a, a little bit with the way that they rotate across the map. I do feel that I would have preferred a more proactive composition from them, right? Well, I, denying, yes, you are denying a potential pick from Noir, but at the end of the day, right, how much does that healing matter? How much is that healing going to matter when your composition basically blows people out of the water before the heal can even come through, right? Most people can't even survive the traditional uh, the traditional build from Zay playing on this Mixana. Yeah, a lot of times, the moment Ye Tri catches Noir, he he just disappears. You're dead. You're gone. You're even a purifier, right? I think he took Flicker, so mm -hmm. makes it even easier to get rid of this Rafaela. And how disrespectful Noir was playing, that wasn't really the issue for Niners. But I suppose because we had uh, what well, we, we had the Florin on nine side, so they're playing this push and pull. I'm gonna bait out your Nether Realm, bait out your Holy Baptism, and then we're gonna just pull back. It just needs a bit of polishing, I suppose. The idea was dead; it just didn't get to pull it off. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at the total healing overall, I mean, Whoa. look, okay, Luar has healed just as much as Sakin heals himself. <laughs> what? How it all, it, well, I'm guessing that total healing also includes shields, right? Okay, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, that makes a lot more sense here. Because if Sakin actually healed himself as much as Duar <laughs> healed the whole team, we have a problem. <laughs> so Duar spending more time invading. <laughs> and then cut to Lexia. I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, the Nether Realm is something, so that's fine, you know? <laughs> that's me? okay. What about me, man? It was all me. Uh, I don't know. This game, definitely a little awkward all across the board from both of these teams. Way too close for Team Hawk. More than, like, this game should have ended by the 13th minute. 13th, 14th already. They were so far ahead. And it's not like Niners have, like, crazy good high ground at the same time. Craziest thing is that this Hall of Fame is all Team Hawk members. You would think that <laughs> yes. Niners would have made the list somehow. <laughs> somehow, right? Like, you'd think that someone would have taken a lot of damage. Yetri, maybe. But no, Jan is still able to survive a lot of it thanks to, of course, the Nether Realm and the Holy Healing coming out. Sakin was basically uninterrupted for most of that game, so it's understandable that he had the highest GPM and the highest damage dealt. And Noir just being a psychopath, as we've repeated time and time again with his 10 total assists, as well as multiple situations of stealing buffs, uh, flickering forward to catch people with Holy Baptism, and just generally walking into his doom. The fact that he is using his ba Holy Baptism to try and steal away his buff, that's insanity. He's about to change the la landscape of ranked games right now. <laughs> Rafaela will never be the same after <laughs> I'm game. about to baptize your jungle experience. <laughs>
<laughs> oh boy. But overall, I mean, a lot of good, a lot of good calls have been made for the side of Team Hawk at the very least, right? It, despite it not being the cleanest, in terms of macro wise and how to punish a laner, like everything is done to a T. The two level lead against E3, the fact that Janus was able to start overscaling against Max, the same can be said about Sokken absolutely smothering Zobs and taking a full lead ahead of him. Like so many things were going well for Team Hawk on a macro scale, but they could never really leave this 3K lead. I just saw something really, really funny. <laughs> a lot, a few of these clips, Max is the first guy to fully retreat. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, why in my front line? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so much further back compared to my, my mid lane, you know, my Florin. You'd think that Max would stay there and try to protect his teammate, but he was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. Oh. This one was sick, though. This, this one would have changed the entire trajectory of the game here. But unfortunately, Iris being able to find that split push opportunity, getting that immortality as well, just to get that final hit in. And then Noir just suddenly being like, fight me, bro, and catching them off guard, not realizing that the Benedetta is on the other side of the map, just allowed Team Hawk to finally get that win. I guess that's the only time that backing first for Max sort of was the right call. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, out of all of this, I only knew that this was... I only started to think that maybe this was like a legit idea that they're going for a backdoor. Once I saw Sokken double down, drops the Zaman Force, and I'm like, wait, this is real! Yeah, was, He's not messing around! I was looking at the map, and I was like, okay, Iris is spot. Okay, they got the Lord. Wait, this Faramis is running at their face? Wait, what is Noir doing? <laughs> <laughs> Flickering with his ult. Barbosa walks right past the crystal, doesn't even care about it. It was very confusing for me because I did not notice Iris. I saw the play first from Noir and Lexia and I was like, Huh? What? what are you doing? Why are you trolling? It was like, I I was scrambling to come up with a reasoning. So I was like, there, there has to be something going on before I noticed Iris. I bet it's definitely Noir. <laughs> the social path is like, go, 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 kill him, kill him. <laughs> yeah. Fight him, fight, fight. Like, we know oh. that Lexia is the in game leader, so most likely he's the one making the call that, okay, Iris, go split push, we'll stop them. But when you look at what happened, it feels so much less controlled. <laughs> <laughs> that probably would have been the play for them anyways, but stealing the Lord mm -hmm. made it work. You know, I think if they didn't get the Lord, most they get is probably some damage on the inhibitor turret, and then the wave gets cleared, and then we reset for the next five minutes. So, good on Sakin. He was actually the actual breadwinner. Yeah, he. I mean, two Hall, two two Hall of Fame categories, and he stole the Lord. I would say that. Ma to me, at least Max was trying to keep it together mm. for his team, right? And as much as everything is kind of going wrong on every single side of the map, he's able to ca actually catch up in terms of his EXP and also take away at least one of those turtles amidst the chaos, right? So it's not like it's all sunshines and rainbows on either side. There's still things to be working on. And I think coming into game number two, I am, I am hoping so hard, so hard that Team Hawk take blue side. Just take, just take it. I agree. I feel I like agree. it's not a side that needs to be given away. There's a lot of value in getting that first pick, and we know that Team Ha can make some really interesting things happen. Like, there, there's a reason to go red side if you want to try and counterplay by grabbing that Fanny last pick, but it's clear that uh, Niners already know about it. They banned it in the first phase, so just go blue side. Yeah, and I think more so. Wait, hold on. It looks like MPL MY insiders are back in, and we're talking to Zay here. Yeah, of course, this is his first MPL debut, you know, what went wrong against Barracuda? That's the question. And he said, you know, he still knew the team. Maybe there's some calm issues. I mean, it's in English, right? <laughs> it's, they didn't think that gameplay and he, at least he believes that they can fix it in a short time. And I'd say to a certain extent, we are seeing them gel together slightly better. You know, even Max's aggression felt a lot more control. It's either that or Niners are following up with them a bit better. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I will say that it's still looking a little fresh, right? But there are signs of at least this team is kind of moving as a unit at a certain point of time, right? I, I do think it does take a while to kind of sort out the Kings to know exactly what you want from your teammates. But I think let's have a look at the MPL MY Insiders, this time with Lexia. I mean, of course, it's also his first time as an IGL after coming out of that hiatus. Still learning, new responsibility, some pressure to it, but I think for Alicia, he has always been that hard worker that gives it his all, right? So it's crazy that this is in English. I'm not gonna lie. I, I am. Expect, yeah. I'm. I was telling you like two weeks ago. Uh -huh. I never knew. <laughs> I thought Alicia, I thought Alicia was Chinese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for the longest time. No. 
Oh, I no. It was Chinese. <laughs> you thought it was Chinese? It was the name. What? It was the name. <laughs> it was the name. Lacia. You never saw the portrait photo just yet? I mean, <laughs> I, I uh, guess. The, the part, I guess. <laughs> I would name my child Lacia. <laughs> Lacia. Like, I don't know. That sounds like, like some kind of light novel protagonist. Uh, that's the one That's the one name that has. Oh. I don't know how many lies, how many years I've been lying to. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm dying on the goddamn inside. I'm dying. <laughs> Absolutely dying here. All right. I'm in the left. A couple of adjustments that need to be made on either side. Maybe uh, come to form for the side of the Niners. Who knows? I, I would like to see them play their own game their own game for once because it always feels like okay we just need some lane dominance get a little bit of lane dominance on both sides of our exp and as well as our gold we call it quits everybody else supporting character you know what to do let's go the thing is what is the niners gameplay nowadays right like we knew in the past that they were a upe strat team we saw them try that this game to varying degrees of success but what actually is their identity now that they've switched up the roster? What is it that they're trying to push? I think that's the question on a lot of people's minds. I think they should be a dive comp. I think a dive what, comp? Yeah, they should They should just be a I dive I guess so, right? With how Max is, with how, with how the previous game looked, I agree, dive comp. It makes sense. It makes if sense. If your jungler is willing to do that and your XP lane is willing to bail him out, you might as well go for it. All right, here we go. Time to go into the picks and bands here of the second draft in this series. Niners going to be on the blue side still. Team Hawk ready to respond. A fanny ban, making sure that Janus are not going to be able to get the chance to play on this hero. Most likely, Team Hawk will stick with the same old bands of Matilda, Angela. And then after that, we will see what comes next. Actually, x Borg second ban by Niners. Was, I'm wondering if they are willing to invest a band into the Benedetta because Team Hawk is one of the few teams that is willing to first face the Benedetta. Mm -hmm. I think Niners should try and lock it in for themselves, if anything. First he actually does still play a pretty okay Benedetta. Mm, I don't disagree with that. I do think that at least Niners within the first phase should consider what the EXP is supposed to be. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying it should be Arla, right? I definitely think that Niners, if they want to have a bit of an identity rather than just looking for power picks and hope that if you mix and match it enough that it's going to work out, I do feel that they need some kind of lane priority at the very minimum as a starting foundation so that Max can actually contest for these neutral objectives. I agree. We need that synergy overall because, like, they're drafting. They, there's some plan going on, I think, in that last game, but it's still not quite solid enough. Looks like they will ban out that Barat. It was a problem for them because it was very difficult for them to break through the front line of Team Hack, especially when paired up with the Ra. So we'll see what they prioritize now. This could be a Frederick angle again for Max. They did ban out two of his biggest. Uh, Biggest counters, I guess, right? No export, no barats, Niners. They have the tendency to just first pick the uh, the Fredrin, if not the Nolan. So I am thinking it could go down that route, which means that if you're Team Hawk, you can go back for the same Farmers Harith if you so desire. Hmm, it wouldn't be too bad, definitely. Hmm, I do think also like they can still consider things like the Paxia yeah, here. No like it's still a good counter to things like the Fredrin, let them one. play faster. We see the chip being banned out again, so the bans for the side of Team Hawk still going to be the same as the previous game. And the start for Niners is still going to be the same with that Fredrin. It's happening all over again! This time with a very slight change, Barat's being taken out. So now, what is Team Hawk going to do? Oh no, there's no Barats, but I mean there's Martis if you want to play directly into Fredrin. I suppose. Always the Boxia. Yeah. There's the Akai, I believe we saw the Akai uh, yesterday. That was against Niners. Barracuda against Niners, yes, they picked the Akai, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the Akai as well. I thought you were talking about Hakan White. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Deja Vu. They already played a series yesterday. <laughs> now they're going to go for the same thing this time around, except it's, it's not going to be an Enchanter Rita. style support. It's going to be a hard team fighting engage support. Minotaur and as well as a farm is the natural combo between the two. I think, I mean, if you want to go for a Valentina, kind of looking good right now. you got two big alts to play with. Valentina is definitely a very valuable pick for Niners right now. I feel like they could also consider contesting the Benedetta as of right now. Just to really lock Team Hack into a full team fight composition, then they could macro the map a little bit. Yeah, I think you take the Benedetta right now. 
You can even go Arla Benedetta if you really want to double down wow. on it. But probably too much to ask. I think Benedetta plus like a mage. Lilia wouldn't be too bad of an option as of this point. Yeah. Just get strong opening picks for your team, and then you can start targeting down a uh, Team Hawk's remaining hero pool. Valentina and a ton. Okay, I can roll with that. Man. Man, at least uh, was, uh, there's so much priority for Zavs, right? Again, there's no reason for them to actually show what their go uh, what their goal laner is supposed to be here. It's not like uh, Tan is known to be a super lane heavy, do uh, lane dominant type of marksman in the gold lane as well. It's just what he's comfortable with. Gaze upon the edge. Go for Nolan this time. Ooh. We talked about the Janus assassin. <laughs> you ban his Baraz. All right, it's time to pull out the Nolan. That's pretty scary as well. Natan doesn't have a lot of tools to escape from that Nolan here. So, could be a pretty good target for Team Pack to start getting snowballs on going. That's going to be the first phase of picks concluded. We're heading into the second phase of bans right now. Team Hawk, looking at their opponents, still going to be eager to get that EXP and roam. I wonder, I wonder if the Benedetta does need to be banned out by Nines. I think you can still consider, right? Like, if not the Planetetta, what else is going to threaten? I suppose the Lapu is one thing. The Team Hawk, they're going to oh, target down course. on the Florin first. It's the Florin. The Florin was the problem last game, man. If it not as the Florin, we would have won. Not as walking her. up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it probably did cause Team Hawk a little bit of problem because, like, the Bloom coming in, anti-heal not really kicking in, could have probably kept uh, the members of Niners a bit. Uh, topped up longer than you'd expect. So, understandable somewhat. Espe oh yeah, actually, now that they're playing Nolan as well, yeah, the, the blue makes a lot more sense to get rid of. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think that at the very least, Team Hawk's still holding on to their... Terizla, uh, smart. Yeah, Terizla also one of the Iris special. But then Team Hawk is going to get first pick on this one. So I think Niners, they probably still have to get rid of the Benedetta, which is the only other thing, and then play Paquito into Ceci, maybe? Or I think you can take the C. Uh, if you still want to play against the Benedetta, the CC isn't that bad of a direct matchup. We've seen that a few times. I think the first time it was... We really see uh, that matchup go in CC's favor was Havos against... Man, who's... Uh, it was, it was, I know, I know, I know. Niners, I can, right? I could see it. No, oh, no, it wasn't the Niners. It was, uh, it's not coming to me. It's not coming. Oh, wait, no, it, it was right. The it was yes, the Niners. Yet 3 was taking, taking hella punishment yeah, that game. The Havas against Yet 3. I mean, yes, that could be an option, but that's mainly be due to priority, right? You're, you need to be able to trade really effectively against the Benedetta. So if she does leave the lane first, at least she's walking away with a quarter. Uh, at, a, at, a mi at a minimum, half her HP. Yeah, being able to get these winning lanes, we're definitely seeing the value of it overall. I think a lot of the games we've witnessed today, uh, a lot of early game advantage is just given up when you're not able to draft any sort of winning lane at all on the map. So keeping that in mind, we do see that Team Hack have banned out that Grok. So that's going to remove any possibility of Barbosa playing own. aggressively oh. to try and invade. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay, he actually banned Arlot, which would have gone into Iris's. Uh, gone towards Iris if they pick it up. But Benedetta's still up on the table. I think Niners, they much rather deal with the Benedetta overall so that uh, Team Hawk doesn't have a second layer of a team fight setter. Uh, they already have the Minotaur. Yeah, and then they can just go for. I mean, they can show gold. They can show gold here, right? Uh, they can go. I, I think Harith not too bad in the, in these types. Ooh, actually, Harith might be a little <laughs> bit awkward. He can go for if he wants to. Goes for the carry instead to deal with the major tank. Yeah, I think that's a smarter option because as Harith, you need to be able to kind of close the distance with your Chrono Dash. And Valentina is just like, I'm a mid range mage. How convenient. This means that Team Hawk gonna be prioritizing to keep. Iris is hero until the very end so that they are guaranteed to win the EXP lane matchup. I think not a bad idea at all. If you're able to unlock the EXP lane early and help out with that first turtle, then Nolan can really get that snowball going. So they want to see what E3 is going to play before they pick theirs. I think you take a Benedetta or the Thamus, which isn't that bad of an idea for Niners. There's not much left in the, the tank. Oh, they are going to go for the Edith and the Yudong. So Edith for the me. single target now. It's going to make life slightly harder for uh, Janus and Saken as they, the range. 
uh, doesn't help them either. But this Yidong, I like it. Now you have some backline access. Yeah, I I was thinking maybe arguably with Franco to a certain degree, right? I was thinking that some way to kind of disrupt your opponents to be able to like keep yourself alive in a lot of these sen in a lot of these situations, right? You need to be in a safe spot, and I'm thinking that Franco, at least with the Iron Hook, he's able to pull people away from that Nether Realm range and maybe look for a play, and also just deter Nolan from ever walking up too close, right? So we'll see. Now, Team Hawk, they're going to be locking in the Lapu Lapu on their side to commit to this dive. So to see that both teams having XP laners that have almost the same job. Get to the back line, get rid of the core members of the, on the enemy team and just try and secure the win in these big fights. I'm liking the draft form. Niners uh, in for game number two. Yeah, I think that the lineup overall for both teams is a lot more balanced going into this. There's some clear options here. Team Hack wants to be able to get that early snowball by pairing up the Nolan with the Lapu Lapu to get big team fights around the Minotaur. While the Niners do have some good tools to be able to catch out any member of their opponent that dives too deep and their own dive in the form of Yetri on this Yuzong as well. Team fights gonna be pretty chaotic, gonna be pretty messy, and we are all here for it. Quite a series. Again, Niners, they're teetering on the line. If they lose this, it is straight off the plank. They need to keep it together and force that game number three as we head into the land of down for game two of this best of three. Niners once more staying on that blue side. Team Hawk on the red. Well, we're here in the land of dawn. Now, let's see where the buffs are. They're going to start on both purple buffs, so they're going to be ending on the opposite sides of each other. Max is going to be heading in towards the bottom side of the map. Janice to the top side of the map. Looks like gold is going to be on that top side, so EXP prioritized for the side of the Niners. Alexia doing some good damage here onto Zay and Barbosa. Both teams matching in terms of rotation right now, but Janus obviously going to be clearing just a little bit quicker, already invading some of the smaller camps on the Niners. Oh! Instant Knee of Shadow is a petrify. That is what you want to see from the Niners. First blood going over to Zay. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Nothing I can say about that play to make it better. It was just very clean. Walked up. Abuse your level two. Make sure you're utilizing this Yuzong's passive. And also the Edith, right? Very, very strong with these early catches. You have to give respect to Edith. The control, sometimes without Purify, you're as good as dead. Oh, Niners being able to get a nice start here. Hopefully, they'll be able to snowball that a little bit more if they want to keep themselves in this game. The fact that Yetri was able to get an assist from it as well will give him some advantage in that EXP lane, especially around that first hurdle fight, which is where we will see Janus try to make some pickoffs. We saw Janus walk out from that bush. That's why the Barbosa is taking up a lot, a bit more space. Top side as well, Zaz doing pretty fine against Sakin. The wave is constantly shoved towards his turret. But Turtle spawning in the bottom side seems like Max is the first to arrive. We see already the rotations onto the EXP lane. This is going to be where the mid laner rotates to get level 4, giving level 4 in the mid lane to their roamer. Looks like Zay, Yeatri going to be the ones to hit that first, which means that Turtle control will actually start with the Niners. Wow, instantly using the Black Dragon from Turtle. Goes over to the Niners, Noir forced to flicker. He doesn't have his ultimate just yet. He's going to be flipped back into an Earth Shadow. The Nether Realm only delayed the inevitable as Yeatri fires the kill. Iris hits the backline with the dive, but the damage is insufficient. Flicker committed once today, but gets nothing. Ah, uh, the passive, the passive leap ends up hitting a creep instead of finding Zay. That's actually so sad after all that. Even Iris committing the flicker as well. Ah, he might have been able to find a trade, but this is good for the Niners at least, right? Yeah, very good, in fact. It was a weird rotation, all things considered, from Team Hawk. You would think that they'd invest a couple more resources to make sure that Iris hit level 4 first so that they could control the turtle. But because they didn't do that, Niners hit level 4. They got the turtle easily. Team Hawk still tried to force the fight after Noir was already taken out. It was just bad decisions. Let's see how long these bad decisions are going to last for. Sokken already finishing off that corrosive scythe. Uh, doesn't look like he's getting a lot of leeway here, but that's to be expected, right? Sakin is going to need some time to scale up. 50 more seconds until the next turtle is actually going to spawn. We are seeing... Oh, oh. Shows in the mid lane first, not waiting for an ambush, as a matter of fact. Janice just looking for farm. 
Yeah, I'm liking Niners a lot more proactive. That's what we want to see, right? Can Niners dictate the game? Can they make Team Hub play at the tempo? So far, Niners, at least in the first turtle fight, they have achieved just that. Every single lane going in their favor, Yetri ahead of Iris, uh, Max is ahead of Janus. Not something that you usually see. A Fredrin being ahead in terms of experience against a Nolan. Yeah, that first turtle fight really affected Team High because again, when you are on something like a Nolan, when you have so much team fight with the Minotaur and the Lapu Lapu, you expect to almost always win out that very first turtle fight. So the fact that Team High gave up so much and didn't get anything in return means that they're already playing on a bit of the back foot. Barbosa doing a good job trying to force the retry out, while Max just on the turtle. Gonna allow them to get the turtle for sure. Noir intercepted. Such an early Minoan's Fury. Yetri was going to be sacrificed by the stolen Nether Realm to keep Yetri alive and he flies away as a big black dragon. Team Heart responds with their own Nether Realm as Iris is going to catch Yetri at the back. The retreat will be there. The Niners still get one kill and the turtle. I think Niners are definitely still the ones in control of all this. Yes, trading Yetri for Noir is not very worth it. But they're still able to get the turtle. They're still able to exert pressure onto Team Hawks because they're not really being able to straight up win these team fights. Janus not getting the snowball that he's looking for, and Noir getting squishier every single time he drops. And stuck in it's the target. Barbosa is just a bit short with the Earth Shatter. That means top tier one can be fed over to Zao. Yep. And down on bot side, they're trying to get the trade themselves. Wait, actually, do they secure the kill? No, no. they do not. They just chunk out Janus, and Yetri is able to protect the bot side tier one. And 1v2, and Yetri walks away with almost half his health left. The rotations for Team Hawk are feeling kind of weird here. Like, okay, you get the EXP lane, but why do it when Iris is pushed up all the way into the tier one instead of, like, I don't know, giving Sak in a hand when you know that he's basically 1v3 in his lane? Team Hawk are trying to prioritize, I feel like, the wrong parts of the map, and then they're not really even earning anything. Well, I, I think considering that Niners have only developed a 2.6k lead, it could have been it could have been a lot worse considering that it's 4 and 1 right now. I, I, I think that, especially for Hawk, they want to minimize the interaction with the Niners for now until they start getting their first couple of items, right? Especially when we're when we start looking at the way that the Niners are being proactive now, realizing that Team Hawk has kind of let them walk around them. I feel like this is a good move from the Niners and Hawk looking to respond on the top side. I want to at least secure something for Sake, but Yetri is not going to let them do so. So that turret stays. Iris is on the bot side. Meanwhile, Noir again having to use the middle of very early. In fact, Sake even recalls. So this fight is already over before it even started. Noir has to flicker the safety. Yetri commits for it, finds the kill, gets pulled back, but Zay keeps him alive with the Nether Realm. Iris is looking for a kill, even flickers for it. Yetri is the target, but they're gonna try to protect Yetri. Ooh. Leads away with the Furious Dive, still ends up going down. Meanwhile, Niners already got the turtle, and they might even get more than just that. Iris is now stuck in place, fed over to Zay's. At the end of everything, Team Hawk still ends up taking a bad trade. Yep, a pretty awful trade indeed. But Carrie looking to salvage that, right? Trying to make sure that the goalie doesn't extend over too far as the rest of Team Hawk are scrambling around trying to live. They see up. Oh, the radius not that huge. But it's fine. Most important thing is Niners getting the mid tier one. I believe Zavs took care of that. And this opens up so the map. So much more for Niners. Sure, we lost the bottom tier one, but it's a very small price to pay. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a good trade for them here because they are really pushing Team Hawk back now. You can see that Dan is not even having enough map control to actually contest for that purple buff means that the net worth lead is really going to start expanding here for the Niners. And there's not a lot that Team Hawk can do about it. Noir ha is being 0-4 means that the Minotaur doesn't actually contribute all that much in these team fights. And these stolen Nether Realms coming out of Zay are actually really clean in terms of timing. They are extremely effective right now, and I think that Team Hawk needs to recognize that. Especially, it's it's basically whoever drops down the Nether Realm first is bound to lose, right? There's just so much counter engage. Uh, there's just so much counter engage to expect from the side of the Niners. They have ways to kind of predetermine the tempo. Hawk, on the other hand, right? They've got that one big combo and the supporting cast around it. But Socket isn't in a position where he's got max items and can shred. Where he can one v five and shred everybody till they die. And even then, Zavs, he's getting a lot closer to that point compared to Socket. So much closer. What, almost a 1k go advantage over the carry. In terms of experience, Zav's 
two levels ahead at this point in time. So so many uh, incidents where Niners, they just walk up, try to stick onto Noir and force out the Minoan Fury very early on. I think that Team Hug in multiple occasions were just not ready to follow up the rest of their abilities. They didn't feel like they can't afford to do so. This Lord started by Niners and Team Hug start they are turning the balls in their court, but immediately petrified and furious die. Virus forced away this Lord, secured cleanly by the Niners. Niners are playing really clean, actually. Like, this is the performance we're expecting to see from them. This is the growth we want to see from them. In fact, it's so impressive the fact that Team Hawk has been put so far in the back foot. They've unfortunately tried to force a little few too many team fights. And it's weird that they would try to stick around to contest that turtle when clearly Janus is not ready to go for it. Oh, I'm gonna try and fight Year 3. Not exactly the wisest option. Can't do much about it. I mean, I think that Niners, if they get an inhibitor, they're already gonna be pretty happy, right? The outer targets are basically guaranteed. I mean, how is Team Hawk gonna force anything? You, you have to rely on Noir to get some sick minimum one fury, but that requires him to invest the flicker. Which in this case, I don't see any angles for that to happen. At least they can do is to protect the inhibitors. Niners, the rest of the team out, they will commit everything possible, but Niners aren't gonna make them easy. It will make them earn it. In fact, again, you know what Fury played it out so early on that inhibitor will stay. Team Hawk barely keeps it. Pretty good defense, all things considered, but with another minion wave now walking off, this inhibitor is basically confirmed dead. Niners overextending? Barbosa does have the ultimate. He is fine. So playing on a knife's edge. And meanwhile, Janus is uh, trying to get as much resources as he can. Steals the purple buff away, hits 13 off of it. Oh, looking so good so far. 6.7, some steadily growth coming in from the Niners. 6-2 overall kill score, and I feel like Team Hawk, they're gonna start. If, during this time, mid to late, that's where it's going to feel like they're scaling off until Saken hits max items, right? And until then, I think that Niners very straightforward game plan. Just stick to what they're doing. They don't really need to do much to take the lead over Team Hot from this point onwards. And they even have a close angle once this Lord spawns. Yeah, signs of life for the Niners. 60 seconds until the next Lord spawns. I mean, this... I think he's put Niners in a very, very comfortable position. One inhibitor down on the bottom lane. Uh, and the uh, unfortunate thing is that the Lord is spawning on the bottom side, so it's easier for Team Hawk to manage the equilibrium the Niners, they are taking up the entirety of that top part of the map. Things are not looking good for Team Haki. Saken is going to get that Demon Hunter Sword. We see Lightning Chunkian for Lexia as well. Max actually very far ahead once again, but this time he is actually safely far enough that he can do so. Just taunting against Team Hang, knowing that they are very in control. A 7k net worth lead is nothing to scoff at at this stage of the game. In another 20 seconds, they should be able to secure the Lord without much contestion. And while Team Hawk does have pretty good counter engage for that high ground defense, the Zay has been doing a great job. Like that Nether Realm advantage Team Hawk should have just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it really doesn't. And I think that it's just, again, they need to just get a traditional front to back. If they can do that, I think it should be A-OK. -okay. Go, Lord number two. Nine is starting on it first. They want Team Hawk to be the one to pull the trigger. And we've seen multiple occasions where Team Hawk, they're losing more than they get. Look at where the tree is standing. Direct access to the back. They know where Socket is. There we go. Niners pull the trigger. Barbosa with the conceal as well. All to zone Team Hawk away and let South work on it. Noir is going to commit with a Minoan Fury. The rest of Team Hawk, A follow in time and Zay replies with a Minoan Fury of his own. Lord for Niners, Iris, desolate and isolated. Tries to go for Zab and Zab even has the time to recall in his face and his Niners with two kills. I think we are witnessing the beginning of the end here for Team Hawk. They are two man down. The Lord is pushing down bottom. They only have two inhibitors left standing. And it's clear from that last fight they don't have enough damage to actually put up a fight. One last push from the Niners. Looking for a lifeline. Janus, his best attempt. Insufficient, Lord crashing in, one last go round from Team Hawk, but they are just falling, and Niners have found a lifeline! An opportunity, a chance here. They equalize the score one to one. One step away from securing some points, and maybe a victory for the Niners.
definitely looking a lot cleaner overall as a five-man squad. And Team Hawk, unfortunately, not just disrespecting their opponents, but not being given the opportunity to find anything that their draft is looking for meant that they were already put on the back foot from the very beginning. Could be the beginning of a resurgence for the Niners. Could be the beginning of Niners really finding their momentum. They so much more comfortable in that mid lane. Barbosa stepping in when they need them the most. Now we get one more game gifted to the Niners. In fact, gifted to Earth, but earned by the Niners. Mm -hmm. They've worked hard for this one. That last game, made sure that they completely shut out Team Hawk and any of their advances and whatever momentum they actually generated. And sadly, Ah, it's just, it just wasn't enough. It just shows that it's still difficult despite having an S-tier assassin. Mechanics and all, it's hard to find holes when your opponents are doing very good at just blocking you. And it, it makes you wonder where was this during Game 1, right? It felt so messy from both teams in Game 1. Honestly, if we saw this cleaner execution coming out of Niners, Team Hawk may have not even stood a chance in that very first game. It's that much of a difference overall. So I'm honestly shocked. I'm very surprised. Like, where did this come from? Uh, I, I I suppose they maybe that switch has truly flipped a Niners head, right? I, I myself is, was skeptical of it. How much could you change? But I guess Niners just got to figure it out somehow between game one and two. And it's also pretty nice to hear the Ultras finally cheering for the team winning a game instead of just being heartbroken time and time again. Gotta hit backstage this time. Finally, to Niners camp after such a long time and who better to get the MVP title than the man who got promoted from MAL is Zay. Um, not exactly a debut match, but still a very important and very impressive performance coming out of this brand new players from the Niners roster. 3-0 and 6, nothing to scoff at, 100% kill participation, but those Netherrealm timings made all the difference. If they didn't have that, then Team Hawk would have had so much more utility to play around with. I mean, you can see by his build, right? Third item, Winter Trungent. He was like, I'm not go I don't want to die. I just need some a little bit of damage, a little bit of CDR, and I'm good. I mean, first of all, Boots, and then Enchanted Talisman, and then a Divine Glaive. This man is committed. And a big confidence boost, not just to Niners, but to this young man himself, right? He's, he's not... He's playing in a completely different league. This is the, as big as a stage as it gets and getting a clean victory, a dominant one over a team like such as Team Hawk is definitely going to really boost Niners' morale. Now it's about carrying that to the very end. That's where the true test begins. It's how you finish. Ooh, are they going to finish strong right now? It does feel like a much more balanced drafting phase in comparison. Team Hawk might have bitten off a bit more than they could chew with this one. And it is weird to see considering the amount of praise that we heaped onto the side of Team Hawk before this match started. Their gameplay has not been clean here. It feels so weird. It feels so weird seeing Team Hawk in this posi position. I could understand that, okay, you have a bad start, but this was just to a certain extent Niners slowly choking out Team Hawk. Ha Team Hawk didn't really give them any room, played it perfectly and the only two deaths was on Yetri, but that's fine, right? Yet the both times Yetri died was because Iris committed everything mm -hmm. just to kill him. Yeah, committed a little too much even sometimes. I don't know. I think that at the end of the day, Team Hawk, gotta look at the draft one more time, gotta start understanding why some of these picks, especially in this particular order and combination, not necessarily the best against what Niners have, right? Valentina should always be a consideration for those who plan on playing Paramus and as well as Minotaur. Having both down sounds like a good idea, but there's still plenty of ways to actually counter it. It feels so weird that they would go Paramus Minotaur when they know that Valentina is still open in the pool. Like, it's literally the one hero you shouldn't pick these two heroes into. And it's not as if Lexia's hero pool was being hard targeted either. Like, they could have still gone like the Lilia against the Fredrin, and it would have been absolutely fine. So, the fact that they forced it regardless. And then, I don't really understand why Iris was diving so deep to get kills because it's not really worth it at that point. He should be buying space for the rest of his team instead of throwing his body for one extra number. It's weird. You can see the the overcommitment, the obsession even. He's like throwing flicker ultimates all for Yetri and Yetri was like what? Like 10-5% health, right? And Iris 
still gave his all just to find Yetri, and he doesn't even make it out alive. And that's something that Team Hawk probably needs to kind of talk about during this break. It feels so, so off compared to what they show us in Game 1. Cool come collected, yeah, but a bit disrespectful. Perhaps after Game 1, they realize that, okay, we actually can't really mess around as much as we did. Mm -hmm. And then they switch it up to a team fight comm in Game 2, and it completely fell apart. Yeah, I felt no direction, not much of a guide. It, it's tough for Lexia actually to make the call because it feels like it's a good idea, but it's under condition that you have enough damage to cut through your opponents. And without Sake or Janus in those positions to do so, too difficult to actually make it work. I think Noir just felt quite lost in this game. So many he times. Did. Yeah. A lot of early Mino and Fury. I, I wonder what the cons was like because Noir, he was getting pressure every time, and I think Niners realized that it is so easy to force a reaction out of Noir, they just started tackling him. They just started poking at him every chance they get. And they just used the absence of this big team fight all to really clamp down on Team Huck. Like, the Minuit Fury has just felt like they were committed quite randomly in some cases. Yes, he's just gonna pop it out sometimes when he's getting bursted, but other times, the team's not ready, they don't have enough damage, Janus is not in position. I don't know. I, I'm saying that it's weird a lot of times, but it's weird. Like, this is not the team hack that we were expecting to see after the break, considering their performance before it. And Niners, I'm honestly surprised at how much the switch of Zay and Barbosa coming in has actually affected the way they're approaching this early game. True, true. Never really thought of that, actually. I mean... Could they have? Uh, no, 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 no. I will say. I'll save it for the upcoming draft. I'll save it for the upcoming draft here because I think that uh, uh, at the end of it, not exactly the greatest game for the side of Team Hawk. Not a much, but much more directive and assertive game coming up from Niners. Right? All the things that we were lacking in game number one, we did get to see a little bit more of that in this game, whether it be for Team Hawk and especially for the Niners. But coming up to game three, let's set some expectations, right? I'm guessing that Team Hawk probably not the most happy about that loss. When are they going to move over to the blue side? I think you do it like right now for the third game. Get priority picks for a team. I think perhaps the opening pick, I I think it was like a Minotaur Faramis or something mm -hmm. that really locked them into this team fight comp, uh, which a lot of times doesn't leave you much room, especially when you're on red side, right? When you start really putting yourself in a position where you kind of have a fixed playstyle you want to go for, it limits what you can kind of select in the second phase. Maybe Team Hawk wants to open them up a bit more, get that better than our first phase. It has worked out for them. Gave them a lot more flexibility in that second pick phase, even on red side. I've always agreed with the opinion that if you're going to pick two heroes at the same time, you really should not reveal whether you're going for like a skirmish or a team fight composition. When you go for is Minotaur, it's like the most obvious thing. Okay, we're going to draft in a way that can respond to big team fighting. Don't give them that information. It's not as if either of these heroes are going to be... Like, maybe you pick the Minotaur first, if you really want it. And then you know that Valentina is open, they're obviously not going to pick Valentina Faravis. Just leave it as an option. I, I, I feel very strongly about this, because I had better expectations going into this event. I mean, to be fair, I don't mind if Team Hawk just decides to blind pick strong laners at this point, right? Yeah. They did it in game number one, you might as well do it in game number three. I, I, I think it's difficult to get away, I, I think it's difficult to get away with, but when you have strong laners, and especially with laners who are good at doing their jobs, this, become, this now becomes a battle of, like, how do we kind of keep, you know, Max from affecting the side lanes? How do we, like, restrict the movements? And how do you stop the tidal wave of the Ultras, right? I just We just heard this loud cheer from the Niners can They definitely are feeling reinvigorated for this game. Oh, the sweet taste of victory. Just one more game away. And the fact that they can pull off such a win against Team Hawk is a testament of the potential the Niners actually had in this lineup. Yep. It's going to be able to find it again. We were talking about how Team Hawk is kind of like that standard, that gatekeeper coming into this. And well, uh, we should probably not highlight these kind of things as much next time. Either way though, Niners definitely needed this victory. They needed something that they could base their performance off of. Zav doing a good job getting that GPM, getting that damage dealt, being safe in that back line. Iris, again, I... You expect a little bit better from him, like you don't, you don't see this man jump in and get those kills specifically trading his life these days, and yet, 
that's what happened. She's playing Lapu like Benadella. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the, too used to it. The fact the muscle that he, memory. The fact that he took the most damage instead of Noir. Oh. Ah, that's that's what I, that's where I draw the line. Noir just got turned into beef a little bit too quickly most of the time. <laughs> like Iris was at least surviving and tanking the damage. Noir was just getting turned into dinner. Basically, I mean, I, I think it all starts, it, it all boils down to the early Lithal Waters, the early engages, and the pre four fights, right? I think that's where it became super, super difficult for the side of Team Hawk. They just did not want to back down. They were going to fight no matter what, and they were willing to commit a lot to it, even if they aren't in position to do so. And the one was getting punished over and over again. And yeah, this one, this is where I say it's too much from Iris. <laughs> sure, he. Sure, the kill goes over to him, but they lost more than just that. But yeah, Noir was getting punished so much. Even at, at what the first minute wave, right? Gets caught with a petrified, gives first blood. Then at two minute mark, when the turtle spawn, he shows up at level three, gets killed again by Ye Tree, and then Niners go for the invade, and Noir gets caught again. So, Tima, it's time for them to reset. And while well, Niners, they're on the momentum right now. They're on a they're on a roll. You gotta know when to cut your losses in games like this, right? There's no reason for them to try that hard to get a win when they know that they don't have the damage necessary to really, like, solidify it for themselves. Like, a lot of the time, Janice went in, did some damage, realized, oh, I can't pick anyone off here, he's out. But he's the only one that can get out a lot of the time. And that just ends up losing you so much more than you can possibly hope to gain. Definitely a thinking moment about weighing your options in terms of what you're going to trade and sacrifice later on, right? Two minutes and 42 seconds until the next and final game of this series is going to start. I I don't know. I don't know what to expect from this one. I really don't. Because for all we know, it could just be... Uh, uh, we were talking about, oh, maybe uh, Team Hawk goes onto the blue side. They might still pick red side and be like, one more time, one more time. This time I'll get it. This time I'll get it right. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the series where, I mean, I had certain expectations coming in, you know, I want Niners to really show something, right? Mm -hmm. And Team Hawk to be that dominant force or that hidden dominant force. And right now what I'm getting is a comp comp I, I threw everything out the window. <laughs> it's it says defy no, It's my a good description. Just throw it all out the window. We have no idea what's about to happen here. And maybe it's better we don't try to predict what's going to happen here because clearly we have been wrong all day. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. The Some fact that this is the only this is the only series today that went the full distance. Yeah. It's shocking. Yes. Yes, it is pretty shocking indeed. And I don't know, maybe some may say it's a curse, others a blessing. But I think for these two teams, especially with what is on the line here in terms of their overall scores, for Team Hawk, this could mean for them to actually go further on into the tournament and actually maybe even crack top two if they keep up with this current pace and look to get a couple more 2-0s here and there to really make up the difference. I mean, Niners definitely have a lot more to lose, right? It's either the best you get is maintain a slot, the worst is you get relegated. So. For Niners, there's a lot more at stake. I, I'm just glad, it's great to see the audience fired. I mean, that was the Niners side, by the way. So, uh, bring in, you know, the yeah. kids are here as well. The ultras, you can hear the snare drums beat, uh, snare drums going off. Oh, like again, like what we mentioned, it's not just the Niners players that really needed a victory of any sort, it's the fans as well. They needed a reason to believe again, a reason to put their stocks behind their team. And obviously, we expect that you... Ideally, we want fans to just put their support behind their favorite teams regardless of how they're performing. But it's not that simple sometimes. You re we really want those victories. We want to be able to talk about our favorite teams, our favorite players with our friends. And if they're not doing well, the spirits are just down. I just want to quickly point out that guy right there is a winner. Not the guy with the jawline. His jawline was great, but the guy behind him, <laughs> what he said, he showed, last season I came with my best friend, the BFF. Okay. This season, I'm attending with my girlfriend. Hey, that man's hey, a winner. Hey, hey. The true winner. He's going up in life. He's going up on life. Oh. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, next season, I came in with my boss. <laughs> what? I was about to say, transition. I came with my wife. And then after that, hey, we got a family. I got <laughs> hey. to bring my kids here. Now, the only thing the only thing he needs to complete that cycle is his team winning. They just need to win. They just need yep. to win. Team Hard Rex side again. So. I guess Why? I can't say we're surprised. Who said there are no like, what's the thought process? I blame the coach. <laughs> <one>. <laughs>
Ah, you know, it's close to right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. They can only be on the right side. If it ever goes, uh, it goes to blue side, that's where it's like, call it the twin brother. Um, um, or maybe they've tried going to blue side, but then a graphics team was like, wait, isn't right means he has to be red side? <laughs> it, 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 it's confusion. They made a special request. <laughs> uh, before Iman Hawk locks in, <laughs> Coach Wright is like, I only have one condition. <laughs> Give me red side. Always. We're always going to draft on the red side. Let's just say, a red side is always the right side. And if we ever have to go blue side, I have to rebrand. Look, and, and that's just too much trouble. <laughs> if we go blue side. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, hopefully things are going to go better. I'm seeing the family. I'm seeing the expert. I am also seeing the Barats once again getting banned out for the Niners. Team Hop sticking to the same bands like they have been in the past three games now. All right, first pick, Vedrin. <laughs> yep, no surprise right there. That's that for sure. Question is, is that Fireman's going to get picked? Or do you take the Valentina away from Zay? I don't. I feel like it's just better to leave it behind. You do as neither. A whole. <laughs> you do neither. You just go for double flex wow. picks. Why not? <laughs> what? Are they even thinking this? You just wait. need all the stuns in the world. Wait, wait, wait. But 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 why? But why? Yeah, but why? why? What I would have. The... I would have preferred so much more if it was like. Actually, you know what? One of it plus like a strong pick, right? Like a. Uh, I don't know. You can go for Faramis if you want. You can even go for Harif. For, but Ruby Arlet? I feel like they're trying to go for a hard read or something of the sort, right? Well, what exactly is this? At least they have the flex matchup. They have the flex matchup for sure. It can go into the EXP. Both can go into the roam as well. Multiple different options, both of which some stronger than others. If the lane is going to be losing, I'm guessing Ruby is going to show it. Show it. If not, it's going to be Arlet. So Niners, they just go for what's been working with them, right? Lock in <laughs> the Natan once more. Get the Minotaur on their side to team fight. Yeah, it's like, whoa, I see an Arla and a Ruby. Y'all want to start team fight and, and get in our face. I might as well pick a Minotaur. You know what? Might as well triple down, right? Pick a Guinevere right now. <laughs> Let's triple flex this draft. Triple flex, triple flex. The draft. I've seen it happen in MAL. Let me tell you, it's not good at all. That team lost. <laughs> it's not good. That team lost in like under 10. Uh, well, that's not 10 what minutes. I was expecting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Which proves that flexing too much, you're just out drafting yourself. But the huh? board, ah! Huh? Okay, okay, uh, two big tanks on the side of the Niners without having to commit to a carry. Yeah. And you can still go for a carry if she somehow makes it through. I don't know. It could be a mistake as well because I'm not seeing some happy faces on the side. <laughs> They're like, wait! They're like, guys! <laughs> Lisa, was that you? Lisa was like, no, it's not me. But wait, I'm the one picking, so it's uh, me. Uh, 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 we'll see, we'll see whether or not it's a mistake in the post-game interview or not, but uh, Definitely a bit of a reaction there. Not 100% sure what that's all about. Let's see what antagonist is going to start drafting for the side of the Niners, at least. So the Bandit Yu Jong, okay, to stop that's the That's fine. That's fine. And still the Lapu, Benedetta, Paquito, you know, some decent picks. Don't think they'll go for the Paquito because the option, uh, the, the uh, presence of the Ruby. The but in respect given to Noir's name with the Cho Ban. They're not changing mm. it. Uh, Wait, why the Cho Ban? Like, Arla and Ruby are confirmed EXP role. Right. But what if? <laughs> but Wait. What? But what if? <laughs> what? Why? What, what, what's Wait. happening? Wait. Wait, you're right. I didn't even think about They're that. They're confirmed EXP role. Hey, yo, have you seen Cho Jungle? Because I play Cho Jungle. <laughs> and that I don't want to see it. <laughs> hey, yo, I won that game, OK? It was classic, but I won. <laughs> it was classic, but I suffers. won. That's just classic, classic for you right there. Dear, dear Lord. They ban out the metadata. They get rid of the Yuzong as well. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 have no, I have no reasoning for it. I want to say maybe that's a mid. Wait, wait, wait. There's Go Arlet. Don't remember. Uh, don't don't forget. To go Arlet is a thing. That is true. I watch them ban like the Grok or whatever and just be completely confused. <laughs> like, 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 Go Arlet is a thing. But ban Franco. <laughs> Kaja. <laughs> Kaja is more of a reasonable yeah. ban. Yeah, yeah, might yeah. as well, right? Yeah, why not? Just, just ban it all. Ban the Guinevere, ban the Grog, ban the Kaja. I, I don't even know. What's the idea? No, no, right. Okay. Ah, okay. So all the Fredrin counters taken away. Okay. At least in the jungle. Baxia's still here though. Baxia's not bad. 
It's not the worst. But what if? <laughs> and what if? What if what? Box here, bro. <laughs> it oh, can't man. be a thing. I mean, Who's, yeah. Who, who, where would the Ruby and Arlen go? Ruby XP, Arlen no, go. Rock, Ar <laughs> rock, paper, scissors over which lane they get. <laughs> You'd be surprised if this Arlen is gold lane. <laughs> oh my god. Arlen just goes gold and farms a lot. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if the carry still somehow goes through. I mean, you can go for a Harif, I suppose. You're gonna the take the Nolan first. Let's give Janice wow, another shot again. at it. Okay. I but mean, they uh, do have more cats, I guess, this time. That's why the Niners banned out the Cho. It all makes sense now, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, the Cho's banned? Let's get no, no, It's not that it makes a difference, but sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Totally. We can go with the XP. I don't know. This one. You know what? I'm thinking of a Thamos. For, Thamos for Niners. Mother, for Niners. I can yeah, respect that's not that. Uh, it's kind of not that good against Gord, though. Oh, it's fine. He'll take a vengeance and call it a day. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that should be fine. Then. He takes vengeance. Like, do you, you, you really want to use that all on me? <laughs> Try me. Try me, nerd. <laughs> the laser just bounces off the the shield. That'd be so funny. That would be. Did. <laughs> Lolita just just standing there like, yo, wait, why even buff me? <laughs> why why do I exist? Even I can't reflect that. Lapu Lapu and as well as farm is standard composition from the side of the Niners. No idea why it's yeah. not decided over this, but. Sure, let's this, see it. This makes much more sense in the way that they're drafting the Minotaur Faramis, right? Now that they're no team pack, probably can't grab the Valentina. Unless they go like, I don't know, Valentina Rome, Valentina Who's the Jungle. XP? We've seen that in the past. I don't know. Wait, why do I even ask that question? Who's the goalie? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's the Claude. Claude! We go back to basics, I guess. Okay, all right, all right. Really? Really wilding out on this one. They went. <laughs> I think this is this is wild, right? Because again, <laughs> it is off of a friction. They're like Ruby Arlet. That's that's the way we're gonna play this, right? Blind picks it as well into the rest of their composition, builds around it, doesn't even consider counter drafting the fact that they have the fire miss in the bag for free. They didn't have to work for it at all. They got the Minotaur on first rotation, and then finally Yetri is like, okay, I'll go with the Lapu, right? It's either it's either the Ruby or it's gonna be the Arlet. Doesn't really matter. Only one way to find out, this series has been unpredictable, but it delivered in its own way. It's the last game of this best of three. Team Hawk against Niners, and once more, Niners on that blue side, Team Hawk on the red. Niners need this win by hook or by crook, and Team Hawk are looking to stop them. Yep, it's gonna be it's gonna be an experience, that's for sure. Honestly, I'm already losing my mind about all of this. I don't feel like I know how to think about what's happening anymore. So I'm just gonna sit back, relax, enjoy, and we will see what this becomes. First the first the omakase. It's omakase style. You know, you don't know what they're gonna give you. You know, you just take it. You just have to eat it up. But you typically expect it to be good. I, I mean... I don't know. They get weird at omakases. That's true. Yeah. Elderly Japanese man with his bare hands handing me food and shoveling yeah. me. Raw food. fish. <laughs> raw fish. Yeah, man. Raw fish in my mouth. I don't know how to feel about that half the time. But speaking of which, look at how, how the way both... Well, actually, purple buffs off and orange buffs start for Team Hawken as well as the Niners, respectively. They will meet each other on this little wander. A little bit slow coming in for Max, but that's to be expected when you're up against the Nolan. And things are going quite standard so far. No invasions, no real uh, intent to commit too many resources as of current as well. We are going to see once again the rotation towards that EXP lane because this is what costed Team Hack their early game in the previous game, not giving enough attention to Iris and making sure that he would hit level 4 first allowed for year 3 to basically dominate and create space that was necessary. Yeah, at least this game, Niners don't get the cheese team hack with a petrified, right? It's, it's a Lapu Lapu, he needs that for regardless. And I, there's really nothing too much you can do against him. Uh, yet, I mean, Iris just can let the wave shove into his, his face. But if you're a Lapu, you can clear waves easily. So I don't see an issue for Niners in X, XP lane. More concerned is how that first turtle fight is gonna pan out. Iris is just gonna freeze this, right? No, yeah, he's I not gonna freeze this. Oh, he oh, yeah, knows he that is. the turtle. No, I, the turtle is gonna start spawning soon. So he's gonna clear. He's gonna clear, right? He's gonna hit level four regardless of whatever they do. And it looks like, hey, Lexia is already level four. 
Cactus mm. is stealing the orange buff from Niners. Okay, there is a purple buff later on, but that means Niners gets priority on the turtle again. Yetri is just gonna leap to the back to look for Leisha to force the flicker out. Yetri, he can stay there for as long as he wants. Iris, final slash, predicted by Yetri. Flickers to safety, turtle for Niners. Okay, all right. First turtle going over to the Niners side. The Niners, the Niner fans definitely are gonna be happy with that. But keep in mind that Janus is a full level ahead of Max because he's not only stole away the orange buff, he's gonna be able to clear his entire jungle side as well. He's gonna end up on EXP. We'll see how much that's going to affect Yet 3 because he now doesn't have retribution and could be a potential pun uh, potential way for Team Hawk to punish the Niners. Yeah, I think it was a smart choice here for Janus to just decide that they're not going to contest the turtle at all because having a Minotaur fair miss to deal with on the opposite side and no Valentina to try and steal the Nether Realm this time means that there's no way they're winning a straight up 5v5. So try and get that level lead by stealing camps. Noir is compromising a lot though. He's almost a full level behind Barbosa. I think he just hit four. Talking about the corrosion side and Yetri again, just his spidey sense is tingling. Jan is hovering around. Yetri is going to look to clear the wave. Even Mystic Gush insufficient. Lacia couldn't control this warrior. Oh, he's trying. Lexia does lose a bit of EXP. Zay is going to be able to level ahead of him. Doesn't look like Lexia is going to be taxing anything. Hands the majority of the wave over to Guar's side, but uh, Saken and Zabs just going at it at this point of time. Entropy, PMI for Saken winning out on this one with the max stack on Art Art Thievery. Gets a this charm off for the wave and damage Zabs. Yeah, look at the experience actually. At least Noir is slightly catching up. Janus continues to power farm to stay ahead of Max, but not that far, honestly. 60% of XP. Uh, Max takes a bit of that uh, mid wave. I feel like Janus needs to be ganking lanes a little bit more here. The earlier gank against Iris didn't quite work, but why not try and go for Oh, the pullback. Barbosa flicker forced out. All right, that's pretty good. That means they can actually try and forcefully contest this upcoming turtle, right? And they don't have to naturally do it really fast. Oh, Barbosa. He's gonna leap away, and they finally shows his face to the rescue. Barbosa is half health, but does have some time to kind of heal back up. Still has the ultimate though. Iris is gonna be the first to leap in. Yeah, three takes the full Mystic Gush to the face. First blood given over to Jan as the turtle also secured oh. by Team Hawk. Yeah, I'm offended. Just missing by inches away from Max. That could have been another kill get handed over to the side of Team Hawk. But now look at the way that they're pushing, right? They're heading down to this bottom side. They want to be able to kind of get the entire plating here. Oh, no. Oh, no, grab Max. He's a sitting dog, and they just get a full come in on him. Now one given over to Iris. Definitely the wrong decision there. But Max not respecting the number of people Team Hack had in the area. You may be a veteran, but there's no way that you're winning out against that. Sakin gonna commit his health and his ult to clear up the wave. Iris in trouble. Should be fine. Just had to expand the flicker. The yeah, tree able to push Iris away at least for now. And Team Hack just off of that. That's short chain of event. Now leading by 2,000 in terms of net worth lead. I mean, at the cost of a lot of battle spells here from majority of their members, right? Let's see. Uh, so far, we've seen the Team Hawk, they get a 2,000 gold lead. All right. Sometimes they even develop into 3,000. Doesn't usually break after that, right? We haven't seen Team Hawk come into a position where, uh, in this series itself, where they're able to develop at least a minimum 5k lead and turn that into an 8 to 10k lead. I think what we are noticing now, though, is now that Team Hack has decided to take a slightly more passive stance, that they're the ones trying to counter engage against the Niners instead of trying to force things out. Niners are looking a little more disoriented. It does. Oh, hold on, Barbosa. Gonna see Lacia. Lacia's because forced out, and he's still gonna get knocked off at the edge. And that's gonna be the sign for Zalfs. Commit the entropy for the kill. Very good pickoff for the Niners. But look at bottom side, Janus. It's working on a tier 2 already, it's gonna take it down. Oh, clean take. Not too bad a trade, all things considered. Yeah, and now Saken, he's, I think he's gotta give this up, right? No, he's not. He's calling in reinforcements as well. Adamant to defend it, Barbosa. No me, no one's fury. They get pulled back. Still the final slash available for Iris. Doesn't, actually already used it early on. This turtle's gonna be contested. Janus will be able to arrive in time. Nice, giving up the space. Yet 3 convinced the ult already. Now it's gonna be Max again getting the turtle and Yet 3 on top of Lacer to try to finish him off. The damage insufficient, but Iris will be given up instead. Niners get a kill and the objective. Not bad. Really, really good stuff. 
I mean, the fact that Iris went down, a little sad, of course, but at the end of it, Niners, they're gonna try their best to break this mid-tier one, and they get Noir underneath the tower even more, just consolation prizes. Noir, what a madman to go for that attempt. You pulled him under your turret, but you have no backup. I feel like these fights are kinda ugly coming in from Team Hawk, if that's one way to put it here. It's like the coordination's not there, the execution is lacking, the decision-making itself is not the same team that we were expecting coming in from those first two weeks of MPL. Niners, they're not playing the most clean as well, but, doing, but they're actually doing a good job of communicating, identifying like which parts of the map they should be playing for, and actually following up on one another. Uh, it's good for TikTok, but not for your game. And, uh, well, Max, actually, still trying to catch up to Janus. Still a full level behind. So at least for Team Hawk, Janus is somehow somewhat holding it together, right? He's the one that cracks open that bottom tier 2, and he's also hard shoving the top, uh, the top wave. He's forcing Niners, especially Year 3, to respond to it. Uh, I mean, Year 3 has to respond to it. He has no choice. Definitely gets the ult for free off of that. But Janus is level 12 compared to Max's level 11. Comparing the other lanes, Iris level 9, yeah, 3 at level 9 as well. And looks like in game time, 8 minutes, 73% leaning towards Hawk. And uh, I'm not so sure about that one, if it's going to go all the way through. Yes, we need Lexia to hit like a, a Mystic Gush of upon all Mystic Gushes, right? It has to land on Barbosa and as well as Max. Maybe if they get a third person, that would be pretty cool as well. But ideally to shred down the tanks. I'm offended was used just to check the bush. The first Lord spawns, so Niners, they know they can posture around this. Zap just got his Holy Crystal. Uh, looks like Team Hawk are basically going to be playing in a style that doesn't really involve a lot of objective farming. They're gonna try and macro the map with Janus and Sakin, which is good, but now Niners trying to shove them away from the Lord. But yet we found Lisa again, a separate fight happens. The main group knocked out by the Maroon Fury, and Janus can't even enter the fight, and Noir desperately tries to run away. Niners forcing Team Hawk away from the pit. Can't do much about that. With, two, uh, with one big battle spell down for Noir, still waiting for his ult to come back up. Unless Sokken can make a heroic play here without his Purify, I don't know. I feel like Janus should be split pushing that bottom lane. Oh, yeah. there's, there's no reason for him to rejoin this fight. Barbosa, he just leaves in like that. He's gonna be sacrificed. Lay Shadow at least had a flicker to get out. Bit of a error from Niners. Now imagine if Janus didn't come up from bot lane. <laughs> they got that catch. He would be hitting the inhibitor right now, and Niners would be forced home. Then he can rejoin. They take the Lord. It's weird. I don't like the rotation. Oh, uh, I mean, let's see. There's still Lord dancing right now. And now Zobs, from what he was pathing down to bot side, that wave builds up. Forced to come back up. The entry is going to come into out again. No Braver Side, no Raging Slash. Get the Landshake go onto Iris. But they gotta make a move. Noir caught Iris. He's gonna show up, but it's Noir that takes the Lord of all people. Team Hard looking to retreat with that small win. And that is just a good enough safety net. Mm. So that hook missed at the end. Uh, the timing was off. Uh, somehow or another, Noir gets the Lord. That I was the true target. It was the true time. At, at the very least, I'm guessing that there was communication between Team Hawk. When I say burst, everyone just throws an ability at the Lord and... Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. It burst Max, though. He is so far away from home, and he should be fine. Janus oh. or a potential pick, but Barbosa scouts that out. Okay. Okay, they get the tier one for free for this. Okay, right. okay. So it all works out at the very end. They're just giving up the space knowing that the Lord is going to be pushing on their side. I would have expected Team Hawk to actually, you know, press on by taking out these outer tar uh, these outer turrets as well, the tier twos especially. I personally want to see how much goal advantage can Team Hawk gain from this, all right? We are now sitting at a 3.5, 3.6-ish goal lead. Janus just stole the orange buff. And Sake and threatening the top inhibitor, so not that bad. Team Hawk getting decent value out of the Lord. Not able to crack the mid-tier 2, though. No, but they're still stuck at 3,000, right? Let's see how they develop this lead even more while we're moving on to the 12th minute of this game. Uh, a lot of the members at this point in time should be getting close towards their fourth... I oh, hold on. That should be uh, fine. Unfortunately, it feels like Janus on this Nolan has just not been having any chance to, like, snowball or get kills on people throughout both games that he has picked it. I mean, 
but, but it's fine, I suppose, because he's opening up the side lanes, right? He's still creating windows of opportunity for Team Hark. Saken oh, almost gets the mid tier too, and he can come back for that later. Zaf's just got the Divine Glaive as well. I mean, the next floor is going to be up in another minute. Oh, this is just going to be that slow push and pull Saken, though. Oh, playing with fire, yeah. BMI, oh. just in time. Just in time. Nobody... Saken. Oh, boy. Nobody can really, like, lock him down for real, for real. And now, let's look at the gold difference and see how much it really is there. Oh, it's mainly coming in from Janice. Well, hold on. Oh, and check with Max. Gets saved. Oh. Bailed out by the Nether Realm. But now, what is Niner's next move? I think it's about falling back. Iris misses the final slash. It could be a counter engage angle. Here comes Barbosa with the knockup. Stock and purifies, but has to re exit the fight. Janice shows up in the back. They're looking for the damage, and they find Zav of all people. 3 4 for Niners. And number four to follow, Team Hawk, with the most important fight in this game. Ooh, they've been looking for that one for a long, long time. And that was a really back and forth skirmish here. Only one minion weight, but five members strong. Can they end this? Final slash into Mystic Gush, that is a gone max also. Expires, Team Hawk. Damn. Somehow pulls it through at the very end. And unfortunately for Linus, they do not cross the line. They fall at the hands of Team Hawk. Hey! Boys, give me a bit of a shimmy here. Wow, wow. Lexia literally just sweeped them out of the way. It's like, all right, I'm done playing. Out of the way, boys. We're going for the crystal. That was well done. Like, Team Hawk, it, their, their fight's up until that point. I'm just going to say it. Did not look very good. But that was the cleanest one we have seen from them all series. And it's the one that's able to secure this match for them. There has definitely been some improvement from the Niners overall. But I think that both these teams still need to go back to the drawing board somewhat. Uh, Faith might be shaken a little bit, especially if you're a Team Hawk fan. Look, watching this series, oh, I don't know how to feel about it. Niners came so close, but yet again falling short of the finishing line. Must be devastating. But at least they know that they've gotten some ingredients right. Yeah, a lot of ingredients right, as a matter of fact. I mean, at the very least for Team Hawk, they're showing the fans like, yes, we are, we, we did not play exactly the best in the world, but we are showing you what we are capable of and how we're going to evolve. Um, either way, you guys know what time it is. Let's throw it over to the interview on stage. Team Hawk sekali lagi membuktikan ini adalah era baru untuk dorang. Dua pebalas satu maintaining top three lagi untuk minggu ketiga regular season. All right, first of all, semua sehat? Alhamdulillah sehat. All right, okay. So Iris, sekarang you guys masih lagi tengah pegang nombor tiga mm -hmm. dalam leaderboard. How are you feeling? How hype? Semua orang dalam Team Hawk dan adakah you rasa benda ni boleh continue sampai ke playoffs? Okay, dengan kemenangan ni kita orang rasa dapat boostkan lagi lah momentum kita orang. So, masih banyak lagi game so kita orang tak boleh terlalu selesa. Kita orang akan cuba belajar dari setiap game tu pasti ada mistake kita akan belajar lah untuk improve next next game. Alright, so actually I just ni out of curiosity lah sebab sebelum um, tak match kedua tadi ada satu video where Lexia cakap that the reason why Lexia masuk Team Hawk is about Iris. Ah, betul, betul. So, I just nak tanya personally, apa yang you nampak dekat Lexia dan kenapa you nak dia masuk Team Hawk? Sebab last season kita orang main tak ada otak kan, so kita orang perlukan otak macam Kiki lah untuk untuk basuh kita orang season ni. Ya. Yeah. Wah, wow. so perlukan otak. Okay lah. Betul. Okay, okay. can we please pass something to Saken? Hi Saken. Hello. Sehat? Sehat. Okay Saken, I nak tahu, baru je habis raya, you balik kampung tak? Saken Kenapa? balik kampung? Kenapa? Uh, baru habis raya, Saken balik kampung? Oh ya. Yeah. Balik? balik ya. Yeah. Dekat kampung, you relax ke you main game? Uh, relax. Wow. Okay so sekarang macam otak fresh yeah. main dekat MPL. Okay Saken, pasukan mana yang you nak lawan di regular season? Uh, I want to rematch against SRG. Why do you want to rematch against SRG? Because I feel like um, belum puas lawan SRG. Pengen lawan lagi. I see. Masa tu Team Hub belum panas lagi. Yeah. Engine belum on. Alright, so guys. Sebelum kita continue kita punya sesi interview, I rasa MVP kita dah ready. So mari kita tengok MVP pelawanan ini dalam 3, 2, 1. Jane, Jane, Jane. 
Iris. <laughs> eh, kenapa buka macam tu? Kenapa buka macam tu Iris? Bagi saya ABB patut kiki ah sebab kalau korang pasan dia salah pick. Yang tip tu. Oh, sek- ah. salah pick. Kita orang suruh pick Nolan tapi dia pick God. Oh, ah. serious? Ya, yeah, sumpah. Ai siap dengar apa ni? Casters tengah back up tau pick tu. Oh, ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, okey. <laughs> Lengsi ah. Macam mana salah pick jadi God dan apa jadi korang menang? Ah, uh, banyak saya fikir kot. Lepas tu nampak Nolan tu just pass tekan dia terus tak tahu God. Situ dah kecut lah. Coach marah tak tadi? Ha? Huh? Coach marah tak? Tak. Coach cakap trust in yourself. Wow! Ini yang coach kita nak. Okay. Let's talk to coach. Coach, a lot of the casters are saying your name is Coach Right. So, your coaching is mostly always right. In your opinion, what did you guys do right today to win? It was a 2-1 game. The last game was kind of close. What did you guys do to win? Uh, we just need to uh, play discipline and respect the enemy. Even though uh, uh, we, kait na na alo kami den yung kalaban namin wala pang panalo sa series. Parang di namin sila minamaliit. Kebaga nila respect parin namin sila. Okay, ni jawapan yang ay sangat sangat suka. Sebab dia cakap walaupun Niners tak menang satu series lagi, dorang tak suka pandang rendah dekat opponent walaupun tak ada kemenangan lagi. Kena treat everyone equally and maksud tu everybody kena main dengan berdisiplin untuk menang game. Very good answer. I like that. Alright, before we wrap things up, okay, can we give it to Aiman? Alright. Okay, Aiman. Since you tengah pakai baju melayu oh, yeah, hari yeah. ni kan, tadi you dekat kasta desk, sekarang you atas pesas. You hari ni ya multi role lah. Okay, apa yang you nak cakap dekat fans-fans uh, Team Hak yang datang ke Stadium MBSJ, sokong you guys? Alright, uh, first of all, minta maaf kami tak dapat full point hari ini. Tapi insya Allah kami cuba bangkit uh, esok uh, menentang Todak. So, apa pun terima kasih banyak sebab sudah datang walaupun kita tengah berhari raya ada open house. Thank you kepada fan Team Hak. Thank you kepada fan-fan JP Niners. Insya Allah kita orang doakan korang juga untuk bangkit balik untuk upcoming weeks dan upcoming game. Terima kasih. Nice. Itu yang kita nak. Alright. So, I akan lepas you guys. Tapi jangan lupa, please, kena bagi duit raya dekat fans-fans yang datang ke stadium MBSJ. Jangan lupa, give it to the people yang tengah pakai baju raya. Ah, Tengok ke depan ni pun ada dah. Alright. You guys can go and get our... Uh, sampul daripada FM kita, you guys dah letak autograph juga. Alright, now that was an interesting match. Perfect way untuk tutup kita punya minggu ketiga hari kedua seru Saturday. Tapi belum habis lagi sebab casters kena borak dan kena dissect. Apa yang jadi dalam game 2-1 ini dan apa Team Hak buat betul? And with that, Casters, silakan. A well-deserved victory for Team Hak. We were wondering why the draft felt so weird. And now we get an explanation. The Gord pick wasn't even intentional. And they still won. Now that it's sinking in after the game, it, it, it just feels so, so outrageous. <laughs> Other Ruby opening, Miss picks Gord, picks Nolan and Claude, and then you see a Cho ban. I don't know what Ancha, Ancha's probably overthinking. I that this game is a roller coaster of emotions, but congratulations, Team Hawk, right? Credits to Iris, right? Imagine that game one didn't go their way. Imagine if Iris didn't end the game, didn't backdoor. I feel like this series would have gone so much more different. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you there, right? Uh, they started off really, really hot. They eventually got too disrespectful. They got put in their place, and then they real and luckily they had a bailout on the, on that game one. Game two, there was no bailout on that one. That was just oh man, that was bad. We made a lot of mistakes, and hopefully we can correct it in game three, which the mistakes occurred outside of the game, <laughs> before the game even began, and it, somehow they're still on top. If you get all their mistakes out before the game starts. 
then you won't have any left for the game itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new strat. It's <laughs> I don't know. You know. You know what they say. If you if you confuse yourself, you confuse your enemies. Yes. Oh, really got into the head. Actually, I really want to know what the coach's reaction is. I want to hear the mic check later on. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you there's something that went on during the mic check. Oh, it's got to be. That's why I was wondering why they were reacting that way. The Gore wasn't the worst pick in the world. At the very least, it could have been a lot worse. Imagine if they picked like Eudora and then this. <laughs> and then it's just, it's just a Type 4 tech pause because we need to remake the lobby. You know? <laughs> Either a Type 4 tech pause or they win anyways. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they just Why play not? it out. That would break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it really would. But uh. an impressive performance nonetheless. Honestly, if you ask me, I feel like watching Team Hawk play in Game 2 felt like we were watching a, just a different team. Like, I don't understand what exactly happened. Like, Game 1, Game 3, Team Hawk, okay, yeah, this is the style we expect from them. It's it's flashy, they be, they're aggressive, but they're also smart. Game two, it was just like, we want to kill. <laughs> I don't, I, that's all I can say. I'll do you one better. You play this series and you cover the team tags, no one would believe you if you, t if you tell me that the winning team is Team Hawk. <laughs> uh, there's no way to know, honestly. There's really no way to know. They definitely play very weird this game. I definitely think that at least for the side of Team Hawk, they just went straight into comfort pits, right? Yeah. They're like, okay, it can't get any worse than this. We got the first two picks down. Like, Saken, what can we do? They banned out the Cho, by the way. <laughs> they banned out the Cho. You can play anything you want. He's like, give me the Claude. He's like, yo, Saken, look. <laughs> Cho ban. And Noir is just sitting there like, what? I <laughs> uh, can't get over that fact. It's 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 a it's a mix of emotions. It's for the sure. ultimate pride, right? Because you've already locked in your hero, and they're still banning your heroes. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's how deep in their head that they got into this match, right? I think overall the macro coming up from the side of Team Hot, good calls coming in from Janice to actually try and go for other things. But once he had once he had a couple of items, he did start to feel very confident with the way that he wants to approach these fights, and more so trying to look for that big snipe on Zavs, but always had other interferences. And so he decided, you know what? We don't need Zops. I'm never going to find him. Ye3, on the other hand, he is a viable option. Yeah, and even Ye3, he is like throwing everything. He's like, ah, Leisha, I see you, bravest fighter. Oh, you flicker, I also flicker. I mean, he's, he's getting his priorities straight. I think Niners this game, uh, they did okay in terms of like macro. You know, they're, they're pulling back at the right time. They're at least handling the team fights the best they could. It's just that one last fight where Noir has decided that it is time to go. The flicker, I'm offended, onto Max, forces Niner into a bad fight, and Zaf, I actually didn't even see him. I don't know how he got caught out, but once he dies, it was over. Yeah, I mean, he just got blasted. He got blasted by the gush. He comes on in, he comes on in, with, especially with the entropy as well, just eats the full face of it, right? There's nothing much he can really do when you get, you get 100 to zero like that. Not a lot of counterplay at the very least, but I would say that at least the Niners, all right, sure. I, I can't imagine that. Would was this worse than yesterday? I wouldn't. I don't. No. I don't no, think no, no, so. No, no, no. Right? This, no. This, <laughs> if you if you look at the past two series they played, this is the best out of it. Okay. Right? It's better than against Bounty. Sure as heck. Better than against than against Barracuda. All right. All right. I, at least it's better than the Barracuda game. I'll give it that because. The, at least they're doing things together, right? Which yeah. is the very basic level, the, ver the, the very surface level, fundamental thing that a whole team needs to do if they want to play together, regardless of what their role is supposed to be. If the call is we all go in, we all fight, got to follow the call. Yeah. So uh, I like the adjustment for Niners. Bad news is that now they are really in a, right, in a <laughs> tough spot. Yep. Zero and a five in terms of series. The aggregate points is not going to do them any good. They're in, it's in the negatives. They've got four more series to go. But the good thing is, Maybe they can do just enough to stay afloat in the MPL, which we can only find out in the coming weeks. Possibly, possibly. Their objective is to make top eight. eight. Yeah, top eight. Yeah, because nine, yes. and eight, nine and ten are basically relegated. Got you. I mean, the, uh, there's not too much more to say about doesn't it. doesn't get any easier from here, right? Again, we talked about the teams that they still haven't Fought. Sorry, I'm already thinking ahead of time. Where I'm thinking, there's a possibility that imagine if the, one of one of the teams from the Niners, their their MAL their MAL team decides to break off to become their own team, to join the CC and then win and then pay face off against the Niners <laughs> in the following season. Is that even a possibility? No, it's that's not. I mean, it's it's a good thought though. The the thing is that with how the MAL and NPL system works, if Niners get relegated, JP Niners would be gone because Niners would be in China Conference. Yes, that's it how it works. Yeah, so it's 
it, it's a it's a whole system that takes it takes a lot more to explain. But I mean, again, stakes are high for Niners. I personally feel like, you know, at this current stage, their best chance is against MV, but MV alone ain't enough. Uh, and just one out of the four teams. The, the worst part is that MV is it's not even like the easiest of the matchups that they could have had, right? Like MV is one of those like coin flip matches. You don't know what, what type of MV you're getting that day. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're getting a Granger MV or, you know, like if Subway decides yep. to do something crazy. Uh, Again, Niners, we can only leave it up to them, right? This is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Now they just, got, they just got to build on this. Yeah. Hopefully, the next time we see them play, it gets better. Yeah, this is the most logical combination that they've come up with so far with Zay and Barbosa. The communication seems to be there. The coordination is there. They just got to work on their micro mechanics a little bit more. And maybe they do have a chance of matching up against some of the other teams. It's unfortunate that they weren't able to find this combination beforehand because definitely Bounty and Barracuda were matchups that they really needed a victory against. So. Who knows what's going to happen? Their chances not looking the best. Team Hawk as well needs a bit of highlighting. Not very clean throughout the games. They got good fights. That last fight was a good fight. But everything else, not really. So we got to improve on that. Team barely scraped by, I'm telling you that. Yes. <laughs> well, Hall of Fame, at least Takin's still the rich guy. You know, Janus on his Nolan being the carry. I'm starting to grow a liking for Max. I think as much as he sometimes might feel a bit selfish with how aggressive he plays, he still thinks about keeping that team alive in his own way, right? In this game, the sandbag on the Fredrin, no surprise about that. And Noir, once more, the best wingman uh, on the Ruby for this game. Man, sometimes he just, sometimes he lands like the nastiest hooks of all time, and sometimes he just whiffs the air. <laughs> yes. It, you never know. I really feel Noir, he's absolute, absolute maniac here, absolute psychopath, willing to utilize his ult to try and steal away a buff. You li literally, there's nothing more that I could say about this man that he is an underrated roamer, and it's definitely putting himself on the radar. Like, no one else has been, had such good timing that they used Raf's skill one to steal the first buff of the game and also had the timing to miss out on getting the hook on someone who is recovering from Nether Realm. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, get, you get two different dwarves. At least we know he's trigger happy. The duality of man is <laughs> actually so, so painful here. But you gotta give it to Lexia. I, I, considering that it wasn't like his intended pick, at least his hero pool was able to, uh, to actually be able to pull this off. It's not like he hasn't done it before in the previous seasons. It's just good to see that he didn't get punished too hard by people, specifically from Year 3, who kept jumping at him throughout the game. Now, the, the second, the, the actually, the most important question is that in what scenario is Nolan and Gord close to each other that you pick, mispick Gord? Uh, um, you look at like, maybe Leisha's favorite hero is just Gord and Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> he just saw blue. <laughs> he saw blue, he clicked it and it ended up it was Gordon. It's like, ah, the portrait, the portrait. Like, they look so similar. <laughs> I, I never mean, would have guessed. One guy looks like he's from Avatar, okay? So <laughs> there's a big difference. Maybe, maybe Lexi is colorblind. Ah. Uh, we can't judge. We can't judge. Either way, let's look at the standings at the end of the day. Team Hack managing to secure a victory means that they're able to stay quite comfortably in third place on the charts. And Niners, unfortunately, still not being able to get that first win, standing very dangerously at the bottom of the table. Look, at the very least, they're still tied up with Bounty in terms of three points, right? I mean, on a on, on, head-to-head -head basis, maybe not, right? But that could easily change. A single 2-0, and they are like, they'll be like, what, that's three points? That will put them right above Todak. And the craziest thing is that Bounty Esports' only win was against them, right? Yeah. So, uh, Niners, they, they got some catching up to do. They played 13 out of 15 possible games in the regular season. So they, they are the team that played the most game in the regular season so far. Doesn't do any good for the aggregate points for sure. And uh, not needless to say for the total points understanding, it's not looking that good either considering that Bounty is ahead of them because they beat them. Yeah, I mean, everybody else underneath uh, underneath the top four, well, I would even include homeboys in this, right? From seven, seven points and below, it's not too far apart. Um, well, so many more games are upcoming, so let's talk about what's going to be happening tomorrow. It's going to kick off with Barracuda versus RSGMY, followed up by Todak versus Team Hack, and closed out with Bounty versus Monster Vicious.
man. I mean, it's, it's, the it's <laughs> Team Hawk, time to step up, man. Tomorrow is Todak. You can't play like how you did today. Yep. It's, it, it, if this is the Team Hawk we get tomorrow, I'm telling you, it's lights out, 2-0 Toda. I'm telling you, Zion Senpai is gonna be walking up to uh, uh, walking up to Lexia and just being like, no black shoes, disrespectful. Walks up, no pa no purifier still. It's, it's what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? Do something. <laughs> you think my passive makes me fast sprint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's some scary stuff to finish off this week here, especially for teams like MV Barracuda. And I would say arguably RSG who clearly does not want to be in the position that they were after having a really great season, regular season specifically, not playoffs, regular season um, last time. It was a rude awakening yesterday as well, the going up against SRG and uh -huh. completely getting crushed in game one and game two, they just started overthinking the draft and kind of outdrafted themselves. So I know Coach Rain and Sora Fire they gave a lot of credit and respect to Arcadia and Becky, but now to focus on their own side and just make sure that they get to feel comfortable, right? The players get to feel comfortable and play their own game is what's gonna give them a good result against the rest of the team. Um, it, it's very curious because I feel like there's a big disparity between some of the teams right now. Like some of them not looking so good, some of them looking a lot better. I feel like the ones that do look better are the ones that have really nice skins. Just like right now, we have the Infernal Worm Lore Draw event from April 6th to April 30th. You guys can get a chance to win the exclusive Infernal Warlord All-Star skin for Moskov with the first ever skin ID tag, meaning you have a unique number attached to your skin that no one else in the world will have. And from April 6th to April 12th, you can unlock exclusive gold ID tags if you're quick enough. And from April 13th to 30th, it'll become a silver ID tag. Still cool, but not quite as fancy. Not to mention, a 50% off on your first 10 times draw, I think it's a pretty good deal. I'll keep bringing this up until we don't have to do this shout out anymore because global statistics shows that Moskov took 2 billion more damage than the damage that Moskov dealt. So y'all Moskov players out there, you're, you're griefing your game. Stop <laughs> it! Stop, Stop taking it. so two much damage! 2 billion? Uh, I stats. could do it with 2,000, but 2 billion is too much. I don't know where it went wrong. I don't... Wait, do they calculate... I've never, th I've never considered this, right? To your theory. Do they also calculate AIs? I, I hope not. I would they hope should, not. They shouldn't, but what if they did? But if they did, then it would mean that for some reason, Moskov AIs were much worse than every other hero. I mean, uh, uh, someone uh, is farming Moskov AI. Possibly, <laughs> uh, possibly, it could be uh, like you hop into your friends against an AI game, and that's just what happens. What is someone what is wasn't able to roll the Infernal Warlord skin, and they're just <laughs> they're just spamming Moskov AI one v one. <laughs> uh, there, uh, one person is responsible for 2 billion damage on Moscow. <laughs> That's dedication. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> you can make a cult around that. <laughs> uh, Just memers on the internet all farming that damage. I'll do it. I'm a Moscow hater. I'll do it. I'll do it. First rule of this cult, beat up Moscow every day. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. <laughs> what a day it has been. A long day indeed, and tomorrow there's going to be even more. I don't know about you, but at the very least, some of these teams are starting to feel the heat. They're, they are starting to get desperate. At least I know which team I look forward to. I'm looking for Team Hug to recover, of course, and of course that Prime RSG. I'm still searching for Prime RSG. I found Prime SRG, but Prime RSG MY still in the works. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Prime SRG is even putting it lightly here. There's such a big gap between them and every other team where it's so clear that they are so ready for international stage and everyone else still has catching up to do. We hope to get to see a little bit more of that. Either way, it is going to be the end of Seru Saturdays today. It has been a day to remember. So we're going to drop you off with the mic check for our final series and tell you that we will see all of you tomorrow. See you guys then. Okay. Okay. I can see you. Okay. Okay. I can see you. 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 I Go, 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 go
Tawol dia. Halo, tawol, tawol, tawol. Halo, tadi tuh, ada tuh. Halo, guys, halo. Ya, ada, ada. Frontali ya. Frontali. Oke, 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 oke. Masih bisa enggak? Ya, 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 balik, balik, balik. Nice guys, you know that. Kemi, 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 kemi. Halo, 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 halo. Nice, nice guys. Nice guys. Tawol di sana. Kamu, kamu, guys. Oke, deh, deh. Boleh ris? Boleh ris. Go ris. Alhamdulillah. Lanjut guys. Belum belum belum. Seri. Seri. Pakai dulu. Minati minati. Mati guys. Aku ati aku ati. Dah tahu. Dah tahu. Dah tahu. Dah tahu. Dah tahu. Minator minator minator. Minati aku. Eh kalau mau naga, gua siap ya sekarang ya. Kalau mau naga, kita bisa start naga terus. Satu dua tiga. Jump 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 ini kali 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 Iris 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 Apa dia buat co? Apa dia buat co? Nolti Nolti Tower 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 Boleh 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 Bantai dulu guys Tower Tower Nice co! Alhamdulillah